All right, we're live. Hello, hello, and welcome on in, everybody, to another Monday Live with the Whiskey Crusaders. Today, we are joined by a lot of fun people, but I'm going to introduce the core group real quick. Uh, I'm Will. I'm Sarah. Not Matt. Nope, that's it. Uh, and then we are joined by uh, both Scott and Bill, uh, who each have YouTube channels uh, there themselves. Scott is with the Scotch Test Dummies, and Bill, the Whiskey Dick, uh, or Whiskey Dictionary. So check those guys out if you do not already. Uh, I have a feeling our chat is pretty in tune with those guys as well, though. Pretty so. confident in this. Yes, Welcome. Please. Thanks for joining us, guys. We're Absolutely. celebrating our one-year anniversary today. Yeah, we've got a night ahead of us, too. So. Yes. Yeah. We really appreciate you guys. So basically, I would say that uh, Bill and Scott are probably the mo two most responsible people for this show happening at all. As I asked both really? of them hundreds of questions before we started <laughs> this, lots of questions, a lot. They're probably like, "God damn it, was he going to fucking stop texting me?" <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I remember that day. Yeah, I was going to say I, I would be lying if a uh, thought hadn't crossed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Those days. Yeah. Well, then yeah. there was that one time that we were on the phone with one of you. With Maybe both of you trying oh, to figure that, out the when, that, when, when I the switch for YouTube went. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes, I remember that. Yep. <laughs> yard from Google Hangouts. Yep. 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 That was a crazy yeah. day. Great yeah, that was fun. There. For sure. Either way, we appreciate you both and all the help that you've given us. Oh, thank you. Anytime. Yeah, absolutely. All right. I guess we'll see who's in the chat here. And uh, yeah, there's lots of people actually. Um, um, Sam said that she was. Gonna come in in just a second. So okay. So did Chris. All right. So, so we got Brian Griffiths, Steve A, Trev Wilson, Dramhound, Benjamin Eves, uh, Wheels, Mark J G, Victoria C. Obviously, I guess Sam's like this. She'll be here in a little bit. Um, ben Demon Hunter, Tony Cronin, Nick Foles, uh, Galen's here, Doug Tempest. Robot Scott, Ben Demon Hunter. Go Habs. And Go Habs. Let's see. All right. And Linux Cat. Cool. All right. So I guess, I guess you, just in case someone doesn't know who the two you are, I guess both of you introduce yourselves real quick. I am a meat popsicle. That <laughs> <laughs> was a great line in an amazing movie. <laughs> I'm Bill from the Whiskey Dictionary. And Scott from the Scotch Test Dummies. Oh, God. <laughs> what do y'all got drinking tonight, boys? I haven't poured myself anything yet. but Well, well I'm waiting actually to see what you guys are going to pour. Because I've got a really special dram that I'm going to pour for my first. Matt was talking fancy whiskey, so I grabbed uh, Parker's Heritage last year's the Orange Curacao. Oh, nice. Nice. Well, we'll do yeah, I like it. I really liked it. it yeah, that one I like it a lot. That Orange Creamsicle is really good. Mm-hmm. I got to try that as well. Um, somebody near me had a bottle of it. Very, very good. Matt, you got to throw Buffalo? Yeah, since it was a, in honor of our very first terrible review, here's Buffalo <laughs> Trace. Great whiskey. It wasn't a terrible review. It was just terribly shot. Actually, and, the review yeah. itself was fine. It was just the, right. uh, the quality. The camera was angle was bad. The, the learning was, experience. That's right. That's right. We learned a lot, though. Actually, in th within three episodes, we got s slightly better, and then it eventually got way better. Yeah. Oh yeah, totally. If I if I could have told anybody any advice, it would be don't do anything that you think is going to make a good episode for your first few episodes. Like just do some junk that nobody's ever gonna watch. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I wish one of our best ones. It shows, it's great. Yeah. So all right. This is what I'm gonna drink. I'm taking and taking out the big guns first. So a friend of mine, <clears throat> he went to the um Yamazaki distillery. Ooh. And Ooh. he brought back a bottle from the distillery. Wow. This little Fancy. guy. Um, I have not opened this yet. I've been saving it for a special occasion. So this Thank is a special you. occasion. That's awesome. Aww. So Pretty congrats cool. on the one year. Thank you very Thank much. You. Cheers. Cheers. I'm going to do this away from the camera here so it's not super loud. I'm going to put the uh, Parker's Heritage down and just pour a little bit of Buffalo's Tray so I can have some with you guys. That'll work for me. It's still one of my favorite whiskeys. As far as the standard whiskey, it's still great. It's just an easy drink. Yep. I it's wish hard. it was as easy to find as it used to be. No, unfortunately. That's a good problem. But you know, it had, you know even up here, it's uh it's in about fifty percent of the stores that it used to be. Mm. Uh, it's running twenty seven, twenty eight dollars. This was actually a store pick uh, from a store 
uh, two miles away and it was $24. They actually oh. have it cheaper than, nice. than the regular release. That's even better than Yeah. Oh, I love when the store picks cheaper than the actual. <laughs> I know. Store. That's yeah. awesome. Although I usually take that to mean it's not very, like they're just trying to get rid of it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it could be. Like the Red Sox did a Telemore do up here and I've been seeing them for <laughs> years at this point. You can't, they can't give them away. <laughs> That's <hysterical>. well, yeah. <laughs> Who knows? That's pretty funny. Yeah. So let's see, we got Mon let's see who else joined in. Let's see here. Uh, Eric W. Spencer Mav. Uh, Travis Wallard. I saw him in here. Dram Ben. Thank you, ma'am. OG Brick 420. Uh, Captain Make It Happen. Donald Rance. The Silver Lock Whiskey Club. All right. Tell him more don't. <laughs> Tell him more don't. <laughs> And Canadian whiskey smith, uh, Teresa's in the chat. Oh, Teresa's in there too. Awesome. Yes, indeed. Hmm. Yeah. Welcome all. I assume it's a regular Tullamore do this one with the Red Sox, just the Red Correct. Sox. Yes. Yeah, um, it's just totally, I'm sure it's absolutely the exact same thing. Um, yeah. Not only not only did they just do the, the pick, but they're, they did so many of them. Like I see it in a ton of stores up here. So it's not even like a single store pick where it might be from a single barrel or something. Oh, yeah. So it's yeah. just. Great. They just said, "Here, put our name on this and pay us money." <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like the Rangers have a uh, the regular, um, what is it? Evan Williams, mm. they have a Rangers version. It's like great. Boy, that's I awesome. Found Michael Young, so that was cool. Yeah. But was it Rebecca Creek that had a something it at Ranger Stadium. Oh yeah, they did. They I don't know if it's still called that or not. Yeah, it was like their re big restaurant. There it was called Rebecca. Yeah. Creek. Well, they're not going to be there. You know, the new one. That's true. I don't know if they changed over to the next one or not. So, yeah. and it is what it is. It's okay. The new save is going to be way too expensive anyway. It just pissed me off every time I drive by it. <laughs> so, I was, uh, I had kind of forgotten where this, like, which distillery this was. Um, because he just kind of, he gave this to me around Christmas time and I couldn't remember what he said it exactly was. So, I was like, I don't, you know, read, I think it's called tag along, right? Like the symbols for in Japanese. And uh, mm. so I started thinking, I'm like, there's got to be an app that can translate this thing. And I downloaded the, just the Google translator and it, it's really cool. Like I just looked through my phone and it translates it right in real time. It was uh, Yamazaki, but yeah, it was very, very cool. I didn't even know. I don't think I've ever used one of those before. That's pretty cool. I've never, yeah, yeah. but man, cool. tasting this has taken me right back to the vault. I had the uh, the 18 year when I was there. Mm -hmm. That was amazing. This is not as good as the 18 year. I'm guessing this is probably the 12 year, um, based off my minor recollection of it or, or something similar, but it's still very good. Is it cash strength? No, it's only 40 percent. Only 40. Okay, yeah, that would be cooler. Yeah, that would be way cooler. <laughs> it is what it is. Hey, still free whiskey, so that's awesome. Yeah, totally. Yeah. All free whiskey is good whiskey. That's mm -hmm. true. Then again, a, Jap a Japanese. I don't know that I've ever had a Japanese cask strength. I'm sure they're out there, but um, Close, more just, I think awful. they're few and far between. Something like this taste. I mean, this is kind of like a really light, crisp, apple-y kind of taste, and just cask strength. I think would kind of it would get in the way of that. You know? Yeah. yeah. It was kind I of think, um, I don't remember. Nika from the barrel, I guess, probably the closest. Thing. Oh, I was yeah. about to say the same thing, Matt. Didn't we have a Nika from the barrel that? Was, yeah, that's like a hundred. Hmm. Yeah, duh. it may not, it may not be Nika. cash yeah. strength though. It may just be. Yeah, now, I do have a cash strength uh, Kyo single barrel though. That's yeah. tough. I think wrong. Nika from the barrel is only fifty percent. So right. yeah. yeah, yeah, the Kyo is not. I don't remember what it is. I've got it in the other room. I can pull it later. Hey, Eric Evanson. <laughs> Ross love Trabs. Yeah, this is great. yeah, we hit 800 to uh, a couple days ago, which was awesome. So Yay. we're trekking along, we're getting there. Yes. So that's cool. We got a Nolan right now. I always like when you get the little thing that tells you, "Hey, we got another subscriber." It's always awesome. Yay. Oh, you I know it's got it. It's like on a daily basis. They turn their damn sound off. Yeah. <laughs> I was just looking, and it took us two years and two months to get 800 subscribers. Wow. wow. Yeah, I know right around a year I was at about 500. And then within the next year, it got up to a few thousand. So, like, I'm not sure where I, when I even, I remember hitting a thousand. I remember I was at work and I ran around with my phone and showed a whole bunch of people as if they cared. Um, <laughs> you know, like, look at what I've done. <laughs> you know? That's awesome. Yeah. Well, you know, you guys are the trailblazers for this, though. Uh, we're more so Scott than me. 
I, I told you before, Scott, Scott was uh, my inspiration. So he's, he's still up there for me too. Yeah. He's Thank just you. old, I think. Uh, <laughs> well, we put him up there at the top. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see who else came here. We got all sorts of. So Scott, I missed it. What are you? Are you drinking the um, the curacao as well? Uh, well, I poured just a little bit of Buffalo Trace to have it with them. So, got it. Right. and then I'll move on to the back or back. Go back to the Parkers. Okay. I wonder if they need somebody to run that. Do what? So, Captain was saying that um, instead of the Rebecca Creek, there's a Balcones Speakeasy that's going to be behind home plate at the new uh, field. That would be way better. That would be way better. And he said, sweet. I wonder if they need somebody to run that. <laughs> I don't know. Give him a call. Find out. Yeah, I think I might. Do you really want to drive to Arlington daily? Eh, ain't that bad. If That could be worse thing. So our part of that same first review is the Eagle yeah. Rare, the regular 10 years. Oh, wow. Boy, that's a oh, big yeah, film. Yeah, you better kill that one. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you better kill yeah, both of those. Almost gone. There's nothing left in either one. <laughs> no, they're... No, yeah. that's enough to sample plenty of people on. That's true. <laughs> Get rid of it. Uh, have you guys seen in, uh, increase on the price on Eagle Rare? Mm. Not yet. It was still thirty dollars no, last time I it. saw it. I still can't. I can't find it anywhere. So yeah. Yeah, we, we consistently have it for like twenty eight to thirty near me, um, and it, it's always available too. It's so funny how that works. It used to be uh, uh, everywhere here, and now it's it's you got to hunt to find it, and it's sixty dollars. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I know it. And it used to be thirty to thirty-five in that range. That's ridiculous. Uh, yeah, thirty was what I remember paying most of the time. Wow. Yeah, it's going for what uh, thirty-nine ninety-nine here. It's thirty still. Yeah, yeah. Last week. Jason, thirty bucks. Jason mm -hmm. Coates is commenting. He doesn't. He lives not too far from Wichita. He's up uh, by Manhattan or in Manhattan, Kansas. Mm -hmm. But it's fifty dollars up there and behind glass now. <laughs> oh my! Um, that's ridiculous. Well, that's like the, Speller, the the Weller Special Reserve. It was behind glass at, at place two up stores. The, yeah, up the road yeah. from us. I'm like, that's crazy. I, la I laughed at that guy and told him that totally I was like, I'm not buying anything from your store because you're charging forty five dollars for Weller Special Reserve. <laughs> I know, and I know what the MSRP is supposed hey, to be. Jason, how's it going? You made so, it. No business from me. Hello, Jason. Jason. Hello. Those are the those are the victory hands up of a man who's been drinking for a couple hours. <laughs> yeah. Hello, all you beautiful people. <laughs> I'm drunk. <laughs> I'm drunk. <laughs> no, I'm actually. Uh, that's this is the uh, my live is over and now I can just kind of hang out and drink with you guys. Ah. There you go. Yeah, if anybody's gonna be drunk, it's gonna be Chris. Oh wow, your live uh, gave us a big old jump. Hello. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Holy yeah, I threw, I threw, threw nice. everyone over yeah. here. <laughs> Damn, Thanks, well. everybody who came on over. Oh, nice. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate Thank you bringing Jason. the crowd. Absolutely. Everyone should be watching, man. Yeah, we got a ton of new people in here. We got Anthony. Okay, so I'm going to probably screw Mark, Mac, Rin, UTOs. I have no idea. I'm assuming that's Greek. I'll go with that. Uh, <laughs> Bayou Drowns. I know I've talked to you before, but not in, I think, in ours. Let's see what else we got in here. Wildlife and Whiskey. Uh, Nicholas Villagio, DJ11, Emily Chambers, Jason Coates, Chris Beaton, uh, Greg Fowler, Ron's Wood Turning Shop, Drew Bola123, Scary Peeper, uh, Richie Z, Justin Smith, uh, there's Dustin, uh, Dark Meat Chicken, Jim Mueller, say, Karen B. Ford, uh, Patrick Fulmer. Let's make sure I didn't miss anybody. Carl. Oh, there's Carl. I haven't seen Carl in a long time. There's Carl. He is alive. Oh, yeah. Oh, actually, Carl's in here? Oh, go. Dave, oh David my God. Cole. He is alive. Yeah, he's been in anybody's chats. I, I, I talked to him recently. Let's see. Here we got uh, hmm. Greg Koontz. Jason, right. what are you drinking? Right, got review. All right. Uh, I had a local craft whiskey poured, but I'm going to. Um, I'm getting ready for my review on Friday. I'm going to be reviewing the Larceny Bow Proof finally. Um, but I'm trying to, I'm trying there's to get Chris. it. Ah, there's Chris. What's up guys? Hey Chris Hello. and gals. Yeah. I'm just trying to work its way down the bottle a little bit yeah. before I, <laughs> I judge it. So I'll, this will be a good time to keep sipping on it. Nice. There you go. Perfect. Let's see who else we got. How, how you feeling Chris? I feel fantastic. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Anyway, so as Chris passes out on his computer board soon enough. Fantastic going over the edge or fantastic eh, a couple feet no, away I from feel good. Okay, J good. Jason kept me in check, so I'm good. Drinking lots of water? Lots oh, of water. Okay. Good. 
Boo. It's a bit no sure. <laughs> Debauchery. More fun. Boo water. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, he's on his third hour, so. Yeah. Hydration. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see who else we got here. Tech 187, Tall Matomas. Uh, I just want to make sure I missed one lost cause. Holy shit. Road. Let me just say 105 people in chat. Congratulations uh, on one year, guys. Awesome work. Thanks. Zach and so you. Hey, everybody in the chat, tell us what you're drinking. Hell yeah. Hope oh. it's something good. I just switched over to the Eagle. I poured myself oh, a little bit. Oh, How's nice. it going? Good to see you in here. Remember, I guess you call it blog, I guess. He's awesome. He knows everything about wild turkey. Let's put it that way. He's freaking amazing with it. <laughs> Rare so, Bird 101. David yeah, Jennings. Yeah, he is the, he's the man. In honor of you guys, I went out tonight. Like I tonight, I went bought bacon, cooked bacon, made bacon, eating bacon. Yay! Nice. nice. Yes. And Applewood smoked. Wow. That's right. Add more water. And, water. and I ended up with a stupid organic stuff. So, oh well. We will have a video coming out soon that William made about how to make the bacon. It's yeah. a pretty cool video. That yeah. totally didn't get peer pressured at all, right? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Bacon. I'm just picturing Bill probably Uber eats that bacon, honestly. Yeah. He didn't make that. <laughs> no way. I'm not my guy. I think I think you just gave me a brand new uh, business idea. <laughs> bacon Uber and bacon. Bacon. It's just just like just like like 15 to 25 different varietals of bacon delivered to your door. Mm. Yeah, there you go. Yes. Yeah. I'll also, call it the I call oh. it uh the fat track. <laughs> <laughs> oh, get on the fat track. Get on the fat track. There you go. That's awesome. All right. See, Bourbon Buddies. Are, yeah, if you guys haven't checked out Bourbon Buddies too, definitely check those guys out. They're awesome. Mm. Uh, who else in there? Uh, Jeremy Sears. I'm sure most of you guys know how that stuff is freaking amazing. So if you haven't checked him out, check him out for sure. See, it's, uh, my Bourbon Journey. I saw him just come in. It's just Scott. I was just in his show talking about Texas last week, which was fantastic. Mm -hmm. So let's see here. Hopefully I haven't missed anybody else. All right. I think we're caught up now. All right. So I'm switching over to the good stuff now. Nice. So this is Kentucky Owl Bourbon Batch 9. Bacon and tacos, Carl. Nice. That's Carl. Carl and his tacos, man. He's hmm. all about tacos. tacos. Yeah. He's not. Yeah. You're having, so, you're having Kentucky Owl Batch 9, man? Do what now? You're having Kentucky Owl Batch Nine? Yes. All right. I'll Ooh. share. I'll I'll grab mine and share some with you. The the only Kentucky Owl I see here is the confiscated. Mm. Yep. Is that any good? No, not for the price. How much no, is it? There? How much is it there now? Uh, I could get it for one twenty nine. Yeah. Nope. No. Nope. Nope. Not even at that. It's nope. most most places are five eight nine. Just uh, just get rare breed. <laughs> yeah, honestly. I'll, I'll send you a sample of Bull Scott when I get the other thing taken care of for you. Okay. And I'll send that healing single malt in there too. But I will say people have been saying that Kentucky Owl Batch 9 is worth the money, even Dude. at high prices. Freaking How much awesome. is it going for? Uh, it's, 280 It's uh yeah, The Kentucky Owl Batch 9 is 300 Yeah, it's expensive. But they right. say it's one of the better batches. Yeah, I will. I will say out of the ones I haven't tried all the batches, but I was yeah. never really. I was never really impressed with the early batches. I mean, it was good, just not 300, 350 good. Right. The the batch nine though has it's the probably the most layered flavor wise that I've had in a in a yeah. Kentucky Owl, and it has this. I called it when I reviewed it this like the after finish because you sip it and. Then, <laughs> Yeah, it's like you sip it, and then you think the experience is over, and then all of a sudden you get like this punch of sweet almond all of a sudden that comes back. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. The See, I think an after finish. finish would be like if you were drinking some Ardbeg, and then like 20 minutes later you burp. That'd be like the – Yeah, yeah that's the <laughs> yeah. after finish. So, so it's like the same idea but without burping. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't understand. <laughs> good whiskey. Is when it, the burp's really good afterward, that's, that's yeah. a good whiskey. <laughs> I have a Kentucky Owl here. Ow. Uh, 11 it just says 11 year, 50.4%. That's the rye. The rye. Oh, <sighs> well, I mean, I yeah, wouldn't say it, it's probably pretty nice. Sarah, I gave her that bad nine. What happened to it? Did she finish it already? I haven't touched it. Oh, so like then you have that one. one. It's probably over there. Which this, one? This is a classic whiskey tube problem. You have to find the samples is the hardest part. The one he just gave. 
Dutch nine. Yes, uh, Chris, exactly. He just gave it? I got this. Yeah, I gave it to you. Oh, yeah, my. Yeah. Yes. Nice. Um, they have, like, the greatest sample collection in the country. And then I just went <laughs> and picked up that. And William went and picked up that. So. And then I'm going to go search for more because apparently it's not in either of those. There's samples everywhere in this house. Send the cat. Be like, cat, go get batch nine. <laughs> I wish it worked that way. The only thing he would go after is bacon. That's right. The bacon. Mm -hmm. bacon Scott, bacon. I missed it. Which uh, Parker's Heritage is that? Kitty, kitty, uh, last year's kitty. Orange Curacao. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy Sears asking, Matt and Drum, is the Kentucky Owl Rye any good? It's 200. Uh, I think the only one that's really worth 200 is batch one. Yeah, which I think was only cost me 115. Yeah, if it's yeah. batch, if it's batch yeah, one, good. it's a hell of a ride. Batch one, uh, that's the 11 year higher proof one. The newer one, the newest one's a 10 year, which a lot of people really liked. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. but I, I just like the higher proof stuff. So if you like the higher proof, then try to find a batch one. But I know the third batch that was released, the 10 year was pretty well liked by most people too. Yeah, yeah, it's better. It's more similar to one and it has a sweeter finish though than one and two. Yeah, I would I would agree. If you like a, a little bit of a sweeter type of rye, then you'll probably really like the 10. Yeah, I think we, I, I mean like Kentucky Owl gets a lot of shit because of the price obviously. Yeah. But let's be honest, they're all good. I mean, they're all yeah, good rye. They're all really good. Yeah, they're all really good comparatively. It's just... At 200, 225, eh, that's tough. Yeah, we had it for a rye tasting one night with uh, both the rye, both the both the batch eight, the confiscated. But then we also had the uh, old Carter one and two for rye and the bourbon. Camera. 2002 Russell Reserve and the Whistle Pig four and five. That was the best freaking night ever. Yeah, I bet. You sent me some of the Whistle Pig four, didn't you, Matt? Yeah, the yeah. Oh, black, black Prince, right? Yeah, the Black Prince. Yeah, Black Prince, and then yeah, the other one's the uh, Spirit of Maud. Yes, yeah. I think I had I had more. I thought Black Prince was significantly better than Spirit of Maud. Mm. Hmm. I don't know what these buttons do. do they, is there a way to make everybody bigger? Yeah, there's <laughs> a little uh, setting. It's <laughs> alone. What does this do? I don't know if that's a really good timing or if you happen to see my text I just sent you. I did, but I don't think okay. I, don't know I, did, I don't know if it did anything though. I don't I don't remember where the button is or where the thing is. Like there's all the things at the bottom, but yes, yeah, down there below the screen. It'll zoom in on it. Clicking buttons. Ooh. Oh nice. Makes yeah. you bigger. Well, looks like that's what that does. This one does nothing. That's weird. <laughs> so, all right. Well, no, we only have the regular stream yard. We don't have the deluxe version. Ah. That so might be why. That might yeah, be why we don't have as many settings. Yeah, I don't know. We Not also better. can't get rid of this little stream yard thingy right here. Yeah. So it's funny. Mean? I bought the I bought the license and then I, I haven't streamed yet this year. <laughs> 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 Oops. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna be using Bill's account from now on. So <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you throw your Amazon, your friend's Amazon Prime password or HBO Go or whatever. Exactly. We can all share. There you go. All YouTubers share one. Yeah. <laughs> not a bad idea, actually. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not opposed to this plan. <laughs> I don't I I guess I'd be Marsha. Yeah, why not, DH Self? <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about um one year. Sorry if I missed anything, but yeah. how how do you guys like it? Like how have you been doing? How you feel about it? You guys I, hanging in there? Yeah. It's great. Oh hell yeah. Because well, of us and, and we can actually kind of space out responsibilities it does make it a lot easier and a lot more sustainable i feel yep because we're not just one person trying to make all of these things happen every single week so yeah. thank you for bringing that up I appreciate that. Jobs, uh, which is nice yeah no for sure and you guys you guys are really doing great honestly um just keep up everything you're doing you know you really are yeah, we look forward. We love lives. Obviously, we do them every week. Yes, we yeah. missed one live in a year. And since we started going live, what? We're going live, yeah. We've missed one week ever. That's yep. and that's awesome. The consistency is awesome. You know. Yeah. Well, we've we been trying to do uh, all of our videos coming out at the same time every week. Oh gosh, busting out the glove. Uh, all of our videos <laughs> coming out at the same time every week. Uh, on Monday, same time. So, yeah, trying to make sure that we are keeping that consistency. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Yeah, you guys I, have any um, plans or stuff you want to do specifically this year? New, new well, year, new year resolutions for the channel. Yeah, um, quite a few. Uh, we're we're hoping to get Patreon launched pretty soon. Uh, and then we're also we're hoping to do a lot more uh, on-site videos. Um, I want to spend a lot more time at distilleries talking with them. I want to spend a lot more time at liquor stores talking with them. Um, I want to spend time at RNDC, uh, Republic National, yeah. and, distribute yeah. and, and talk to them uh, about how things work and, and you know get their take on things. So, yeah, I, I want to do a lot more of those style of videos. I'm looking forward to the challenge and the, you know, excitement of filming those and editing those. So, yep. We also yeah. have our Psalm, Psalm 2 class to. Oh yeah, that's right. This year. Mm -hmm. yep. Nice. Okay. That's going to be, uh, I'm looking forward to that. I'm absolutely looking forward to that as yeah. well. So, Are so you guys going to be able to film that at all? No, uh, no, no, Actually not. No. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think they're going to, they would allow us to, I, I have a feeling that we could, I didn't bring my camera at all to Psalm 1. I'm going to bring my camera to Psalm 2. It was mm -hmm. there. You just didn't bring it, it was there. Home. We just didn't really use it. You okay. didn't bring it to class. That's fair. I would bring it more. <laughs> After to, I wouldn't do it during. Yeah, I'll bring it more to things this year and catch more of the behind the scenes this year. Right, right. As much as they'll let us. As much as they'll let us. I don't oh. want to, you know, infringe upon anything. But Exactly. Yep, that's called yeah. Patreon only access. Yeah, yeah. I like that so, idea. Uh, so after I was like asking uh, a channel that's been um doing it for a year, what what are some of your lessons learned from, <laughs> from your first year? Uh get better <laughs> equipment always. <laughs> <laughs> no microphone, bad idea. You need a microphone. <laughs> light. You need lights. Camera. Uh, you need good a great camera. camera with a better with good lenses. We found out all that pretty quickly that what we had was not going to work. Thank did you did really you find really yourself well. did you guys find yourselves getting more comfortable in front of the camera as the oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know when we first started, I'm like, why the hell are we doing this? We're all stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but no, yeah, it worked out. Now, now it doesn't bother me at all. I get up in front of people and talking, it's like whatever. I do yeah, this I yeah. now. A lot of that helped with um, the Psalm one class because we were forced to get up into, in front of a group of people that we've known That's for true. like a day. And just pull some shit out of our ass about a story and tell it. And, you know, that kind of helps a lot with opening up and just feeling comfortable just chatting with people. Yeah. This is my favorite part of the channel is lives. Yeah. Actually interacting with the people. Yeah. You know, going back and answering comments on the YouTube videos. You know, that's cool and all. Or, you know, talking in, in like Discord or whatnot. But I like this the most. Yeah. 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 Especially oh, wow. when we have guests on, uh, yeah. you know, whether it be other YouTube channels like the, the four of you gentlemen or distilleries or distributors or whoever. Uh, yeah, I enjoy the lives. I enjoy the interaction. Yeah. Mike wants to know if we have an estimated uh, bacon consumption. Count. <laughs> <laughs> In the year? <laughs> Oh God! How about for a show? How much do you have on hand yeah. for, a, for a live? I cook up. I cook up three pounds of bacon every Monday. Uh, some of it, <laughs> some of it wow. goes from that. Some of it and his kids and his kids. Right? They get a, a bacon allowance for being quiet. Some uh, of it goes supposed to be for. Some of it goes to our cats. Yeah. To keep them out of our faces. Because off camera, you can't see. There's two cats sitting right over here, staring at us. Bacon cat, you usually see. The other one's shy. <laughs> so we have to have a you know allotment for them and then yeah yeah so about three pounds a show and then for oh and in events god events we make 15 pounds usually no, it's, not mm. pounds. it's like six pounds of bacon oh nine bring. pounds yes yeah, sure six to it's nine <laughs> yeah it's it's a lot of bacon and yeah. then we 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 brought almost i think 15 to the bastards ball it was yeah wow. I think it was more than that but yeah yeah we like sharing our bacon we do i'll be making up a whole bunch of bacon uh tomorrow for a, an event on saturday so is like a single package is that a pound of bacon yeah i buy the i buy the bigger one that's three, three pounds. pounds oh i see okay it's and it's and it's walmart brand yeah thick yeah. cut walmart brand mm -hmm. yep like, bill you don't do the grocery shopping do you <laughs> I totally do, except I usually don't buy bacon. <laughs> the uh, the fattier, the better. 
is what I tell people. Uh, <laughs> if you're going to bake it up, you want real fatty bacon. You don't want to look for stuff with a whole lot of meat in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the American dream right there. I mean, that's a wonderful sentence. Yeah. You totally, you totally need a spin-off channel at Bacon Crusader. Yeah. <laughs> Bacon Crusader. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All the ways to make bacon. I've already yeah, filmed just, just different, yeah, just different bacon recipes. Bacon varieties. Yeah. 5,000 grams of bacon. <laughs> That's too funny. Now, one of the cool things we're going to get to do this year is we're actually going to get to go over to Tal and Caro, and they're going to take us through the entire process and get to work at the whole distillery, every mm -hmm. piece of the process in a day. And that's going to be a blast. That'd be awesome, yeah. We're, we're to actually get at Tal and Caro in Grapevine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're actually get to learn how to distill and everything. Oh, that's That'd be really cool. It's going to be really cool. And we're going to get to run the mills and every, we're going to run all the pieces. And, and then we'll actually get to fill our own barrel there. And then in two years, we'll bottle it. Mm. So nice. Be a lot of fun and pick the mash bill and everything. So it should be awesome. So I'm really looking forward to it. From, from where you live, Matt. How far is that? 25 minutes. Oh, wonderful. All wow. right. When I come visit, we're going to go, go check oh, yeah. it out. Oh, too. yeah. That's right. Because they sent you the stuff. He did a cool video on top. That was a that was, that was a really good one. Thanks. But speaking of Discord, uh, yes, I spend an absurd amount of time in Discord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's wonderful, though. It is. Oh, I love it all you guys. You got your, uh, the new Whiskey 2020 challenge in there. It's freaking awesome. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure everybody's pretty excited about trying at least 15 new whiskeys this year. Yeah. I've, I've, had, I've had a lot of good feedback on that whole thing today. Good. Good blast. So it should be fun. Yeah. yeah well, that was part of the reason I, I opened up that Japanese one tonight. That's that's my Japanese single malt for, for the challenge now. Perfect. So, nice. Yeah. I, I think anything to try to get people to get out of their comfort zone and try something different, uh, whether it be different categories or whether it be just different things if, within a category, just try something new. Uh, it, it, anything what they said about Zima is something different. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you put a different Jolly Rancher in it each time. Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to introduce some people to White Claw, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, nah. <laughs> good. Yeah, the the batch nine Kentucky Owl is quite special. This is lovely, lovely stuff. That it is. No, so I, I look forward to all those things. I look forward to more of our events. I look forward to our big. Uh, I guess probably in I'm guessing March or April when we get with Brian to do a meetup and barbecue event with him. So we'll be let's see, a whiskey share and a uh, barbecue. So he's almost nice. on his big rig. So it'll be blast when we get to do that. But Pit Face Barbecue is freaking awesome. Mm. Okay, not the first weekend in March. That's all I ask. I was going to say, I now know when I'm coming to visit you, Matt. <laughs> yeah, that is the time. Yeah, I'm actually right. trying to convince Brian, and I think his wife already said it's cool, to come down to the Bastards Ball to La Quinta mm -hmm. and Yay. help cater, basically, you know, people just go out there and get food from his meat truck. Oh, man. Hell just yeah. have him out in the parking lot. Oh, oh, yes. It's a really good idea. Oh, that's, that's, well, that's, that's where I'll be. Anyway. Yeah, because I assume all of you are going to go to the Bastards Ball again this year. That's the plan. Yeah, if, uh, I'll if invite it back. back. We're invited. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we already have our, our rooms reserved, so nice. Yeah, nice. I'm going either way. <laughs> either way, I'm going in the vault. Well, sorry. I'm sure they'll plan it this year, not on the same weekend as uh, was it Austin City the concert? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's this year. It's on uh, September 12th. The the first year it was on a a concert in Austin as well too, wasn't it? It wasn't Austin City Limits, but it was like what South by Southwest. South I think by it was. Southwest. Mm. Yeah, there's th that's one of the problems though is there's always something happening in Austin as far as music goes. So mm, yeah, that's the scene. Yeah. You know, it's as far as Texas goes, that's our scene is Austin is for, for music. So there's some decent stuff up here in DFW, but not like Austin. Wow. So and I, I like uh, this is a little off topic. Steve Steve A just said that five new people just joined the Whiskord in the last couple of minutes, but you <laughs> call them Whiskordians, Whiskordians. which I kind of like that a lot. <laughs> Whiskordians. That's but, awesome. Yeah. Thanks for keeping track of all that for us, Steve. Yeah. yeah. So what what are you guys all drinking now? I, I'm sure most of us have moved on to something else. To switch. Exactly. I just poured a sample from Matt, and I can't quite read it. Looks like <laughs> I know it's Capper, Capper Donick, 23 Surprise. years. Oh yeah, that's the Capradronic twenty three year. What's it? Right. Top it says Lonick or Lorac oh, or Lonic. Lonic. It's, it's the independent bottler. Oh okay, twenty three yeah. year forty six percent. Tripod and a label maker. Tripod. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the bulldoze Distillery. 
We can, you can't get him to get a tripod. He's not going to use a label maker. <laughs> I can try. People bring me things. I'll use them. It's you know, <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe maybe you could I, have. Maybe there are things I'm willing to spend money on. The things I'm not willing to spend money on. Those are things I'm not willing to spend money on. Mm. Maybe you could ask uh, Rex, Rex and Daniel to add a handwriting class to the to the. Ad <laughs> yeah, <market>. honestly. <laughs> well, the creative writing class in part one. Oh God! We can't make that a handwriting class for part. My hand would hurt. It, it hurts bad enough as it is to write, let yeah. alone do it legibly. is a different story. So actually, Will, to that point, so you you said that you guys are going to take the class number two. Do you have any idea what they cover in in the level two? Yes, yeah. it's is it it's bourbon and rye. I was going to say I think I'm pretty sure that two is American centralized and three is mm -hmm. uh, everything uh, else. Yeah. Scotch centralized, really. Scotch, Japanese. Yeah. Have any Have any of you guys ever had German whiskey bef before? If anybody has, no. It's Just the beer. My sister failed and didn't bring me one. Yeah, I was surprised to see that they even have. I mean, obviously, a country. Somebody in the country is going to be making whiskey. I'm sure, but there's enough of a presence to to show up on. Uh, they have a ton. I read an article about German whiskey the other day. There's like 250 whiskey distillers in Germany. It's just we'll never get any of it. Although when Travis was at, I think in Georgia at some store, he sent me a picture of a German one. I don't remember which one it was, but there was a German one next to a McNamara, which is from Sweden. Two distilleries I have not tried that I need to try. Have any of you guys ever tried the, all the boxes? I'm kind of all over the place here. Have any of you guys ever tried the Ardbeg 19? No. Oh, the, yes. the Trayvon? Yes. Yeah. Trayvon. Like hoods up for Trayvon? Yeah, I think that's how you say it, right? <laughs> uh -huh. that, was the most, that was the most, uh, most pineapple-y peated whiskey I've ever had. I saw really? it the other day, and I was super tempted to to buy it. I forget how much it was, but it was like it was buyable, you know. But I yeah. uh, I just knew nothing about it, and I've never even seen it, so I wasn't sure if it was any good. So uh, retails around two seventy five, two ninety. I was gonna say I think they had it for two eighty, oh, but yeah, yeah. I wasn't confident in that. Yeah. When it was uh, when it was in Ohio for a short stint, it was three hundred. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the price was right. It's just yeah. You know, no. No. Uh, it's a gamble. It's one of those things that I would rather watch a, a whiskey tuber tell me if I should buy it. Or not. Yeah, it's still three hundred bucks. I mean, ugh. yeah. See, Dustin knows that's that's he has quite a lot of whiskey. Yeah. This Cabernet has a nice nose. Um, smells like a Klein Leash, really waxy and citrusy and fruity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I really like the only reason I even knew what that was was I was reading an old book from the 80s that Michael Jackson wrote. There's always one. Uh, <laughs> oh, and a little bit of peat on it. It's really good. I really like that whiskey a lot. That sounds good, actually. <laughs> Climb leash with a little bit of peat. That's nice. Yes, but I feel like so, for your one. I feel like for your one year, I need to, um, <clears throat> you know, since you guys are a little bit more Scotch focused, I, I should break out something. Uh, one of my good scotches that I have. I don't know what though. Yeah, I switched over I the, to the Glenmorangie Signet. Oh man, I love that whiskey. <sighs> yeah, I pulled up some yellow spot. Oh, that's a good idea. I have the red. What do you guys think of the red spot? I'm just super uh, underwhelmed. I've got it over here too. I haven't spent enough time with it. Yeah. I know Scott. Scott, you love that shit, right? Oh, yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah. But I am a big fan of all the spots. So I, I love the yellow spot. It's like it's up there for me. So I think I was expecting mm -hmm. the red spot to to be something different. I, I find that when I'm the most <laughs> let down is when I come Buggers. in with Buggers. and it's Buggers. nice. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I always find that if I go in with pre preconceptions, it always just ruins it for me. Um, like for example, the the Blanton's Bowl, right? So I got this the other day, and uh, I I genuinely kind of just prefer regular Blanton's over this. Yeah. And I'm so Ooh, sorry. I, really? I yeah, I know. Maybe it's me. By the gold. It's, well, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far, but I think, I mean, like the straight from the barrel to me is still significantly better than the gold to, to me. I, that, I, I would love to try that. I, uh, I sent you a sample of both, Bill. Well, I know, but I haven't opened it yet. I, 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 I kept. My fault. Go well, I, get I, it. I was go find it. 
I was gonna. I figured I was gonna live stream with my little rotating table, and so I had all my samples and stuff. Yeah, and yeah. Plenty more to help restock. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do I turn that down? The wheel of oh. Well, I'm I'm now calling it the uh, flights of the round table. No, so, mm, I like it. That's yeah. awesome. You can't have it. I mean, Blanton's gold is still good. Like, I think it's still oh, really no, it's good. Good. It's good. Yeah, I, I guess I expected it to be well, amazing. Yeah, and part, of the, right. part of the problem, too, is the perceived value of this, right? So you yep. can't buy it in the U.S. So if you're no. going to get it back to the U.S., you're talking like hundreds of dollars. But it's yeah. only 80 bucks if you buy it outside of the U.S. Right. So I think I, I had, I was thinking about it as a multi-hundred dollar bottle of bourbon, right? Which is yeah. not. So, yeah, but I think that's that's part of the problem. But straight from the barrel, you would pay close to two hundred dollars for that bottle. Hmm. I'm gonna have to try that. Yes. Yeah, I can get it for one twenty-five. Ooh, good stuff, can you man. The Pete. Yeah, if you need one, we got connections. We can always get them. Scott, is it your birthday? Uh, last weekend was I, I hit the big five zero. Woo. Oh, milestone. Raise yep. your glass, everyone, to the 50. The Cheers. 5 0. Cheers. Happy birthday. Cheers. Happy birthday. Cheers. Thanks. I hope you celebrated with that glorious Boonhaven. I did, and I will send you a sample of it, Jason. Oh, I want to cuddle you. Thank you. <laughs> I want to cuddle you. <laughs> no, that's excellent. Mm. Yo, this is actually better than I remember. Half the bottle's yep. gone. I think it's had a little bit of time to, to oxidize a little bit. It's the power of suggestion. I just said it was good. So could be. Like... It totally could be. <laughs> I poured some uh, some old Putney 17, and it's glorious. Ooh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Oh, that's I saw a bottle of that, actually, just last weekend or maybe the weekend before. I, I almost scooped it up, but I... Uh, yeah, so uh, it just continued, right? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's probably my favorite. It's this is the one with um, where they mix the casking up a little bit. They do it's it's ex bourbon and ex sherry together. So mm-hmm. it's got it's got all the vanilla, the fruits, the the malty, the salty. It's it's a great dram. That one had a cult following, didn't it? It oh, really yeah. did. Yeah, people yeah. really really loved the seventeen. Mm. Yep. I was lucky that it popped up in Ohio and it's just kind of sitting on shelves. So uh, very nice. I grabbed one when I saw it. What'd you find it for? Ish? Uh, one one sixteen. Okay. Oh, nice. All right. So here's a question for the, the whole group here. So wildlife and whiskey. He asked one of the, or he he pointed out something that I think we all can help him with. He says, sometimes I wish I liked Scotch to have something different, but my wallet's glad I haven't found one that I liked. <laughs> well, you don't have to spend a ton of money to get a decent Scotch. True. But, but the well, average Scotch costs more than the average bourbon. Well, yes, correct. Yeah. Depends well, on what you're looking for in a bourbon. Okay. If you're looking for average, a cask strength bourbon, it's going to cost a little bit more. So if you're looking for a cask strength scotch, it's going to cost you even more than that. Though. <laughs> <laughs> a little further. Yeah. You know, we started reviewing six. So go back to October 2013 when we started. Bart and I started doing reviews, and we were the Scotch test dummies. We were just doing Scotch, mm-hmm. and we did we for a while we did just Scotch, and then after you know we were like, hey. You know, here's all these bourbons around us here, and they're cheaper than yep. scotch. Maybe mm-hmm. we should be reviewing these as well. Yep. And that's not even hardly the case. <laughs> I mean, you're, I mean, it, bourbon's gone up so much. Yeah, I mean, you can still go get Buffalo Trace and, you know, Maker's Mark and Elijah Craig. But any of the special editions that come out, allocated bottles, anything like that, <laughs> come on. I mean, it's it's just as much, if not more, than scotch. Yes. I mean, even stuff like the Woodford uh, chocolate malted rye that wasn't very received very well still is one hundred and twenty nine dollars. Yeah. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. But yeah, I, it also depends on what kind of scotch you're going for. Are you going for something that's peaty and very peaty, or are you looking for an unpeated? Or you that's know, what I'm going it, for. It just all depends on peaty, <laughs> peaty, peaty. Yay! I got compass box here, and I got peat here. So, so time for me. Uh, it looks like Sam is Sam is waiting to come in, but she needs an opening. I probably got about fifteen minutes, and I'll and I'll take off. That works. Sam wants to wait around that long. I tried to she's drinking beer. She's uh, or yeah. white bar. She's drinking, she's drinking, that, yeah, she's drinking that Bud Light sparkling stuff. Yeah, <laughs> Bud Light seltzer. Ugh. Why is, man, why? 
<laughs> like right now I have like six white claws in my garage fridge just for when people come over and <laughs> stay there until other people. Do that. <laughs> so Sarah, throughout, throughout this whole year, have you gotten even slightly more used to PETA stuff or are you still completely turned off by it? There are some that have the, like the lowest of low amount of peat that I can tolerate, but I still don't like it. <laughs> if that answers your question at all. Even like Glenfiddich. Like it, it's, I don't know. Peat really. it. <laughs> wow. Wow, <laughs> yeah. Glenfiddich has too much peat for her. I just, I can't get past the Band-Aid. And yeah. it just is, it's unappealing smell to me, so I don't even want to taste it. What about like Bunahabin? Bunahabin 12? <laughs> what was the one that we did? She did. She she did okay with Boone Hobbin. Yeah, there's um, like no peat in that. I mean, I so hard. Right. And like the classic Lottie, she it's yeah. an loves. It's an, it's an unpeated. She loves the scotch. classic Lottie. I'm well, cool the, with the unpeated. It scotch. still has an earthiness to it. And, well, that's true, because even some of the things in Campbelltown that were unpeated, even though they had that Campbelltown funk, was okay she still it. was fine with that as long as it was an unpeated release. Mm, yeah. Well, since Jason pulled out the Pulteney. Got a Scott Selection 28 year cast strength coming at 56.9 from 1977. Oh, wow. Nice. Yowza. And this thing is Eek. awesome. No, I didn't. Uh, yeah, I haven't had this since probably yeah, 15 years. Unpeated. The last time I pulled this out was when Brooke Lottie was here. Yeah. Uh, Brooke Lottie and Weston was here for a tasting last year. I pulled this out for, for Erica and Justin to drink. Uh -huh. That and that little mill twenty year. Jason, what is that that you pulled out? This is a Longmorn sixteen. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Ooh, I like the box. That's cool. It's a pretty display. Yeah, it is. It isn't that pretty. It has. It's actually magnetized. So if you let go, it. That is such a cool feature. Yeah, I love. Yeah. One. I love you, one. You one. almost drop the damn thing because you pick it up from the top. If you don't pick it up just right, yeah. Almost. Yeah, you have to. You have to grab it from the bottom because if you don't. Oh. Yeah, it might pull out, but yep. this was the first. This was the I bought this because I had the Longmorn at the whiskey vault and mm -hmm. fell yes. in love. So I'm like, so I saw this. Yes. And I'm like, Holy crap! I'm yeah. getting it. Which really? one did you have at the vault, Jason? You remember? I had the one that Daniel pulled out. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. that was probably the old one, right? Yeah, that was the old one. That was yeah. yeah that that like, I had never. I'd never have anything like that. That, that was, was yeah. I actually bought a, bought a round of those for people at the, uh, the whiskey house when I went there a little while ago, Jason. And uh, just like they still had the old one around, but not too many of them left. They, I, those of you that haven't been there, they have the biggest whiskey collection in the world. They have uh, the world record now. Uh, yeah. Wow. It's, it's like the most whiskeys on display. And basically, you can order any single one of them that you want. Um, it's a really, really cool place to go if you're ever in San Diego. I need to go there. Yeah, Dram Bam, thank you, man. Uh, he brought up another interesting tidbit about this bottle. If you look at the bottom of it, it's wrapped in leather on the bottom. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Fancy. Yeah, why I know. It's fancy. It's got. It's like wearing – it's like whiskey chaps. <laughs> <laughs> it's like whiskey assless chaps. <laughs> that's actually exactly what it is. <laughs> uh, I'm sure that's exactly what they were going for. Uh. Yeah. I think it was Will that, that had a name for the, the hole in the bottom of a wine wine bottle. Mm. The finger hole. It's the butt. Well, yeah. Somebody who has a hunt. name for that. Hunt. We is call it, it the glass hole. hole. The glass, glass hole. Glass hole. <laughs> yeah. So Scott, <laughs> do, uh, Scott what did you do for the big 5 -0? Do what? Do what, Jason? What did you do for the big 5 -0? Uh, I had a little get together. I had a few friends and uh, people over and had uh, ordered some barbecue, had a, pulled out a bunch of whiskey and got hammered. Nice. <laughs> Sounds like a good time. Oh, yeah. Great yeah. birthday, then. Never too old for that. <laughs> she enjoyed the J. Riddle peated bourbon. That's true. She did. Really? It didn't taste like normal peat. That's surprising. Well, because that is I not like a very good whiskey at all, I'll be honest. You don't like it? See, I think it's great. Do you, you really like it? No, I, that's really like it. I liked it so much. Cliff donated a bottle, and I'm thrilled. Yeah. No, that's that's Michigan stuff. That's um, two James, right? Yep. Damn yeah, it's, I was not a fan of that. It's just like – it's 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 too weird. Like when I think peated, I think the peated stuff I've tried, I guess. So it's just – peated bourbon is just off. <laughs> yeah, it's a little different. Maybe that's that's why sure. I liked it. I it know. is. I, like it. I I really like it. It's so it's I, the most bourbony. It's the most. Oh. 
Pete you've ever had in a bourbon that I could find that I really liked. Yeah. I didn't say I wanted to drink it. I don't know. I put it over there. Oh. Um, I have a question for you guys. So I'm almost done with my Amrut Fusion. Mm, what should be my next Indian whiskey? Do you have Paul, any Paul John at all? Huh? Paul John. John. I've done the Paul John Brilliance. Okay. Uh, the Bold, Paul John Bold, mm -hmm. is amazing. Is um, that the peated one? Or? Yeah, it's heavily peated. Mm -hmm. uh, the yeah, Paul is. John Peated is good, but the Bold is so much better. Okay. I will uh, try to find that one for sure. I don't think I've had any Indian whiskey at all. Did, would you agree with that, Matt, or would you disagree? Well, no, the the peated is more peated than the bold. There's there's the edited, and then there's the bold, and then there's the the peat. Okay, the peat is the cast strain. Sorry, so I I got that I got that flipped. Yeah. Go the for the one that is edited. Is labeled I'm as peated. surprised to hear that something called peated would be less peated than something else that they offer. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's <laughs> and it's delicious. Well, and we've done we've had those too, and then there's a couple of the cast strength ones or higher ABVs. The classic is one of them, and then it must be the peated. Yep, and then um, Paul, and I don't really remember. I mean, those are all good. We had uh, one that's called Kanya from Paul John as well. Uh, is really good. Sherried. Mm. And oh, they actually, well, I, they, they've been friendly with us and they've sent us a couple of bottles. They, they had a Christmas edition that was out this year as well. That was pretty good. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very good. This is that one you're talking about? Yeah, the Kanye. Yeah. yeah. I haven't opened it yet, so I don't know what it tastes like. I, I'm assuming it's amazing from what that's, you told that's me. The, it's, the, it's the Kanye? The Kanye. <laughs> Close. Kanye. The, yeah, Kanye. <laughs> We're pouring some uh, Boone Haben 25. Oh, to oh, your, to your point, Chris. <laughs> yeah, see, there's no peat on it. No. Yeah, they're going to have to match their Boona. That's a Boona challenge right there. They just dropped <laughs> I know, they just dropped the Boona. I'm going to have to grab a Boona now. Yeah, Jump Boona, this is the one you want to get. This one that says peated on it's 55. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's so good. It's like and it doesn't taste anything. It doesn't taste anything like Amrut. Uh, it's in a different area of India. It's not nearly as hot in the climate. Yeah. Uh, so it ages a little bit more gracefully. Okay. Um, yeah, I enjoyed the heck out of Paul John. That was a fun exploration. Well, not the brilliance and anyway, but I saw a bunch of them at that. I, I discovered a new liquor store in my area, which is always kind of like a good one, you know, which is always a fun thing. Um, I've had people since since probably like the last year or so, people have gone to different liquor stores in Massachusetts or New Hampshire or Connecticut that I should go to. And I finally did it. And so I went into the store and it was as amazing as they suggested, very different style than the one that's close to me. And when I started talking to one of the guys that, that worked there, um, he was like, oh, so you're like whiskey guy. And I'm like, yeah. He's like, I got some stuff I want you to try. I'm like, well, I got nothing to do. <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that what he said? You're like whiskey guy? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, then he's like, yeah, I have a whiskey blog myself. And I'm just thinking, I'm like, OK, well, that's that's cool. It was in Portuguese or something. So I didn't I didn't, you know, I have no clue what it says. But um, oh, your friend Felipe, he, <laughs> <laughs> I forget his name, but it was whatever. So um, I had the Turconnell 16, actually, which Nice. A limited edition one. And um, I, there were there were two, actually, two different 16s that they had. I'm trying to remember what they are. I took pictures of it. I don't, I don't remember. But um, extremely good, actually, which I remember doing the original Tur Turconnell, and it was, you know, it's fine. It's Irish whiskey. It's whatever. Um, these two were really, really good. Um, the Matt, you might know which one I'm talking about. It's a green bottle for the, the 16. Yes. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> It's really good. Donald Rance will give you a dissertation on it, though. That is the he is as we I guess his new name is uh, the Irish Yoda. So you know, yeah, but yeah, so, it's very, very good stuff. Mm, um, mm, mm, up mm, above, mm, mm. Um, Eric Evanson had a question: What's a good sherry bomb scotch? Uh, a Buna. And do batch proof. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I asked him, or I asked a question, how much do you want to spend? Because that kind of depends. Yeah. He's, willing yeah. do, he's willing to do 80. Corey Reckon? On a sherry bomb. Oh, he said peated scotch, right? No, yes. sherry bomb. Oh, sherry. I'm sorry. Sherry bomb. 
Yeah. So, so would you? Yeah, would you put him toward Glendronic or Abu Nod or something? Yeah. yeah. You can't get that for eighty. You're gonna get. I mean, you're gonna be lucky you'd find that under a hundred anymore. Yeah, that's true. For eighty, uh, how about you might be able to find McAllen Classic Cut. Yeah. Which is darn good. Yeah, uh, proof you, spike on that one. You might go ninety. Will get you the uh, Glendronic fifteen, the revival. Mm, true. Oh yeah. Oh, you might get um, Glenn going fifteen. Might be another good one to get. Can you get that for eighty? Yeah, that's not a Sherry bomb though. I mean, to me, the to me the Glenn going fifteen is the lightest of them. I mean, to me, it's it's really light on the Sherry. Really like eighteen, but it's a hundred. Uh, uh, Abu Nad is um, is only yeah, it's like eighty here in, in Ohio. Oh, yeah, it's like eighty five ninety here. <laughs> not here, not anymore. Now with the tariffs, it's not not yeah. here. It was, yeah. Now it's a hundred. But that that thing is a sherry bomb. If you want a sherry bomb, that's a sherry bomb. Which one? The Abu Nad. Yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, so of so the rare cast, but you know it's also there you go. nice. Well, the Glendron. If you want to go one hundred and forty range, Glendronic eighteen. Um, were there any Compass Box releases that were like super ch sherry? The Spaniard. Um, you know what? No, I mean it's not even a sherry bomb. Yeah. No. No, funny you guys are making me realize I have totally not covered nearly enough sherry whiskeys on my. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, wow! I've been meaning to get to a bunch of those and just never have. There's that Tam, uh, Jason mentioned that Tam Do batch strength though. That is a yeah, good, that's a good, good one. one. That's, that's gonna run you about a hundred. Yeah, yeah. Tam Do. Uh, I've seen on sale for about. I've never seen less than ninety. Uh, but I, again, like you said, I'm not sure. I'm not sure the batch proof if it's been affected by the. You got to see what the tariffs are doing, unfortunately. Yeah, that's the biggest problem now is tariffs. Um, yeah, the biggest problem is is that liquor stores are adding, they're increasing the prices on things that they brought in last year. Because yeah. they're assholes. That's, that's an wrong. Issue because mm -hmm. you didn't pay those tariff prices on this. Right. I get it. If you want to buy more of this, you're going to have to pay tariff prices on yeah, it. But I get that, totally. You yeah. shouldn't preemptively charge me more. You haven't <laughs> well, paid you know that price is never going down if the tariffs go away. Like yeah. it's gonna yeah. take a while for them to, to bring that back down. Yeah. I don't know. The the place local to me, um, they're they're doing as much as they can, which I totally respect, which I, I would guess that he would just based off knowing the guy. Um he's pretty much been eating a lot of the extra cost. And just charging less and maybe like a, a little bit more for some of the more common bourbons or so. I mean, he's already a yeah. little bit higher priced, but I think that allows him to, to eat the tariff cost. So it's, it's a lot of people have been doing that my scotch. coming up a dollar or two <laughs> on, a, on a couple of uh, vodkas or a couple of bottles exactly, yep. so that what do you need to tell us, Jason? Oh, nothing. This is so good. Oh, <laughs> he's having a moment. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. I have his moment. I, I need a moment, guys. Just this. Oh, yeah, uh, the bottle. Just get into his say feelings. The Buna Haven, uh Pedro Jimenez limited release. Mm. Oh, my God. Mm. That one is so good. It is. Where'd you get? Where'd you get that at? Uh, I I traded uh I traded for it. Uh, so you know, that's an older. That's an older bottling. You know. You know Peter White out in Canada, Canada. Mm, yeah. Can yeah, he wanted um he wanted one of my um I had a barrel barrel craft spirits cast strength rye batch one he wanted. So mm -hmm. cool. So I traded because I he got me at a good time because I'm like, yeah, I love Boonhaven. and I wanted to try this one. So uh I mean it's just it's like chocolate covered raisins and honey and oh my god, it's so good. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's what we had in the vault, Scott. That or is it a different one? Um, do I have uh, maybe do, do we try the Buna 25? Maybe we did that one, but we also did that 14 year PX in there. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, that's the only one that I had. That was an older one that was cast. that was uh, it was a 14 year, yeah, yeah, that was really good. That I enjoyed the hell out of, yeah. That, yeah, I tried the 25, I think, in the vault too, and it, yeah, that kind of blew my mind. I'll do just a little bit here, and then I'll get off so Sam can come in. But from the uh, distillery, they're uh, PX Moine Oloroso. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds awesome. Hell yeah. Pizza. Yeah, so I got out the King Alexander from Dalmore. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He 
to finish okay. these six different casks. What's that okay, you're opening, Matt? The Kale Yeah, all right. Yeah. And it comes in, let's see, it's finished yeah. in uh, bourbon casks, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, yeah. Oloroso, mm -hmm. Cherrywood, Madeira, Marsala, Port Pies, and Cabernet Sauvignon. So. I tried the tasting. It was every bit as good as it should be at that price, honestly, or at least to me. I liked it a lot. I like mm -hmm. it a lot. Even though people don't like Dalmore, I like Dalmore. Yeah. They do use E150. It's Have fine. you tried the, the port wood finish from yeah. Dalmore? It's good. I, I was going to say, I liked that one. The 12 is kind of just there, but the, the port wood I was pretty impressed by. But oh. to be fair, I haven't had a ton of I glass. So finished uh, whiskeys. So. Mm. Yeah. 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 Uh, so good. What is amazing? The Balvenie Twenty One is really good in port. Mm -hmm. Those are like a lot. Yeah, I just hey, my, nep that. my nephew in uh, North Dakota just got a uh, twenty one year port wood for a hundred and twenty bucks. What? Wow. There. Yeah. How the hell did that happen? That's what it showed on the uh, receipt too. Port wood twenty uh, Bal Balvenie Twenty One year. Wow. Twenty two bucks. Holy crap! <laughs> was a like, way older bottling just been sitting there forever. Well, that I don't know, but either way, it's still an amazing deal. Yeah, it is. I can't, say, I can't say I've had any Dalmore, so I can't even be a judge of it. I just always heard people shit on it all the time. Oh yeah. Chris, did you say that you're you're having a spring bank right now? Yes, um, I had a sample sent to me actually from George Kaplan. Spring bank, the uh, long roll red Pinot Noir, twelve year, fifty two point nine percent. Mine's boring. It's just the ten year. So I'll have that. We poured ourselves the uh, Brooklotic Black Art 1990. Oh, nice. Mm. Oh, I finished. I just finished some of my. I just finished that bottle not that long ago. This is insanity. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I haven't gone to the nose. I mean, I haven't gotten to the taste yet. The nose itself is just such a fruit bomb. Hello, bacon. I, I love this thing. Hello, bacon. Hey, it's Weasley. It is Weasley. The bacon kitty. Weasley has a special uh, cameo in he the does. bacon episode. Nice. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Want <laughs> some whiskey? Yeah, let's just make a thumbnail for it and release it next week or so. Yeah, <laughs> let me know a day before you do it this time. Yes, I know. So, are you guys are you guys big fans of uh, Springbank? I know there's you know I love Springbank. It is yeah, one like Springbank. Yeah. So. Yeah. Scott, what about you and Bart? Are you? I never. I don't know. I feel like I never really hear you guys talk about Springbank too much. We're, uh, we're not big fans. No, really. I mean, it, it's okay. It's good. We just don't. We're, I don't think we're getting what what a lot of other people are getting out of it. Yeah. And I think the funk is uh, is a love hate relationship. Um, which one did we just do though? Oh no, it was the uh, the Kill Karen Eight Sherry Cask. Mm. Mm. I heard. Mm. No, I mean, to me, I really do like that one, and and the funk in that one though, it's really strong. You know, it's it's just down the road from Springbank, so they're sharing that Campbelltown uh, funk, and there's it's heavy in that, and I, oh, I, I kind of go back and forth, but I, I'm really leaning towards I like it. <sighs> so now I'll tell you with Springbank though, I have a a, a twenty year single cask ex bourbon. That I really do like. So let me ask you guys a question because this this has been occurring to me lately. <clears throat> when you go into a liquor store and you don't necessarily know what you want to buy, like let's say you just go, what makes you pull the trigger on a bottle? Is there anything in particular? Is it? I'm guessing it's basically that you've never had it before, but it's usually I found it at a better price than I was expecting to find it at. Mm. That's, I mean, like, that's a big driving force is price point. Um, things that are on sale always stick out. Hmm. Yeah, honestly, these days for me, it's more, if it's a limited release at a good price, I'll get it. Or store pick. That's a big thing for me is store picks, you know. We got an echo. Yeah, we got an echo. I don't know who's got an echo, but we got an echo. You do. Heard it here. Yeah. yeah, I didn't hear anything. I don't hear anything. Yeah. Yeah. Did you smack the, the cord again? No. <laughs> I would touch the damn thing to the keyboard. Is the kitty chewing on the, the coat? <laughs> the cat's <laughs> chewing on bacon. <laughs> he gets they get thrown regularly the bacon. Keep them away from us. <laughs> How about you, Scott? You got such a huge collection. I'm I'm curious, uh 
You know, um, mine comes down kind of knowing what's coming out from distillery special releases or whatnot, or just new editions. Watching social media, just watching Twitter and watching Instagram to see what people are talking about. Uh, you know, if, if I'm in a store and I see it, boom, I'm snatching it up. Mm -hmm. So, um, but you know, the old standbys though too. If you if you go in a store and oh, here's something new from you know Eagle Rare or yeah. Uh, Elijah Craig, you know, if it's something I haven't seen before, I'm going to get that regardless. So yeah. I have given up on, you know, an early on several years ago, craft distilleries or something that was kind of new that showed up, we'd buy it and try it. And I mean, there's just been so much new stuff, so many new distilleries that have popped up. And every time you go into the store, there's something new there. Um, I, I'm not buying those anymore until I see or hear you know, uh, one of you guys, somebody else really talking about it, really raving about it. So it really has got to come down to that kind of tried and true distillery. Someone I know, one of the big boys or whatnot. But. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking I, of which, Matt, I saw you did, uh, you had the, which, what was the broken barrel that you were? Uh, oh, the rye. The rye. Yeah. yeah. What do you think of that? Meh. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I like of, of the three broken barrels that I had, one was the Mizunara, one was the Pete, and one was the Am Amarandio or something like that. Uh, the Amontillado. Yeah, thank you. Um, the Mizunara was actually pretty good. The other two were okay, but I don't know. They got to do something different. They got to do something impressive, I think, or they're going to act I would, I would actually, uh, I would actually agree with you. The um, uh, I got I got three samples of their stuff. Uh, the Isle of Pete, the Amontillado, and the Mizanura. And the Mizanura was easily my favorite. Yeah. Mm. I think the package they sent me. <laughs> You're like, what do I do with the rest of this whiskey? Give it to other people. Yep. <laughs> so Matt, is that 21 years old? Yeah, that's the 21 year um, Glenfiddich rum cask. Okay. Nice. Forty percent. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Unfortunately. Yep. What'd you say? It's forty percent. Yeah, that's the only problem with Glenfiddich. They really love forty percent. Yep. Yeah, they do. The basil Aiden dollar. It's the basil yeah. Aiden's of Scotch. <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking basil Aiden, man! Oh, it kills me. But I mean, I mean, Basil Hayden, Old Granddad One One Four is basically Basil Hayden Higher Proof, so it just doesn't have the Basil Hayden name on it. So, I mean, you can't and get pay the same price or a little cheaper. You just want a high proof Basil Hayden? Just go buy Old Granddad. Yeah, yeah. I'll take that all day. Yeah, it's cheaper. Old Granddad One One Four is. It's a staple in our house, actually. Oh yeah, that's a best cocktail whiskey out there, in my opinion. Yeah, oh, yeah. Kilojolt points out the Project uh, 20 or the double X. Oh, not 40. Okay. Yeah, and, and some of their special releases aren't, uh, I suppose. Um, let me check real quick. Actually, I noticed that with, uh, I was looking at, speaking of standing in a in a store and trying to figure out what to buy, hmm. um, I picked out a bourbon I was going to buy, then I went around to see any scotches they got in. I was looking at Glenn Levitt's because I haven't really had a lot of experience with those. And I saw that most of those were forty percent. Um, and then I, then I looked. I saw they had a French. They had a French oak finish, which I'm a huge fan of French oak. Then they had a cognac finish, and I'm looking across the line. I was like, everything was forty percent. And I was like, son of a bitch. I'm like, is everything they do also forty? On the Glenn Levitt side, it yeah. seems like it. Yeah. yeah. What about it? Well, now if you get into the Naduras, for sure. I mean, those are cast strength. That's what I was just going to say. So the Nadoras are the only ones that come up in a higher proof, right? Um, that, your, the single cast, the Pullman Car series comes in much at cast strength. Um, those are the only ones I know from Golden Levitt that come in higher. Yeah, I've got a Pullman Car actually out. I'll tell you guys one thing that you do not want to do if you're going in a, a, like a liquor store and trying to pick stuff. You don't want to be posting pictures in Discord or anywhere, really, because everybody will tell you to buy everything. You're correct. Um, <laughs> so, for example, last time I, when I did go to that store recently, I actually, considering what they had, I walked out of there with somewhat unimpressive stuff. I picked up the Springbank uh, 10, 
and I, I grabbed the um, 1792, the the full batch, the bottled and bond, and the um, uh, full well, sorry full proof bottled and bond, and the single barrel. I think, um, which is fine. I mean, they're they're great. I'm looking forward to trying those. But I uh, like. I don't know. Could have walked out of there with something awesome. But I remember Christine Deems was like, you have to buy that spring bank. It's cheaper than you'll find anywhere else. And I had no intention of picking it up, but then <laughs> $70 later, $62 later, something like that. Yeah, it's always, it's always what happens. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I'm like, with you, Scott. I, I, I was underwhelmed by the spring bank 10. I'm, I'm holding, I'm reserving my opinion until I try some of their, their higher, you know, age stuff. But I don't get it why people love spring bank so much. So, well, yeah, this, this spring bank at 52.9% is really good. I really like it. Mm. I'm on the lost blend. Which one was it, Chris? It's the uh, long roll red Pinot Noir. Yeah. 12 year. Uh, the hazel burn. I've got uh, a couple of years ago, the hazel burn 13 year Oloroso and it's pretty decent. And the long row red. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's decent too. <clears throat> now Roy was telling me to pick up the long rows that that I saw a while back. Um, I've been tempted to do that too. I just haven't pulled the trigger on those. It's it's, it's like anything else. You you want to buy every bottle in the store. <laughs> yeah, there's the problem. Yeah, yeah. The the a couple of long road row reds I've had experience with have been. I thought they were delicious. The uh, cow. I had a cop franc. I had a pinot noir. I had the. Um, Mm. I had a couple of the single cast Chardonnay to 17 years that were just really just so good. So yeah. I I think it just depends. I do feel like it's it's a great quality whiskey. I did well. I was a fan of the 10 year, the regular cast rank, the 12 year. So, so make, wait, but yeah, you have to kind of like that specific flavor profile that it has. Yeah. I yeah, think I'm going to get used to it. I'm going to so shut it down here. here. I'm going to shut it down. Congratulations to the Whiskey Crusaders on your first year. Thank you. Good job. Keep up the good work. I'm, I'm going to get out of here and Sam can come in and show everybody how it's done. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Appreciate Thanks, it. Yeah. Thanks sure. for hanging out, Scott. Later, Later guys. Yeah. All right, Sam, you're, you're, you're on. Game on. So, I think, Will, I, I got think, a question. Uh, I think she went to pee, and then she's going to come back. <laughs> <laughs> Since you're much more of a wine guy, Will, yeah, are there any wines in your mind that? Hey Sam, you're on now. Hey. What is the next thing that you think should be? We'll grab Ed here in a little bit. Too. Like I've seen, I've seen. Um, what is it? It's something Frank, Frank, whatever. Frank. Yeah, that that I've seen a little bit more recently. But what's next? What do you think? Cab Franc is one of my favorite wines. Um, it is the parent grape to Cabernet Sauvignon. Okay. Um, so Cab Franc and Sauvignon Blanc got together way back in the day and made Cabernet Sauvignon. <laughs> uh, and Cab Franc to me is as powerful and as big and as robust as Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, but Cab Franc has this velvet mouthfeel, um, like you're licking velour, right? Like it just has this just wonderful elegance to it. Um, and I, I feel like that would trans translate pretty darn well into a whiskey as well so um that does that doesn't surprise me that cabernet franc is being used um there's a lot of malbec being made right now um, i could see that trans translating fairly well into a, a good whiskey flavoring as well um i'm not seeing as much white wine um yet so we'll see if that takes over well, I know Glenn Murray did a, a Chardonnay, mm -hmm. uh, which my wife calls Chardonnay. Um, yeah. she's, she's like, not, which is perfect because when I'm looking to buy her a bottle, I know not to get that. Um, <laughs> but but uh, I, yeah, I'm interested. I don't think like a white wine, maybe it'd be interesting to see like a Speyside Scotch mixed with something like a Moscato or a Riesling just to see what the hell it is. That's what I was thinking too. Like a Moscato, I mean, a Riesling from Germany. Uh, yeah. Alsace France, um, mixed with something like a peated, uh, peated would work better for sure. I, I think it would. I think it would be a really fun combination of flavor. Yeah, because you can't have anything too sweet, otherwise it's just gonna be overwhelming. That's right. a good point, actually, because a riesling would probably overpower a lot of stuff. Yeah, it, it could. Peat. So yeah, like Sam, uh, Sam, what kind of, wouldn't work. Sam, what kind of wine is in your box? It's the Costco. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's $12.99. It's uh, vintage 2018 Kirkland. Good year. Good year. Yep. Cabernet, summer, no, no, no. And it's fucking oh, delicious. It's That's so Sam's bitter. house red. It's just. Uh... Sam's house red. Somebody oh, already in the chat told me to put it away. They don't know me. And I said that. <laughs> don't even know me. This is my life. Um, I don't drink whiskey right now because it makes me a drunk asshole. All right. It'll make me a fun asshole. You should have at least pulled out a Glen Karen and drank it out of a Glen Karen. I could, I, you know, well, um, oh, I can do that. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> totally oh. kidding, but thanks, Sam. I got it. Barrel proof. Want it. Mm, you can't talk shit if it's out of a Glen Karen, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry that I'm late to the party. I. Please don't. It's your fault. We can only host six people. It sucks. Yeah. Which, by the way, I, I, I got in touch with the guy that does StreamYard. You know, it's like two guys. And um, he said that sometime in 2020, it's going to expand beyond 60. I, beyond six people. Because, yeah, we got, in a little bit, we'll add um, Ed and Josh as well. Yeah, but then how small are the pictures going to be? Well, yeah. actually, right now, if we just moved up, we could fit a whole other row down We right. could. We if could everybody get, scooted up a little more. bit, we could there. fit three more people. Yeah, you're going to have to pay for it. Well, it, it kills me because I like I'm I'm wondering if Matt is not seeing the right piece because I know that they can uh, like I'm pretty sure before I bought the license that I can move people closer. It, it probably is. You can move. It. You only have a few. Sl My guess is you probably have more options than you have. I might. I might. Actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, because you have the powered by Steam Yard up at the top, it probably doesn't want to condense us anymore because that keeps it right. full in frame. Chris, right. move, Chris, move to your left a little bit more. My left or your right? Yeah, I clean your ear out. That's so stupid. Jason, I'm going to pick you up. <laughs> getting this out of my fucking way. All right. So those of you in the chat, what's my next dram? Is it the Iron Root Icarus, the Iron Root Promethean, or the Iron Root Harbinger? Harbinger. Icarus, I say. So I'm late to the party. Why are you drinking all the iron iron roots? I mean, I love iron roots. Somebody mentioned I, earlier in the in the Discord that we were doing iron roots potentially tonight. Oh, okay. Well, so I, 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 just, I pulled them all. Why the hell not? It's iron root. I, got iron, I agree. Right? I fucking love iron root. They're my I. I basically give those guys press and like or publicity anytime I can. <laughs> right. It's good shit. Yeah, they're always nice to me, and I'm nice to them. So they actually let me let me go grab a thing. I have a I have a. Thing. I love. I'm nice friends. Are you guys know. friends with Robert on Facebook? Because I am. Wow. Yep. Oh yeah. Well, of course you are, Sarah. You know all those fuckers. I do have a lot of Texas shit over here, but I can't drink it, guys. I can't drink because it'll make me black out, and then I'll be an asshole. <laughs> it's so weird coming off. I, I just poured the Longmore in 16 and coming off the Bunahaben, this is like, it just, it tastes like pure peaches. It's so good. Wow. Isn't it fun to experiment with whiskey like back and forth, like between tasting stuff in different orders? Yeah. Yeah. Coming off the, coming off the Bunahaben, I do <coughs> all peaches and yeah. yeah, peaches and candy. It's so good. It's you like those back to back when your palate's not like, yeah. Shot in general, you know. Yeah, exactly. Just to see if it's the same. Well, Here. I haven't. You know, I didn't drink too much on my science because we were. Yeah, we were. We were talking a lot about the different distilleries local to us, but kind of doing these all back to back. Yeah, coming off the Bunahab and the Longmore, all of a sudden, all this peach came out, which I didn't. I didn't realize was there when I first tried it. So really interesting. Yeah, so this is the Glen Lovett single cask. This is a Pullman water level route. This is at 55.94. There are 321 bottles in the world, and this is bottle 131. Wow. So, yeah, this stuff is what the Pullman cars, the old, uh, like, basically first-class train cars, and Glen Lovett was the very first mini to be served as a scotch on the trains. So they brought the special edition series to commemorate the Pullman cars. Is it uh, age-stated or anything? It's 14 years old. Oh, 14, okay. Yeah, it's and it's pretty freaking awesome. It's really good. Yeah, it's one of the few you can get age state that you can get age stated that has actual mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas you know the 1840. So, so you know, 21 40. 
It seemed uh, pretty much down the middle, whether people wanted me to drink the Harbinger or the Icarus, which means I'm going to mix them. <laughs> yes. Yay. yes. Good idea. Uh, you're going to make a, you're going to make a Hickorus. <laughs> <laughs> Big old yeah. Hicker, Hickorus. Yes. Hickorus. I approve. A, 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 a super social. <laughs> hey, what's up, Jeremy? Jeremy. And uh, Jason, I'm actually going to put your coin on top oh, of the glass. Oh, nice. right. I got my new uh, Neil Peart coins uh, coming in uh, that just came in. So, oh, is it things really cool. I always thought it was Pert. No, it's Peart. Wrong, wrong, Bill. It's Peart. I'm, I'm so sorry. It's o it's okay. I called him Pert like all throughout my years until someone said, "Hey, asshole, it's it's Peart." I'm like, well, okay. Family Guy called him Pert with the the Chester Cheetah thing. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. It's very, yeah, yeah, it's, very, 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 it's very right, but I'm, 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 I'm somewhere down the line, ah. it became corrected. So interesting. Yeah, I, I am not to blame. So I blame Chester Cheetah. <laughs> so scary people asked me what my favorite HS was, which I at first was like, "What's my favorite high school?" And I'm like, "Obviously, Dixie Heights High School, home of the Colonels." <laughs> <laughs> But then I thought about it more, and he's probably talking about the Highland Scotch, right? Or is there something else that I'm missing? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what an HS would be. Oh, hard, hard seltzer. Hard seltzer. Hard seltzer. Hard seltzer. Oh, for sure. Um, the swill, the swill one. There's one that's something with swill. Although I'm not gonna lie, you guys were fucking making fun of me, but the Bud Light seltzer that just came out, <laughs> fucking delicious. Really, they're pretty Stop good, huh? Check. It is so good. I'm All telling right. you, it's got the best flavor. Mm. Try it when nobody's looking. I won't tell anyone. <laughs> it's good. The mango one the is on point. Yeah. So the one I that you liked, did you say right it was called Swill? <laughs> yeah. Swill is the, there's one that's like, it's hard swill or so. I don't know. We did it in our video when we did 31 different seltzers. Yeah. I mean, that I was the, you know, that was heard oil as a term to much. describe that. something that was terrible, like a terrible right. alcohol. Right, but it also it's counts like, for for seltzer. So, yes, Bourbon Buddy says better than White Claw. Hundred times, the Bud Light seltzer is better than White Claw. <laughs> well, I, I stand first. by that. Bill, look at <laughs> <here> first. <laughs> I'm sure that she said it before. Bill, so, look in the chat. It's swell, swell, swell. Whatever the fuck oh, it is, swell. it's good. Okay. Oh well, I I'll find a link for it. Any company calling their product "swill" and actually trying to make <laughs> I think it's swell. Hey, swell, swell. swell. <laughs> Sam's drunk on box wine. Drink our new craft beer, literal crap. Yep. <laughs> so, and we are going to put out another hard it's seltzer hard. video for spring break. No, well, I mean there was an old beverage, just probably like twenty, called Pimp Juice. Mm. Oh God, I remember, I remember that. Juice. I don't know I what the hell was in it. Was it in a purple can? I don't remember. I oh, hope so. I know my brother used to drink it. I was like, it's just freaking hilarious. You can't, you can't make that these days. People get offended. Mm. Nope. Can't do that. Mm -mm. Damn, you, they're, they're watching the wrong channels that they're going to get offended. Yeah. Yo, Jason Coates, I'm with you. I would. I, I, as soon as I said that, I was like, you know, I would totally drink a, a beer called of Literal Crap. Would, because at that yeah. point, you're so intrigued that it says Literal Crap on it. Yeah. <laughs> you would like take a single that. sip and just be like, I don't know what I was expecting. <laughs> right. Christy, you have to buy it. It's it's like guaranteed. Like it might be terrible, and it would be okay if it was terrible. It's kind of a win-win if a exactly. beer company, a brewery, makes literal literal crap. It's kind of like if you buy a bottle of Jephtha Creed and you think, I know this tastes like shit, but I'm going to try it to really see if it tastes like shit. And then you try it and you're like, yeah, this tastes like shit. Honestly, you know how many bottles Jason has sold just because he said how bad it is? Oh, my God. Yeah. I guarantee it. He has kept <laughs> Jephtha Creed in. They are in business because of Jason. Yeah, exactly. People are like, I got to try this. It be, but if I get either 100 feet from them, I'm getting sniped. <laughs> yeah, you can't go. Yeah, You're going to get struck by lightning. Not, I'm not even scared of getting shot. I'm scared of, I'm scared of the owner. She'll fucking well, kill Yeah, me. she'll fucking kill you till you're dead. Yep. Hands down. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jason, you you've been like nice about the whole thing. I mean, you've you've talked like you've said it's not good, but you've been you've been like sit with them. No, I I keep saying, listen, it's you know whatever yeah. happened in their first batch happened. I just yeah. I I honestly Jesus. I sincerely just want their whiskey yeah. 
feed. I'm like, I'm yeah. not, it's not like I'm like, your whiskey sucks. I hope you fail. Yeah, you're exactly. Cold. Exactly. Yeah. I, I generally believe in what they're doing. They're doing everything grain to glass. And I just, I really hope it gets better. I just, they're, they're whatever it's happens. Just in their fucking first, blows. Yeah. <laughs> not there. Fortunately. It's not good. Yeah. Mm. Piss. Well, sir. Swell, sir. Is I'm Bill looking for right the now? swell. Bill, were you what? talking? I can't hear a word you're saying. Who? That's because I muted myself. All right. Oh, nice. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I'm glad. I'm glad I saw you all looking confused. I saw your lips moving. I was wondering. <laughs> um. <laughs> A couple of years ago, I tried I tried this whiskey called Mad River uh, whiskey, and it was this old lady, and it was I believe it was the mom or maybe even the grandmother of the owner. Like she was a like a pretty old lady, and she was there selling or promoting the whiskey. And I tried it, and it was terrible. And <laughs> and uh, like me and three other people or so, I think we're all trying it together. And we we were like, oh yeah, thanks for the the free sample. We turned around, we just like tossed it in the trash, right? And it was it was that bad. So I think this last within the last six months or so, I saw them again. They were doing another tasting, and I tried it, and I was like, you know what? They're in their business. They must have learned their lesson. They must have come up with something better. And I tried it, and it was just as bad. And I was so sad about it. And it's probably the it's one of the worst. Um, like craft distillery whiskeys that I've ever tried. Yeah. And, and it made me so sad because I'm like, you guys are close. I could go visit you. I could, yeah. you know, like promote you. It'd be fine. But uh, oh well. well it's, I mean, that's what it's about. I, you know, I, I'm not sure what happened because, like I said, the new make at Jephthah was really delicious. And they used the bloody, the bloody butcher corn, which has a nuttiness to it. It's got a little bit more starch than sugar. So it comes across as a little bit more nutty. Um, and I was really looking forward to tasting that that different type of profile that that you get, and and the new make it really came through. It was really sweet, but you know when they aged it, I'm not really sure what happened there. I don't know if the wood was just for whatever wood they put it in. The barrel. Okay, you think it's the barrels, honestly? Yeah, I mean it had to be because I, I'm not sure where else it would be because the new make was delicious. So somewhere between where the new make was and when it went into the barrel, just. It yeah. just didn't. It just didn't work. Yeah, it could have been. It could have been proofing down, adding too much water too fast. It could have been bad barrel. It could have been. There's oh, a lot yeah. of things that can go wrong. There's I, so I, much. Thought, I yeah. thought. Well, I thought the water too was what could have been a. Once they proofed it down, that could have really brought out some of those gnarly flavors that were hiding underneath the. And if they add water too fast, it usually fractures the whiskey, and, and yeah. You can't, yeah. You can't fix that once it happens. So. Yep. Um. Do you know where they're getting their barrels? No, I, I I visited there when they were very early on. I don't I don't remember offhand. Yeah, we've started asking pretty early on where are you getting your barrels? Mm -hmm. um, what what type of barrels are you buying? Are you buying kill kiln dried barrels or are you buying air dried barrels? Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, on Discord, usually they tell us there's not a difference, and as soon as they say there's not a difference, I'm like, okay, well, yeah, well, I'm yeah, you're yeah. wrong, wrong now. Yeah. 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 and that's I think that's part of the reason why. When Old Forester or anything out of Brown Foreman, they do something distinct with their barrels, something new. It usually works out because they're they're putting damn good barrels together. Yeah, the cooperage, that's the nice part. Yeah. 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 Everybody look at Sam taking a selfie of herself. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I was trying to FaceTime Bobby Zeller and he won't fucking answer. He's probably <laughs> on a shooting, which is dumb, but he he, uh, <laughs> is, he, is he stripping tonight? I can he's guys, we're out. We're out. He's investigating shit. He's a fucking cop, and I can say it now for real, yeah. for real. <laughs> he's Last probably in the middle of an investigation. He's getting a call from you. Yeah, and he's like, yeah. Well, right. two, so two nights ago, he was on a SWAT situation, and I'm calling him, and I'm like, why don't you fucking answer? And he's like, there's somebody shooting at me, bitch. Stop, stop, stop. And I'm like, okay. Call like, me when call. Out. Yeah. And then that guy ended up committing suicide, but yeah. So, oh, man. Lovely. I know it got deep. Shit got deep. Check Cincinnati news stations. But anyways, but yeah, so he was the investigator on that. And I can say that now because we're, mm. we're open. We're out. We are out of the closet. Oh, you're out of the closet. Yeah. What do you think about the, the, the Bobby no beard thing? You know, a couple months later. So I married Bobby no beard. So I okay. don't, 
I like Bobby No Beard. I know you guys don't understand that. That's like not <laughs> right. That's not the life you want to live. So, um, but I uh, I like him without it. I hated the beard. I fucking mm. hated the beard, and I just lived with it for the last two years because I knew eventually he would go back to an assignment where he had to cut it. And um, now he is, and I'm I'm happy. I'm fucking drinking. Box wine out of a Glen Karen. So Bobby <laughs> Babyface. I know Bobby Babyface. He misses it. Yeah. But he just got a real fancy new truck because Ooh, he now has this truck? new fancy new job. So you know, we it's what kind of truck? He it's, got it's, a twenty twenty boss trailer something. Oh. No. I don't know, it's a Chevy. It's Ooh. a big ass. Mm, pretty Chevy nice. Pretty nice though. It's pretty, it's cute. No poo. <laughs> I mean, you guys can make fun of it. I don't give a shit. I'm not, I'm not doing it, but. I have a bright you know, red play over the tundra. So it's, we're not paying. Huge. So I kind of explained this on Sunday, but to anybody that didn't watch oh. our shit show, I work during the day. He goes in at 6 p.m., which is why we haven't done much because he goes in at 6, gets off at 2 a.m., Mm-hmm. He's a shooting investigator. His main focus is to investigate all non-fatal shootings. He's a cop. Spoiler: We didn't. If you didn't get that before, <laughs> and um, so it's we've done this before, but we've never done it since we've had kids, where we've worked opposite shifts. But we're. I mean, it's fine. We figure it out, and we don't have to pay for daycare, which is fantastic. Yeah, that's that's nice. Amen to that. Because yep. it's freaking expensive as hell. It's already. very fucking expensive. I don't want to pay for it ever again. Oh, Bobby oh. Zeller's FaceTiming me. Oh, hey. I guess we'll grab him real quick. You want to say hi? Uh, sure. <laughs> hey, Bobby. Hey, Bobby. Hey, Bobby. Hey, everybody. Tiny Bobby. Tiny bald Bobby. It's, he's, <laughs> his Tiny little hair. Bobby. <laughs> there he is. Look at that face. face. It's like Sputnik. Yeah. <laughs> So thank you for all, all you friends. do, buddy. Really, thank you. What's that? They said thank you for all you do. Yeah. Yeah. He's in. I just told him how you were on a SWAT situation two nights ago, and she's revealing her secrets. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Bobby. I'm, like, I'm gonna Facetime Bobby. I don't care if he's on a I shooting. Like, I like me, Bobby. <laughs> Bobby, can you can you flashbang Sam? <laughs> <laughs> That's not a no. <laughs> it's not a no. <laughs> that There's would be people that haven't seen your non-beard too. So oh. people in the chat are like, "Where's Bobby's beard?" And everybody's like, "Bobby, Bobby." <laughs> Desk pop. Yeah. So I just want. I thought you want to say hi to the chat. Right. So. All right. We love you, Bobby. We Bye, miss Bobby. you. Bye, See Bobby. You next time, Bobby. <laughs> Good night, smooth face. There's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I'll talk to you later. Okay. He's like, like, cops are around him, and he's like, okay, I'm talking to some drunk assholes. Like, bye. Yeah. Yeah. He's probably like, oh, my wife is FaceTiming me. Yeah, my wife is FaceTiming is me. There's something, into. there's an emergency. And then he's like, oh, fuck, she's drunk talking to other drunks. Right. It's fine. Yes. So, yeah. So, you guys. You can talk now. So, sorry, Matt, Will, and Sarah. Um, I know it's been a little while. Like we, when we talked about it right at the beginning of the of the uh, episode live stream, whatever you want to call it. What is we talked about? Kind of your long term goals. Like, what is your next thing? What are you focusing on? What is after one year? Mm. Two years. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how much we can actually reveal of our grand scheme. Uh, what, what, I don't want really to take our idea. You guys, a lot more. We There's have a, a grand scheme. Stuff, like, I know Bill knows about some of this stuff, and I think most of you that are on here know about it, but not somebody put it out in public. Do you think that uh, that secret thing will happen in the next year? No, Damn. but I hope it will. I am so looking forward to when that happens. I, yeah. I I want that to happen more than anything, but I. Mm, I don't know. It depends how fast we can get everything else going. It Tell you what, to happen in our problem is my real job, and most of our problems, our real jobs get in the way of this. Yep. Yeah. I, agree. I have to pay my mortgage, so I have to I do my real you. job. <laughs> so and Patreon. Patreon. So so actually, actually, I had a I had a quick question for you guys. So since there's three of you, 
I know you guys all record together. So who does the editing and everything? How does that all go? <laughs> well, I, I, am in charge of, I am in charge of everything camera. Matt yep. is in charge of everything whiskey. Sarah is in charge of everything social. Yeah, and then I make the thumbnails. Oh, yes. And he, he I, I did put it on set up all the live streams. I get all the guests. I, I get all the whiskey. I get all the contacts. I, get all, I set up all the parties. And then I'm in charge of filming everything and making sure yeah. that things are lit right and, you know, we yeah. can actually film it. I'm in charge of editing. Nice. If you're talking to anybody on Facebook or Instagram, it's me. It's Sarah. Yeah, it's Sarah. Because I'm like, you guys all know I am basically useless with technology. <laughs> Except Discord. <laughs> You know, I'm surprised. I'm surprised. I'm surprised I'm apparently, apparently handwriting. <laughs> all, all handwriting. Right. Yeah. Oh. So, any, I think like someone got lucky and got John over here one time and he made uh, labels. With the, John and Ben I was very lucky. It was John and Ben, they were labeling stuff. So, you know. Yep. What's so Jack Daniels Heritage. Have you guys have you guys tried that? I've seen it once or twice. Is oh, it I love Jack Daniels Heritage. I haven't okay. had one yet. We're yep. big fans of the single barrel barrel proof here in this household. Yes. Yep. Single barrel barrel proof is probably my every like that's my favorite Jack Daniels of all time. But the that heritage release they did where they they mixed up some uh, they made some different types of casts again. Double barrel. That's Brown Foreman using their yep. cooperage, doing some different things with barrels. Yep. Aging it, aging it, and uh, what, it, what kind of do you know what kind of things they were doing with their? I mean, we're talking like Makers Forty Six style. No, no, these were, these were uh, these were specially selected oak barrels that were chosen by the master distiller with a specific profile. Interesting. Uh, yeah, and they they also aged it. I think at the top, if I'm remembering correctly, I, I, I should be a nerd about this and remember this. But when I reviewed it last year, I believe it was aged. At the topmost hill in a specific part of where Jack Daniels ages their uh, their barrels, hmm. and then after time, it gave it like this real deep caramel to go with that little bit of a banana note, like banana bread, and it it was it was delicious, absolutely delicious release. Yes. I'm gonna have to check that out. I've seen those bottles actually recently. Um, they're not that's crazy. A, that's an immediate, yeah, that if 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 you if you see it. How much are they charging over there? I, I'm not sure off the top of my head. It should be around 60, 70 bucks. If you I, okay, that makes sense. Because I remember seeing it and thinking it wasn't very expensive, but I would think that pretty much for something like that, I would think anything under $100 would be reasonable. Yep. Yeah. We so yeah. $60, yeah, I'll probably pick it up. With 60, that 70, that's an easy buy all day. Yeah. Although I have heard that the second batch – the one that was released this past year wasn't as good as the first batch, but um, I, I don't know if that's true or not. I haven't. I didn't try the second batch. I just have a couple bottles of the first batch in the in the in the hole. Hmm. Yeah, I, I'm with you, Jason. So I tried the 2018, okay. not the 19, but the 18 was. I mean, it's something special. I mean, it really is. Yeah, hmm. I'm gonna have to try that out. It's it's worth like, I mean. Honestly, I'd probably pay. I'd probably Somebody pay. have a Dilophosaurus behind them? What the hell was that? Is that the cat purring in the mic? No. no. <laughs> I don't have a cat. He's back there. Matt, Matt's off camera. Is he purring into the mic? <laughs> he might be. He might be Matt. <laughs> I think Sam, was that your phone? No, this is my phone. Oh, my, maybe my phone. Bobby Zeller texted me. He didn't say anything pertinent, but it could have been. <laughs> call him your, his full name. I used to do that to my wife too. For did you? Yeah. I've always called him. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's I've said it so many times. I don't even care that I say it live on TV. But yeah, he's Bobby Zeller. Yeah, that's who I married. Him Bobby when he's in trouble. Yeah, I um, totally thought that was Bacon Cat too, Doug. Doug Chrisoff. He's like, I thought it was Bacon Cat. That's I, I thought that it was too. <laughs> yeah, he's all the way over there in the corner. He's yeah. not that loud. Yeah. It it was probably Bobby. He texted me. <laughs> Because I told him how I was an asshole and missed the first hour because I was late. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to pour the last little bit of my Lafroy lore. Ooh, Ooh, nice. Sorry about that. I had to deal with children. For the evening. I I me and Sarah are going to sign off at 11. Okay, because I've got Ed I've got Ed waiting, so. That's fair. I, don't Man, know. I swear to God, like, these freaking Glencairns, they should just, I need to get one of those little scrubby brushes. They go through the dishwasher. Ooh, still, let me show you. Hang on. Kind of gross at the bottom. Let me show you. Hang on. 
Yeah, scrubby brushes rule. Yeah. Also, like when my when my kids were young and I used to have bottles and stuff for them, I would always have those bottle, bottle brushes. Yeah, and those are yeah. great. And, and now cool. that I don't have kids that are still drinking out of a bottle, I don't really have an excuse to have them around. Well, watch how you put that. All right. We found this um, at, Target. at Target. It's um, kind of plastic. Yeah. Oh, silicone. It's, but it gets it gets all up in there and gets all it's like down. for her pleasure. I mean, that's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It looks like a big butt plug to me. Yes. <laughs> it even it even gets into the tiny Glen Karens. It's like the Terminator. It's like <laughs> pretty intense. So uh, uh, I got this bottle. This is uh, McMurray. This is a Murray McDavid, a from 1993. It's, it's a 13 year old Kalila. Oh, nice. Mm, okay. So uh, I was I was lucky enough to be gifted this bottle by Roy. Oh. Roy, my Roy, my Roy. You're yeah. Roy. Fifty nine point one percent ABV. Apparently, this was aged thirteen years, and then they bottled it, and then something happened with the distribution, and it just sat in the bottle for about thirteen years before it was rediscovered and then sold. And he he got a bunch of them, and um, he brought this to the uh, to the bastards ball, and um, he was so kind enough to gift me a bottle. So um, I've only had a couple pours of this, but it's it's probably one of the most buttery toffee scotches I've ever had. It's it's delicious. I think it's a it's a nice. fitting it's a fitting uh, last dram for me tonight, and to say cheers to the whiskey crusaders in their one year. Absolutely. Yeah, that sounds good. This will this will be my last drink tonight too. So cheers to you guys. What are you guys all? Uh, what are we, what are we pouring for our last drink? Other than Sam, who's doing house, some house red. I just poured out some uh, Middleton Very Rare from a sample that we have from Matt. Ooh, nice. And I just finished off my Lafroy Glore little sample bottle. So Chris, what are you getting? I'm gonna go back to craft. Bring it back to Jason Stream. Back to a craft distillery. One of my local uh, Grand Traverse Distillery bourbon whiskey. Probably about two years, but we'll see how it is. Oh my god, it's so good! Peaty and buttery and waxy and all the good stuff about Kalila. You want some Middleton? You know the Springbank Ten. I'm. Uh, I I opened it with somebody else, and we both had it together, and we both were <laughs> not psyched about it. Having it again a few days later, I, I don't think it's had any time to really be exposed to oxygen. I, th I truly think it's just a different scenario, like different setting environment. Yeah, setting. Um, mm. The smell is more just interesting than anything. It's it's something different. So I, I kind of do like the smell. The taste is fine. Um, I think it'll grow on me, though. Yeah. Hmm. Matt, we're all having our last dram. What are you? Uh, what are you pouring? Well, I don't know. I got screaming kids. I'm dealing with. Ah. <laughs> I got a very angry child who doesn't want to go to bed as usual. You need to lay down the law, Matt. Yeah. She doesn't care yeah. how many times you spank her, or how many times you tell her she's going to take herself away, or what you take away. She could care less. Mm. It just makes her strong. You got to put it a lock on the outside of the door. Yep. Oh, so she can come through the door and break it. <laughs> She's already done that once, so I'm good. You wow. know what? I can see her coming through a door so totally easy. Like Kool Aid, <laughs> yeah, like, like <laughs> just busting through like it's nothing. She looks the damn Kool Aid man. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I, I do. I feel bad for you, Matt, because like humble brag. My kids are never like that. They fucking yeah. go. To, I say not go to bed. Either. They go to bed, and they don't. My first one did. Not, no, not my second one. She doesn't like to go to sleep ever. Yeah. Well, some kids are bitches, and I my get kids that. Are, are five and four, <laughs> almost six and four, and both of them go to bed at about seven thirty, and it takes us yep. till about eight o'clock to put them to sleep. Yeah, We're, yeah I'm eight o'clock. So I'm out of bed. Eight o'clock. Lay down. Don't fuck with me after that. Don't come out of your room. If you have to pee, do that fast. Go back in. Suck my dick. Bye. <laughs> I'm very like I'm very by the book. That's parenting one on one, everyone. Yeah. You know what? That's us too though. Eight o'clock yeah. or seven thirty. That kid's in bed. Yep. He's in bed. And mm -hmm. he's not to come out unless he has to pee and then it's quickly to pee and then, first, 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 and then you go back in and don't don't bug me. Don't bother me. Mommy's yeah. drunk, so don't bother mommy. <laughs> right. this is, mommy can't do anything for you. After eight o'clock, mommy is not 
like Mommy one anymore. Set. First Not of all, yet. Will and first of all, Will and Sarah have the cutest damn kid. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. He uh, is like he talks to you and he hangs out and he's I, I, I love that kid. <laughs> he really is super sweet. Uh we get yeah, he's he so he, he's voted on by his school. Yeah, he's he's so personable and just such a cool kid. I was yeah. So hold on. Hey, can we congrats Robert Licorice? He's in the chat. Can we congrats him? Because he has the bourbon of the world. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers to you. So actually, actually, you know, this 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 is a yeah, this is a good segue. I was actually uh showing off this or I was about to show off this thing. So the Licorice Brothers sent me this the other day i asked him i have this new little series i'm going to start on my channel pretty soon i won't go too into that but i asked them for something that made them unique and they sent me this little package here yeah so if you open this up it's kind of like a travel case for your whiskey oh, nice and it comes with these little bottles here and in a funnel and uh you can fill up the the little bottles take it with you just throw it in your bag and you've got five different drams to bring with you wherever you're going See, that's i thought it was a cool idea that's a purse I would buy. Yeah, was that? Absolutely. That's a purse I would buy. And then yeah. you know, with it, yeah, right. if you don't already have Just walk it. around with this, be like, yeah, what? <laughs> if you don't already have it, you get one of these little iron root mini Glen Garens, the nice. time Glens. They sent me one oh, of those too, because I I left mine on the table when we oh, did. Oh yeah. The tasting there, it killed me. Oh. I bet. Well, at least you have one now. Yeah. Um, These are the perfect size for, for, for small events and for, for tastings. This, this is, is what we use on the live streams to yeah. keep us, you know, from going crazy. Right. Yeah. I, I don't if, I can, if I can whore myself a little bit more on behalf of the Licorice Brothers, they do sell these on their uh, on their website. So. Who uh, doesn't fucking love the Licorice Brothers? Because I fucking love them. I don't know if anybody doesn't love them. They're really amazing people. Yeah. Also, the fact that you can call them the Licorice Brothers, like it's just <laughs> right. Like yeah. I could go dirty with that so far, and I just don't even choose to. Because like you I'm don't like, even have to. Like, people, and I'm just like. It'd be like we'll being have called the, the friggin' like Earhead Brothers or the, right. the Beatarts. Exactly. You know, <laughs> the Ginger Brothers. I still have the. You know what, Robert? I'm gonna call you and your brother the Sweet Tarts from now on. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! He'll have the peel on tattoo of his mother that I got to put on. Mm. <laughs> oh my god! You did have Marsha on your. Yeah, I had I had Marsha on me on my uh, on my shoulder. <laughs> and isn't she amazing? Yeah, yeah. I love Marsha. She is one. She's a badass bitch. Like, yeah, she is. She's a badass bitch. That's all there is to it. That's your, that's your mom that you're talking about, right? What? The no, no, Marcia. Yes. Marcia yeah, your the, the mom, right? Yeah. Yeah. She's great. <laughs> yeah, seriously, Robert, what you guys are doing, it's amazing. I'm glad everyone's starting to notice. So yeah. uh, see you there's a reason we all like you guys. Yeah. yeah. For sure. yeah. yeah we really well, they're we, not we, dicks we either. A lot of stuff and we all hey, like that's the other thing. When you see the operation and the people behind the great whiskey that they're making, it just makes it that much better. So yeah. Really yeah. They're, they're good people. Like I have met Marsha, I've met Jonathan, I met Robert. They all take me for the fucking crazy ass get back that I am. <laughs> and they love me and I love them back and they understand it. And they are just genuinely good people. And just yeah. like you want to surround yourself with people that make you happy. Dick. <laughs> and the fucking Iron Root people make me fucking happy. They do. They make me fucking happy. Jason, Jason Coates is like, seriously, when is Iron Root coming to Kansas? <laughs> yeah, like for real. When are you guys going to hit all 50 states? <laughs> right. Get your shit together. I know. Uh, really. like, why don't you just. Getting, uh, yeah, winning World Whiskey of the Year can probably open some doors for you. Yeah. yeah right. Like, sure. Learn to awesome. distill. I mean, come on. Jesus, Robert, talk to your awesome. fucking people and get it yeah. everywhere. Get a couple <laughs> more, just, uh, you know, freaking things. So, so dude, get it to Ohio. Talk to these state controlled assholes and get it here. Exactly. Get it yeah. here. Don't, so make, don't make me don't make me call Vinny and Tony. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't drink a whole lot of this because it's obviously a special bottle, but um yeah, I'm gonna have to work for I can't wait to get mine, Matt. This evening. Oh, is that the Icker? <laughs> yeah. The yeah. Icker. Icker. Hey Robert. Um Oops, what's that? 
I wouldn't mind a bottle of that. I might have to. <laughs> um, yeah. It's good shit. It is very good shit. You know, just just saying, I might I might have just put out a video on the uh, Icarus last weekend. Yeah. Maybe, just saying. Maybe it could happen. <laughs> That's what we call whoring ourselves out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we went like, if you want to be like, so how was everybody's taxes last year? Right. <laughs> we did a video on that recently, but we may have. I actually, I'm, I'm, I'm going to probably put out a Patreon uh, video on that exact topic. Please I don't really do. Like it. Yeah. It's really fun. If you have the, I, I knew mine was going to be shitty. Like I knew it. I, I, I knew, I knew. And so I wasn't, really that upset when it came down to it but it's a fun video to put out when you count up all your receipts and you might cry a little bit but it's not that bad i just did my taxes that was fun yeah it wasn't really fun like well, the I, i'll be honest time. i got to write off a lot of stuff so that was more fun but oh that, that's fun I that's spent cool. on whiskey that was a little bit unsettling i didn't show my wife <laughs> so, Sam, this is my uh this is my envelope of Receipts from 2020, uh, 2019. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. That's not the best I've you got. Want me to go get my receipts because yeah. I don't want to. Yeah, Me good on you for keeping them. I'm going to keep them for 2020 now. You keep them. <laughs> Who's muted? Just wait. I really want to see Matt's. Yeah, yeah, I don't keep my receipts. I chunk them in the trash or I don't even take them. I think no, Matt I don't either. Matt Bobby Zeller kept them all. What's I supposed to do? Like, he kept pulling receipts out of the fucking drawer and I'm like, okay, well I guess we're gonna count this up and look like assholes. You know hey, Matt. they end up in the wow. body purse, so whatever. Do you want to film a uh how much I spent in on whiskey in twenty nineteen video? Never happen on God's green earth. <laughs> <laughs> you can't let his wife know. She'll fucking kill him back. Matt, Matt, you need, die. To make a, uh, you need to make a my whiskey collection video like Scott did. Yes, yeah, you, you actually do should. Do oh my god, it'd be a twenty minute video. Those are in the works as well. Will eventually happen. Yeah, I think it'll be more like a cabinet a day. It's probably gonna be more like it because that'll be <laughs> here. Yeah, you, you may have to do part one. There's two, not a whole lot of uh, it, honestly. There's not a whole lot of um, what's it called organization at Matt's. <laughs> or a box a day. That's also a good one. So, unfortunately, Sarah and I are gonna sign off. Um, okay, I'm gonna grab Ed from uh, Rock Cut then. Yep, I'll probably do the same thing. Work super early in the morning. So, cheers to everybody. Thank cheers. you for joining us for Bye. our one year celebration. I will. Uh, Cheers. Good having you here. Cheers. Cheers. Congratulations, Congrats. guys. Congrats. Great work. Congrats, guys. Thanks, guys. Congrats on the one year, and uh, you know, thanks Congrats. everybody for hanging out in the chat. A lot of a lot of people tonight. Yeah, yes, I'm not going anywhere. I'm sticking around. So yeah, you guys thank you keep again, going. Jason. I'm going to bring some other people too. You guys can keep going. Who wants to stay can stay. Yeah, maybe yeah. I'll stay a little bit. Grab Ed real quick. I'll stay for a little bit. I'll stay yeah. for a little bit longer. I'll stay for a little. Bit. Oh, you. It's me. Hey. Hello. All right, I'm gonna go take a leak then. I'm gonna, <laughs> right, I'm going to go take a quig. Ed makes right you smile. <laughs> How's everybody? Happy one year anniversary, man. Thanks, Ed. We appreciate it. Sorry. Uh, hopefully, like Bill said, we can get more people in here. Okay, next I was week. just watching the stream. It's all good. Doesn't Ed just bring a smile to your face? Like he just oh, makes me so happy. Like That's why every I watch time I watch face. him, every time I see his face, every time I see Erica's face, like they're just so cute. I know, aren't we? Oh my god, I can't handle. I can't fucking handle it. It's so damn. Yeah, I, I was. I was telling, I was telling Ed. I was telling Ed with all the um, uh, what was it, all the advent calendar videos towards the end of the year. His, <laughs> his were my absolute. Oh favorite. my god. Hands, hands down. Like I couldn't. Have, every time one of his popped up, I was like, "I'm fucking watching it." Like, <laughs> <laughs> because you'd pull it up, and he'd have like a wreath around his arm, like naked, like no fucking shirt on, but a wreath on his arm, and you'd be like, "What's this dude got to say?" Because I want to hear it. I want to hear everything. <laughs> Oh, there was a little part of me. There was a little part of me that wanted to come on tonight, like shirtless, just like, here's your gift, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the uh, whatchamacallit. Yeah. Well, my favorite with that is every every episode, you were wearing a wreath and it was in a different spot each episode. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, man. Because, yeah. And then for the last one, I don't remember how I, I had like five hats. 
like a big old whiskey <laughs> sombrero <laughs> turban thing going on. Yeah. 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 I was pretty yeah, proud I, of those. I, I love wearing I hats on proud of those. Yeah, that, was, that was hands down the the. Oh my god, I love watching those. Those are so good. <laughs> even though, even though I know a lot of the whiskey that you were tasting was kind of shitty whiskey, but it was still, it was still yeah. fun to watch you guess it. <laughs> no, to be fair, by the standards of this show, that yeah. was not that bad. By the standards of my show, <laughs> yeah. that was that was probably probably not that bad. Yeah, so. comparatively. Yeah. Hey, comparatively, uh, exactly. uh, Drew, Drew from uh, Scotch for Dumbbells. I was just, I was just like yelling at him. Yeah. Oh, hey, Drew. Yeah. I'm checking uh, out what I haven't had yet that's on my table here. Have you had the Costco boxed wine? <laughs> I have not. You know what? The only one I haven't had is the Iron Root Promethean. So I guess I'll oh, have it. Promethean's good. It is good. I, I mean, I've had it, but not tonight. Oh my gosh! My kid is some oh, sweet project. She wants me. I was like, "Oh, it's not doodle fries." Like, oh, "What do you know about What do you know about Peru?" Not much, kid. I know they got mountains. They got Incas, and uh, they got llamas. That's what my knowledge of Peru. Llamas, Chile, whatever country. It's all the same. I don't know. I don't know anything about that country. I'm sorry. My sister used to live down there. She brought yeah. me back a bunch of uh, what's that brandy they make? Pisco. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I made up like a bad stuff about chili. Didn't uh, South Park do an episode on the Peruvian like like um flute, flute band? People? Yeah. The Peruvian pipe bands, yeah. Yes, mm. yeah. You know, between between the chat and us, we'll be able to help with uh Peru knowledge. <laughs> so I have a weird Peru story. My awesome. coworker, this is fucked up. I'm not gonna lie, this is fucked up. So she her and her husband, so she's adopted to america her biological family is in colombia so her husband at the time at the time decided to join a app that you can get that will teach you the language of a country you're going to so she had made a trip plan to go to colombia to meet um her family long story short he met somebody in peru and Fucking left her for a Peruvian. Ooh. And no, she didn't make, know it make, until he got over food. there. They have, good food. they have good food in Peru. Yeah. This is like a telenovela. I a love it. A lot of whores in Peru, apparently, because he went over there, <laughs> met his whore. He <laughs> caught him with the whore while he was in Peru, and then she divorced him. But she had the paperwork ready to come back when he came back. Wow, I'm sorry, that's exactly how Erica met me. I'm drunk, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you were Peruvian whore, Ed? That's what happened? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I'm a whore great. wherever I go, man. <laughs> so, appar apparently, there's a thing called Peruvian purple corn, which is used oh. in uh, whiskey. Of course. Oh. Perfect. Well, I was just looking. I was like, does Peru make whiskey? And uh, nope. <laughs> nope, nope, they do not. Black whiskey is the first yeah. brand by... Don Michael and Andean Distillery, which apparently makes uh, whiskey based off that Peruvian purple corn. Uh -huh. yep. Super not interesting. Fun no, fact. very boring. Very boring. Sorry, super boring. No. Who's drinking boxed wine? <laughs> <laughs> At least one person is. <laughs> I am. Uh, I'm drinking boxed whiskey. So I love it. <laughs> Actually, most of most of my whiskey is in a box. At some point. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna join the Iron Root train. Hey, I, which one are you drinking? This is the Harbinger. We only have right. we only have Harbinger and Harbinger XC here. I have the XC sitting in my bar back there. I uh, I just brought out the these because they're all the same shape. I so actually, Robert, I know you're in the in the chat. What the hell were you thinking when you didn't do the uh, Harbinger XC in the same style bottle? What what's wrong with you? It's got to differentiate itself. Yeah, some people would mix it up with this one. Oh, you guys. Yeah, but like, I don't know. Oh, go on. You want the magic set, right? You have, you have to you're like rings of power. You have to collect all of them. Well, that's that's True. part of the problem. Is I want to have all the things, right? And and the XC, I didn't even bring it out because it's not the same shape. Well, all the new bottles are the XC shape. They don't. They're not going to make the other bottle anymore. Actually, our YouTuber barrel bottle is going to be in the XC shape. 
Nice. Oh. Well, then I take all of that back. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like the flat, though. I like right, the profile, so. man. I like, I, like, I like the way the XC you know, fits in my bar. It fits very sm easily. It's nice. It doesn't take up a lot of space. It's beautiful. It does fit between 175s really well, I found out. <laughs> really great in the box. Next to yeah. And yeah. Matt, we were, Matt, we were talking about it on the, um, the stream. We did the late night stream uh, mm -hmm. last week. The how good the esoteric is. Yes, it is. From Iron Root. I bought so when me and Matt were down there hanging out in Texas before the Bastards Ball, we went to his liquor store and they had the esoteric, and I just grabbed one. And this batch that I have is absolutely delicious. Mm -hmm. So it's just another friggin' kick ass release from Iron Root. I never had one that wasn't, so they're mm -hmm. all great. E even their gin and their vodka mm -hmm. and their uh, moonshine's good too. I like those too. Right. It seems like it seems like everybody, every distillery has at least one product that came off a little funny. And Iron Root hasn't had one. Yeah. At all. Just pretty amazing in reality. Oh, is, is Eric Wade here? No, I think people uh Dram Bam was just mentioning him. I miss Eric. I I'm know he moved recently here. because of work, but I haven't heard from much from him at some point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's doing a he's doing a great series on Texas whiskeys. So, yeah, but like, I mean, him and I we talk a lot, and I haven't heard much from him recently. I think he's very busy. Yeah, well, I mean, he just moved. He's probably got a lot going on. Yeah, Robert says they have haven't had an off product. I haven't found it. So if I haven't had it, it doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was blended into a good product. Thenceforth, a good product. <laughs> Yeah, until it's on Rock Gut, it's not an off product. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I like that. You know, actually, Rock, we, we got to do an episode together. I want to I wanna drink something terrible with you. Okay. That's yeah. not hard to do. Let's make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> actually, ever since we talked in uh, at the Bastards Ball there, it's been on my mind of a thing I want to do. Okay. So yeah. I'm going yeah. to send you guys all Jeff then. You're done for the year. Yeah. Jeff is fucking blue. We Still do have here, some of that up. boxed wine. <laughs> we need a we need a ringer for our our March Badness tournament where we no, tear them off. Greek single and and, uh, and I'm gonna message you and I'm gonna send you some of this stuff. All right. Oh my god, right. send him all of the stuff. I'll send. I'll go buy a bottle and send it to Ed. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. I I almost bought a bottle of uh, Johnny Walker Red for tonight, just as the occasion seemed to deserve a little something special. Um, figured I'd go the opposite and do something completely terrible, <laughs> but, uh, actually Ed, what's the, so you've had, you, you test a lot of bad whiskey. What, mm -hmm. what's the one dram that you've tested that really stuck out as the worst thing you've ever put in your mouth? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that is not going to disagree with me, but central standard scotch style, which was both an abomination in flavor <laughs> and <laughs> labeling. I, mean, I don't know why, like, the Scotch Whiskey Association should have been jammed up their asshole as soon as they put that label on the bottle. I love it. <laughs> and I don't know how they got away with it. Maybe because it was such shit, the SWA was kind of like, we're not, like, why kick them while they're down, you know? <laughs> like, they're already fucked up. Why should we beat them up anymore? Um, but, yeah, it was horrible. It was horrible. It was, they. I guess it started with a, like, unique idea was that they're gonna take a peated scotch ale, distill it, and then age it in barrels that had held that same ale. And it just ended up tasting like the youngest, greenest, most fucky raw <laughs> malt whiskey you've ever had, cut with burning socks in a corner. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and have, uh, have I told you guys the story of the Johnny Walter? No, no, Johnny Walter. Okay, so this is fun. So, um, a friend of mine. I, I mean, this is a secondhand story, but it's it's wonderful. So he went to um, somewhere in the Middle East, and they sold what was essentially ketchup packets of Johnny Walter Scotch whiskey, <laughs> and it was, you know whiskey in, in a ketchup packet and you could just open it up and pour it in your drink and whatever. It was a, every bit as bad as you would expect. I would expect um, that it would be, it would be probably in your top five um, <laughs> of, of worst whiskeys that you've ever tried. Like you made the size of ketchup packets? Near, 
it, it wasn't like a normal ketchup packet where it's at least a you know opaque. It was totally clear, so it's exposed to sun. It's exposed to whatever else. <laughs> um, I actually have pictures of the ketchup packets, which I uh, I put up on Instagram forever ago. If I find it again, I'll I'll put it up again. Um, but just oof, <laughs> like to think to yourself, I'm going to spoof a whiskey and make it worse, but it's going to be Johnny Walker. That's like, that's like the top. That's the best I could do is a Johnny Walker. <laughs> worse. Yep. Aim low, man. You know, I'm low. Find that right you're not disappointed. Uh, yeah. That's my life philosophy, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Aim low. Right. That's what my wife did. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy! Well, fear. I mean, you're so tall. Even if she aimed low, she probably still would have got you somewhere. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> you know, funny. She's she's like uh, I think she's five eight or so. Both of our kids are are very tall. So yeah, yeah. Erica, my my significant other, Erica. Um, she is much shorter than me. I'm about six five. She's about five three. Mm, refuses um, to take photos where we're standing next to each other. I believe that. <laughs> she right. Real bed right next door. You can only, only, or pictures where you're up on like several stairs. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> she had taken the stairs. <laughs> yep. So, so it was really funny. Um, I, uh, I got the chance to meet, um, uh, Peyton Manning. Nice. Wow, neat. And you know, he's, you know, he's like literally like six foot seven or some shit yeah. like that. So he's, he's crazy tall. He's got a really large head, though. Anyway, <laughs> um, so I, I took a photo with him, and he's literally like when you see the photo, it looks like we're standing next to each other. Oh my god! And I showed I showed the photo to, to someone. They're like, they're like, dude, I thought Peyton was like much taller because you know I'm not I'm not a super tall guy, and they're just like, um, well, I'm like he was sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> and you're sitting his head is like right here next to mine. It was sitting down. <laughs> That's a huge bitch. <laughs> was fucking incredible. I'm like, I'm like, I thought he was much taller. Like, yeah, he's sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> that is too good. That's awesome. <laughs> oh man, I'm yeah, having man, his, Johnny Walker thing. His head was like the size of my fucking whole upper torso. This is a yeah. Head. <laughs> oh. I've got a humongous head too. I just not not this <laughs> we, one. We noticed. <laughs> oh, well played there. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, I'll find it. Later. Um, yeah. Oh my god. So, so Matt. Yeah, I got the Glen Glasgow 30 year out. What is oh, well, that's a cool looking bottle 44.8%. This is, um, when the distiller was mothballed, this is some of their older bottlings. The new ones are just in like, um, kind of look like the Balcones bottles, but this is their old one that Dylan found for me in Kentucky sitting on a shelf. And the guy's like, You actually want this? No one wants this here. <laughs> I want it. Apparently, Kentucky is full of really good scotch that no one wants that's really cheap. Yeah, the, we do. We got a bunch of shit. All right, guys, I have to go to bed. I love you. Thanks, Sam. We love you, too. Have good a good night. night. Yeah, I've actually, yeah, I've actually been online for a little while, guys. I'm going to jump off, but I do want to say, uh, Matt, uh, congratulations on your one year. Uh, couldn't be... Gonna be happier that uh, you made it through the through the first uh, tur tumultuous <laughs> year of whiskey tubing. <laughs> yep. The hurdle's over. Yeah, I'm glad we got to. I mean, I'm really glad we got to collab a few times. I'm looking forward right. to more with you guys soon. So, thanks for having me on, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks for coming. Appreciate it, Jason. Yeah. Cheers, Cheers guys. Cheers. Good night. Good night. Right. I'm signing off, too, boys. It's been like almost four hours now for me. I got to go to bed. A long time. For four hours of whiskey. <laughs> I'm gonna stay for at least a couple minutes because I see that that you just opened a new bottle. So, yeah. well, yes, I I finished my last one, so I'm. I like right. drinking the this for momentous occasions. I do love me. This is Ooh, the Highland Park Dark. So I love you all. Oh. See you soon. All right, Chris. Bye. I feel okay about you. <laughs> That's right. We did a stream together with about the dark. The, the Highland Park. Yeah, we did. That, that was, was yeah. a while back. Yeah, my actually because I bought that Hi, bottle 
a while ago. And then my store got these in on like clearance. So I got this for like half price. I was like, well, I'm going to buy a few of those real quick. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Half price. Yeah. That's fantastic. So, so here's a question for the chat because we shouldn't ignore the chat. Apparently, there's still 80 people in the chat. We're I'm, all um, I'm in the StreamYards view and so the YouTube thing. So I've had no idea how many people we've had going on. Well, so we reached a high of like 125. I saw that. Yeah. Well, I, I saw that in the chat anyway. So for the chat, what have whiskey tubers not covered that you're interested in? You know, Ooh. this is now we've got three people here. Everybody else is gone. They don't get to have this insider information. <laughs> we all do. So True. what do you guys want to see us cover? You know, we can only cover so many whiskeys, reviews and whatnot. Yeah. Or also, I'm totally going to plug my the 2020 whiskey challenge. It's it's awesome. Awesome. I don't feel I don't feel shameful about it anymore. You had enough to drink. Now you don't feel shameful. It's fine. Not even that. It's just people have hung out long enough that I'm cool with it. True. So. Also, okay, Dram Bam has a good one. How to read bottle dates. That is a very good one. I, I don't know how to do that. I know some experts that do. I can have them on. That's not a problem. They're they're amazing at reading bottle dates. That's not a problem. More American single malts. That's totally doable. Yeah, yeah. that's easy. We can do that. Not oh, a problem. Big shout out. Oh, Spirit. Hey, Spirit. William, I appreciate that. Spirit, Spirit Hound. American single malt. Fantastic. Is that from up there with you guys? They're out of Colorado. Colorado. Okay. We just and we accidentally it. happened upon them when we were there. We were stopped for gas, and there was a distillery next to the gas station. <laughs> That's awesome. <Yeah. laughs> so, uh, I have one bottle of Soltol. I, I could cover the one bottle of Soltol I have, Desert's Door, which is about 1.4 miles from uh, the uh, Whiskey Vault. So could i mean do one review What's the our oldest bottle in our collections um so i'm gonna go oldest as in the one that i've had the longest time and, and i'll be right back i'm gonna go grab it oh that's a good question okay oldest we've i've i still have uh this little motherfucker this little motherfucker nope that's not the right motherfucker there he is this little motherfucker right here I had this for like three <laughs> Three or four years now. Bird dog peach whiskey. Oh, you can see there's uh, quite a few, there's quite a lot left. I hate that one. I don't yeah, think like, I'm, I don't think we're ever gonna finish this. And it's like licking peach fuzz. It's it's nasty. Peach fuzz. It's like an old, it's like an old ass peach that fell on the ground and started That's rotting. Gross. It's not good. Yeah. Ben Sacro, I don't think I could cover your whiskey tab for the night. You know, because I have no freaking patrons, because everybody goes to it's bourbon night. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because they have. I mean, if you guys want me to wear a wig, I will. It's <laughs> I've done it. You did it once. You had that nice blonde one. That was pretty funny. I do. I still have it. it Actually, was, no, I don't. I, I gave that to. I gave that to somebody. All right. So my the whiskey that I have had in my in my bar the longest. So when I first started this channel almost five years ago, I went to the New Hampshire State Liquor Store. And I spent $220 buying a bunch of different whiskeys. And I think I walked away with, I want to say it was over 10 different bottles. So they were all very inexpensive whiskeys. Um, this is the McClellan's Isla Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. Oh, I like that. Oh, yeah. Okay, I've seen that around. Yeah. Not great. Yeah. It's not bad. I, re I recall this not being very good. And there's a that's the reason I haven't bothered to review it yet. At this point, apparently I've drank quite a bit of it. I don't remember the last time I tried this. I would probably buy another bottle if I was actually going to do a, a real review of this because there's no way that this is what it's supposed to taste like at this right. point. Five years aged, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It's been evaporating into your mouth for a while. So Yeah. yeah, totally. yeah. Like It probably was three quarters full the last time I closed it. So... <laughs> 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 oh man you know streaming some retro games i i actually have this idea um i'm not going to go too much into it it's not about video games per se but i have an idea and i'm i'm toying with it at the moment and actually i want to talk to you i your your first name is totally escaping me by the way me yeah you oh i'm ed ed Thank you. I have your shirt upstairs. I know your your channel. I just <laughs> know your name. Um, so Ed, you and I have to talk at some point. 
because I think you might have tried this thing and don't say what it is, but only once. As a little special, whatever, we'll talk. Okay, we can talk. Yeah. We can talk. Yeah. I mean, I've tried a lot of things at least once. <laughs> but I, I have a good idea of a way that, that we can really totally do something fun. So okay. I like okay. fun. I dig it. I dig it. Yeah. Yeah. We can talk. We can talk. Up and join us too here in a few minutes. Who is that? Whiskey Quests. Oh, cool. Oh, Sagamore. Actually, that's I'm doing the Sagamore Rye, the Cask Strength, and the Double. Oh, cool. That will be this Sunday's video. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. He so <clears throat> so David Jackson, I guess, went to Mirage today. And he tried our Sagamore pick, mm. and uh, nice. this is an awesome freaking pick. That's right, because I gave you a sample at the ball. Of course, you were probably many, many whiskeys in at that point. I did try it, and I was many whiskeys in. <laughs> I tried it at La Quinta, actually. Yeah, yeah I, we yeah. all tried lots of things at La Quinta and the vault. Oh, boy. Do, do you, so uh, you saw Whiskey Quest. Uh, right? so he's, he's asking for you to send him the... Okay. Um, <laughs> Matt, you, you might recall this. Maybe not. I, I remember I tried... What I thought was a whiskey, it totally was not. Will apparently had bought brought a sherry with him. Oh, yes, that's yeah. right. And I didn't know it was a sherry. And so I poured it in my Glencairn, and I tried to sip, and I was like, this is fucking terrible. <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst whiskey I've ever had. It was so bad. So I, I think I've only told this story maybe once on my, my own stream. So long time ago, I'm, I'm 36 now. When I was 12, I used to have a uh, paper route for competing newspapers. I had one of, one of each. I used to put them on my uh, both bags on both shoulders. So every day I would go to the mobile mart and I would buy myself an ice cream or like a soda or something just halfway through my paper route. That was just my routine. So one day I decided to buy an ice cream and I grabbed it and I started eating it about you know two minutes into my, my paper route. And it was one of the worst ice creams I've ever had in my life. And so I stuck it back into the bag and I was like, this is terrible. I'll just throw it away when it's gone, whatever. And I get home and I realize it was a frozen burrito. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I can still taste it when I think about it. It was, oh. it was, a, it was a bean burrito. It, no meat. It was just oh, God. freaking terrible. <laughs> you know those... Those burritos that you can buy, like even now, you buy them. They're like a brown kind of. Yeah. Thing. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was that, <laughs> and somehow I didn't realize it was a burrito. <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> See, I feel like I feel like there's something there's something messed up in like like kids. I I get kids are dumb. Like that's how they are. I totally. But I feel like I don't know because I remember when I was a kid, I was eating a Rice Krispie square. Mm -hmm. I was I was biting into it, you know, and I was like seven, you know, so I'm losing teeth. <laughs> and so I'm biting into it and it's way, way too crunchy. <laughs> right. And I just I just I'm just like, all right, whatever. I'm just I'm a dumb little shit. I'm just gonna keep eating this here Rice Krispie square. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely ate my own tooth. Ate your own tooth. That's awesome. <laughs> but I feel like like I don't know. I just feel like when you're a kid, it's like, oh, whatever. I'm just gonna keep. I'm gonna keep eating this. What? I'll just give it a go. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really funny. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. That's that's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> so what? So whiskey quest. I've I've seen a few of his videos. What is his name? Antonio. Antonio. Yes. Okay. Cool. So when he pops in, I can pretend like I know him. There you yeah. go. Exactly. There you go. That's the plan, at least. Yes. Let's see. So, anybody, anything going on in the chat here? I know Robert. I saw a couple good good ideas. I think it was El, uh, El Loco Coco was saying uh, shots, a shot shootout. That seems like something that would be on my channel. Interesting. That funny. seems like the kind of schlocky bullshit we would do. So, I might have to steal that right quick. Yeah, you should. Yeah. Yeah. What is I do get, I do get a, like a lot of people coming on my channel and being like, you're not reviewing these right. You should be doing them, you know, shots, ice, whatever. Oh, blah, yeah. Blah, blah. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I think we can make that happen. A couple of my my better videos are the uh, 
black velvet, which Canadian whiskey oh. and the, um, the red, red label, of course. But a lot of those people are like, Hey, you know what? This isn't a straight whiskey. You should be mixing this or neat whiskey, you know? Mm. And uh, I'm like, well, no, screw that. A whiskey should stand on its own. It's like, right. I'm not gonna, I wouldn't judge like a steak and be like, this is a delicious steak just because it's covered in gorgonzola cheese. You know? Right. Yeah. It's like, no, this is a piece of crap steak that happens to be helped out by the delicious cheese on top and butter. But, yeah. um, you know, a, a whiskey should still stand on its own. I'm willing to, to give a couple of points off, you know, and, and be a little nice if it's okay. The fact that Black Velvet sells its normal whiskey for more expensive than its aged whiskey is oh, yeah. inherently wrong. <laughs> Yeah, and aged whiskey, I believe, was eleven dollars. The it would ten years or eight years, something like that. And years. It's no age statement was thirteen dollars. <laughs> so, I, either I like, uh, your recommendation, so how great it was. That so, was definitely the right choice of size of bottle. The mini. <laughs> <laughs> that shit is terrible. Yeah, black black velvet actually, I think won our no, it came in second in our first March Badness tournament. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what was the worst? Uh, I think Central Standard was one oh, that yeah. year. Mm. I think so. Yeah, I'm right. the, is that Kill Homan behind, behind you? The oh, yeah. One? We love Kill Homan here. Okay. We yeah. love us some Kill Homan. So we were actually over at a tasting recently, um, and they had a bunch of bottles for sale that you can't usually get in Wisconsin. So nice. we just bought up everything we could. Yeah. And I think my old man, I'm, I... He's very into Japanese whiskey right now, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to convert him to a Kilhoman. So I brought the Kilhoman STR over the other night, nice. and I think I uh, think I'm working him working him that way. So Ed, you'll you'll appreciate this. Um, I started the stream off with this this guy. This is a um, you you won't be able to read it. It's it's a Yamazaki from the distillery. Oh, neat. A, a guy that I work with, he, um, you know, he knows what I do or whatever, and and he's uh he's one of our QA guys actually, so he tests all of our all of our stuff. Um, he went back to Japan where he's from, and he brought me back a bottle from the distillery that you can. It's it would be like going to Buffalo Trace and bringing back a distillery only kind of bottle. Sure. And um, I tried that. I would I would compare it along the lines of like a, tw a twelve year Yamazaki, maybe a little bit less. Um. Very good, though. I mean, just Japanese That's whiskey cool. in general is usually pretty good. Yeah. Oh, for sure. They pick for one sure. thing and they nail it. <laughs> yeah, no, that is true. I I do think, and recently, they are branching out from the the, the strictly Scotch-esque style they started out with. Um, now, they just, now they just have to get their liquor laws, like, yeah. tightened up. Yeah. That's fair. A big time. <laughs> yeah. So they're kind of entering the world stage. So they, they right. do need to figure it out. Right. All right. So real quick question for the chat here. Pick a number one through five. The first person to respond, I'm going to go back to my bar and I'm just going to count that number and that'll be what I drink. Very, you know, scientific here. All right. Two. Wow. That, that was faster. I figured there was about a 30 second delay. Which which uh which kill homin do you have there? This is the single cast release, the Barbados rum. Oh, okay. I've got the Madeira right here, so I'll, I'll Ooh, break that up. Too. I already got Antonio. He's here. Let's see. Grab him. Hey Antonio, how's it going? Hey, what's up, guys? Hello, how you doing? How's it going? Congrats again on the on your anniversary. Hey, appreciate it. We appreciate we get a lot of I know we get a lot of good comments from you, so I appreciate getting to have you on the show finally. So yeah, man. I don't I, I have weird hours, you know, like I said, I just got home. Yeah, so and I yeah. log in and I'm like, these guys are still going. I'm like, nice. Because <laughs> if we had my way, we have like four hour streams every Monday. Rule is terrible with me. Man is you're a machine, man. <laughs> I think you're just powered by whiskey. You don't have to sleep. Uh, no, I really don't. I, I sleep. I usually go to bed at like one, two, whatever. <laughs> Most days, I'm like, hey, whatever. I don't care. It's like I go to my job, I do my job right, and I guess that's all they really give a shit about. So it's like whatever. I'm like, that I do is, that is more than most do. It is, <laughs> like, you know, I've been doing it for 12 years, so it's like eh, autopilot. It's fine. 
Even if stuff that's screwed up, I can fix it. Don't worry about it. You other jackasses that work out there, it's not my fault. You're stupid. So since we're, we're deep into this, I want to share with you guys what happened to me this morning. Mm. Um, I'll try to be as vague as I can to, to you know keep some sort of semblance of secrecy, but there's whatever. Long story short, we have a multi-billion dollar company and somebody forgot to renew the domain name of our website. Oh, no. <laughs> so this morning, <laughs> I get to work. Now, thankfully, this is not one like 100% not my fault, um, even though as most of you know I'm a director. <clears throat> so a lot of things end up being my fault that are not my fault. Wow. But still, totally not my fault. Somebody forgot to renew the domain. And because of that, our website was down the entire day. And hopefully I haven't checked it now. I'll probably check it before I go to bed. Um, should be up. But it's about a 24-hour time to propagate out to the internet when you have to reestablish a domain to a DNS. So that that was my day. Wow. <laughs> I was on the line with a lot of VPs, a lot of senior management, blah, 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 to be like, yeah, it's not my fault. <laughs> Like this particular group, so that was that was my day. But when you're in charge, it's always your fault. So that well, so that was part of it. It's <laughs> it's one of the other guys who's in charge's fault, thankfully. So okay. oh, there you go. There's a few verticals. At some point, they can they converge, but I'm still down here a little bit. So the good news is you still have a job. He doesn't. I totally do. <laughs> <laughs> so um, cheers to that. Cheers yeah. to that. Cheers to still being employed. Mm -hmm. It's always a plus. <laughs> what are you drinking there, Antonio? I'm drinking the uh, last bit that I have from the uh, Talisker Select Reserve from Game of Thrones. Okay. Oh, yeah. That one was good. Yeah. That was a good one. Yeah, it's pretty good. I'm having you that. Which one was Talisker? The uh, Greyjoys, right? right? Okay. Greyjoys, yep. yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So for those of you that threw a number up, it ended up picking the Broken Barrel uh, Amontillado. All right. Which, eh, you know, it's okay. It's a little heavily sherried. Oh, I love heavily sherried. Mm. This one's in a bad way. <laughs> oh, well, okay. I can still make use of that. <laughs> of course you can. Terrible. It's really not terrible. But it's not great. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, they've been making a lot of appearances on social media. I saw them last night, actually. Yeah. Really? Whose channel were they on last night? They were um, over on Scott's, uh, My Bourbon Journey. That's oh, right. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The uh, Oak and yep. Smoke. Yeah, which I am curious about that Mizanara cask one in particular. I do um, love Mizanara, so I'm hoping yeah. for the best on that one because I opened the rye today. Meh. And no. it, it, as, as much as I know, me and you like rye. Yeah. It's like not spicy at all. It's like sweet and got the sherry's like overtaken. I'm like, oh, this bad. Oh, yeah, that's too bad. I always, I, that always pisses me off. Like, like just give me, just give me, you can, you can literally dip your rye whiskey in a barrel for five seconds. I'm sure I'll love it. You don't have to do anything. <laughs> I just want it to be spicy. It. That's all I want. Just make it spicy. Just make it spicy. Right? Yeah. Just make part. it spicy. You know what I've Actually, noticed? This, this Talisker is like really spicy. I don't know if you guys say you tried it. Yeah, it's been yeah. a while. It's probably been a year since I've had it. But yeah, as I brought all of them to a whiskey tasting a year ago, and that probably last time I poured any of them. Yeah, that's really spicy. I like it. Except for the Mortlack, because we did review the Mortlack uh, 15, which was oh, actually. Yeah. That yeah, one did just come out. Do yeah. I need to buy Mortlack for this year? No, I do dig. I dig me some Mortlock. Actually, yeah. I was just over on Cast Strength Stream tonight drinking the Lonock 19 oh. Mortlock. This is Lonock puts out some fantastic stuff. If you like, if you're looking for good independent bottler stuff, yeah, they're really good. They're part of um, Duncan Taylor, but the Duncan Taylor got rid of that line. Yeah, oh, did they? Yep, it's discontinued. Oh no, I'm gonna have to buy up as much as I can. So, so that's the cool thing is specs here. Mm -hmm. Put all the shit on like stupid cheap, which was awesome. They had some of those that usually was like four hundred dollars for like a hundred bucks. Wow! Damn, damn. That's why people yeah. were going crazy in Austin. The bastards ball. They were hitting up the specs and buying all the cheap, 
All the yeah. Books. Well, that's where I got this one. I got this, the 19 there, and I was like, wow, this is a great price. So it is. It's crazy. Man. Well, wow, that's disappointing. That's too bad. Oh, they raised the prices back up, Captain. Boo. <laughs> they figured out all of us whiskey drinkers know what that stuff is. We're like, yeah, we'll buy the crap out of it. That's that's a shame. Yeah. Oh, so somebody's got to do it, I guess, right? Yeah. So, Bill, how is that whiskey? It's still blows. I'm a little sad that somebody picked two as the first number. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that good, huh? Here's the problem: is it's it's definitely not. This reminds me of drinking a port wine, and I don't really like port wine. I get it, sherry. That's fine, but it's it's more. It's just such a a heavily fruited kind of thing, and it, it doesn't have really any whiskey essence to it. Mm. I, I guess that's the best way to put it, especially in my current, you know, having drank for three hours, three and a half hours straight. Um, wow, have we really been going that long? No, yep. two and a half hours. That's right. You guys are stupid in central time zone. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, somebody mentioned to blend this. I am going to do that, but I think some peat might help. This. I'm going to, like I that. have it close. I'm going to put some before. I do like port. Oh, I like that one then. I like port in certain situations. Oh, hell, I'll drink straight port. I love freaking port. Oh, no. I, see, I like port. Okay, if we're talking about the wine, sure, I'll drink I'll drink just regular old port, but port and whiskey, it's 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 a tricky balance for me. Because I think I um I really like I go for really dry dryness in my whiskeys, especially like spiciness. Yeah. yeah. Um, and if if you put a lot of that port flavor into your whiskey, it just ends up being that too sweet, trekly freaking red fruitiness and i'm not you totally nailed it like i i'm almost not a fan of having a heavy finish in a whiskey because and but part of i have such a skewed view most of my whiskey experience has been either on a video or on a live stream so a lot of times i'm switching from whiskey to whiskey to whiskey so a finish is less of a benefit to me than it would be for somebody who's just sticking with that one whiskey all night. So I don't know. I have a skewed view. Anyway, I put some Berkeley in the Yama um, Amontillado because yeah. why the hell not? So let's see how good or bad this is. What's the one? It smells like sherry oh. still. You know what I don't like is that freaking Basil Hayden with the port in it. That stuff sucks. Oh my God. Okay. So I got to talk to you about that because that one point. is interesting, but it's Fucking weird. Me and Erica, <laughs> uh, good. Me and Erica went to uh, uh, we went to a tasting the other night at my work. Yeah, and we had like the full Basil Hayden's line plus the new the Baker's Thirteen and a couple other other yeah. Jim Beam stuff. Bullshit one, yeah. Um, but like that thirteen, the port finish tastes like red fruit on the front, and then it tastes like my mom's pantry, like <laughs> old stone. <laughs> <laughs> Old stone and mold and yes. fucking fucking like dank. I don't know what the hell's going on with that one. That, it doesn't. Yeah, exactly. First, like, oh, it's gonna be good. Then you're like, it's got this gross finish. I'm like, this shit's horrible. Why did you make this? I don't. Yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't even give that one a score. Like, yeah, I was just like, they actually poured wine in there, right? What was that? They, they actually poured the wine in there. That's not like finished in a barrel. Yeah, they, they, they yeah. poured yeah. like two point five percent port is in that bottle. Yeah, I don't think I'll be getting that one. So don't. Yeah. It's, it's not worth. It's not worth the like thirty five dollars of the hell I paid for it at all. <laughs> I think well, they were trying to. They were trying to chase Alberta. Uh, Alberta dark rye. They were trying to like recreate that, but oh. but with Basil oh. Hayden, yeah. and it, it just ended up really weird. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you look at that bottle, and you're like, "Whoa, look at that color!" But then, then I, 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 I forgot where I, I think it was, it's Bourbon Night that they reviewed it or something. That's where I found out about that. But mm. uh, so, totally off topic. This is for the people in the chat. I would like a um, show of hands per se. <laughs> if, <laughs> yeah. if the Whiskey Crusaders. Started a Patreon and Matt got off his ass and actually did it. Busy. Who here would support the Whiskey Crusaders? Because I'm I'm saying not me, but 
he, he supported me forever, so I'm kind of like a, <laughs> an obvious. Depends on the on the perks. Doesn't what matter. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> looking looking at Matt is literally wearing one of my shirts right now. I would be a dick if I didn't support. I have him. like ten different shirts at least. <laughs> <It does. laughs> Matt has bought more of my shirts than anybody else because I buy them and I love them. And my wife's like, "Oh, I like that shirt. I like it." I'm like, "God damn!" I'm like, so I'd have went and buy another like four or five more because my wife kept wearing all my damn shirts of yours. <laughs> I thought of another good idea, actually. Uh, maybe yesterday or the day before. So I'm gonna try to put it into a shirt and see if it works. Okay. <laughs> anyway, Matt, you need to freaking start your Patreon and you need to get some glasses made. Yeah, uh, yeah. The and, thing and I have really one, Matt, last night have have earlier, tonight, I was taking out my coins. I was like, "Oh, mash and drum." Obviously, my own. I whiskey she wines. Scotch test dummies. Bourbon sane has two of them. It was everybody that was on your stream tonight. You got to do it. Yeah, I, I have to make those two. I do. I have a lot of things I have to do. I also have to send Hire somebody on Fiverr to design it for you, or or I have a um I have a person that would help you design it if you really wanted to. But you got to have the yeah, I need to get all that done. I also like we have the design for the Glen Cairns. I have the Glen Cairns. I just need to make more. And then get them sold. Yes. <laughs> like that, those are ready to go. I just need to go back to my guy, our prototype, and say, okay, I make production ones. So we'll be all good on that. So, and, you know, it works. We have the coasters. So, we, sold, we sold some of those. That was good. So Emily Chambers is asking a question that I think is actually important to answer, especially because other people might be wondering why start a Patreon versus a YouTube membership? Because YouTube steals um, your shit. <laughs> That's that's kind of it. So the deal, is, like, so I have the I have the YouTube membership. You know, I think it's over ten thousand subscribers. You get access to mm -hmm. it or something like that. I did it for about like three months, and then I just immediately. I actually I had a few members, and I told them, "Hey guys, I'm sorry, I'm I'm stopping this thing. It's a complete ripoff." The problem is YouTube takes I think it's like forty percent or thirty percent of the money that you make from the, the membership. Memberships are four ninety nine, so they take you know, two thirds of your, your money or, or a third of your money, whatever you want to call it. Patreon takes almost nothing. Yeah. They're like, what, 5%, 10% if you do the, the upper plan. Exactly. Like and, and more importantly, like anybody who's out there who happens to be thinking about supporting somebody on Patreon, the important thing to know is like, if you support somebody at a dollar, it makes a difference because if you get a hundred people supporting you at a dollar, it's true. All of a sudden, you know, I mean, after taxes and all that stuff, you're getting like 60 bucks that buys a yeah. bottle of whiskey a month. Yeah. You know, that's, that's important. So if you guys have never really considered doing Patreon, you should go to Patreon and consider signing up because it's, it's not scary. It's not a big deal. And it really, really helps. So that's it. Yes, I I'm gonna get off my soapbox for a minute, but <laughs> you really should consider supporting the people that you like watching because it it is what most of us depend on. YouTube ad revenue gives us virtually nothing. Yeah, like my channel, I, I've got forty thousand subscribers. I make like three hundred dollars in YouTube ad revenue a month. It's nothing yeah, considering that's... like the channel costs me about that much to run. Yeah, exactly. So hey, just like... whiskey alone there. Yeah. 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 Exactly. The whiskey's done. I mean, shit. Some of these bottles cost that much. <laughs> right? So like, the Patreon oh, is where we make... It, and, and it's not even that we're looking to make money. We're looking to maintain yeah. a level that you guys would want to watch. Because every other YouTube channel out there is in a, a larger niche than we are. We're mm -hmm. in a... Like, the largest channel in our niche is 200,000 subscribers. It's the, the vault. Obviously. Yeah, and that's a wee baby channel compared to the gaming. Right. And the, I mean, even yeah. my channel is is a quarter of their size, and I'm I'm not getting as many views or whatever. Like it's it's Bourbon Night. They have finally kind of surpassed me, right? Their 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 um, Patreon is something like 160 or or a couple hundred people, and they're making about 1600 dollars a month. Yeah, that's awesome. And they're they're able to buy a whole bunch of stuff, cool, and they go on all these like you know distillery tours. That's that's great. But that, like sixteen hundred dollars a month. Think about your current salary. Like that's not a lot of money, you know. No, but that covers a lot of whiskey. It yeah. covers a lot of whiskey. But most of us are doing this as a second or potentially even third job, right? Like a thing that we enjoy doing, and we want to be able to do it in a cool way for you guys. Most of us would love to hire an editor so we can do more content. Mm -hmm. you know, 
like whatever. <laughs> Buy gear. Gear is expensive. I just bought a gimbal so I can do cooler uh, distillery tours. That thing's eight hundred bucks. Yeah. You know. Like, oh, that's, that's that's actually. If I'm gonna start wow. a Patreon, which the old man is pushing me to, that's. Like I'm tiny channel, right? We're not going to get a whole a bunch of stuff, but all that money is going towards gear. It's yeah. going towards another better light and another like a, a nice uh, proper uh, 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 camera. I mean, that's really that's really all it is. Like I don't think I don't think anybody's doing this because they think they're going to get rich, right? Yeah. And none of us are. Like I mean, I I do this. To I'm going to be frank and fair. My job, I do fine. You know, like I don't need money from my regular life. My I pay for my house. I pay for my kids, my wife, all that stuff. It's fine. But to do this channel and to buy whiskeys and do my my weekly reviews or my live streams, whatever, like you need a little extra income. And we mostly all of us depend on Patreon. You know, if if any whiskey tuber that you guys support does not do Patreon, they probably will or they're mad. <laughs> it was just slow <laughs> yeah. but, like we all should be doing it and and it sucks that we have to ask you guys to help support us but that's a, a reality that we live in and it helps a lot because we all want to do cooler whiskeys so and i i apologize for totally like getting on my soapbox box here and i hogged the whole time here but so put it put it this way i was at a store a couple of weeks ago I mentioned this earlier in the stream. I wanted to buy the Arbeg 19 and it was $280. And what I had to think about was, is this video going to get any views whatsoever rather than do I want to review a cool whiskey that would be delicious who some people might actually appreciate getting my view on that, mm -hmm. you know, and, and know whether is this worth your personal $280? It's almost right. crowdsourcing a opinion off mm -hmm. of somebody who you find that your tastes align with. And that's why you have so many whiskey tubers is that you find the ones that you gravitate towards because they tend to feel the same way about whiskey that you do. Right. And you're yeah. helping to contribute to their opinion about a thing that you might want to spend a lot of money on. All right. So that's it. Yes, I agree. It's definitely better than commercials, Doug. I'd much rather give Patreon to watch freaking commercials about crap I would never buy. Yeah. Or crap, I don't even know how they're even selling most of the time. I'm like you wouldn't you wouldn't buy you Viagra? That's that's what comes <laughs> up on my feed. <laughs> Man, shit, that's all I eat. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so that's how you got to be so yeah, tall. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, and that's that's the problem. I think YouTube has established like this quasi monopoly at this point and they are they don't they really don't care to distribute funds fairly or evenly in any form mm -hmm. um you know and we're kind of shackled to youtube if we want to find an audience you know you go where the people are watching and if the person the gatekeeper doesn't want to play nice you have to find other avenues to make it work yeah yeah totally yeah, I mean, because granted, obviously, this is just like the beginning of all the things we want to do. Like, we really want to do, is, like I said, some of you know this from offline talks. Once that works out, then this is just the conduit to get people there. Yeah. I mean, well, it's kind of like we all do this out of the, for lack of a better term, goodness of our own heart. Most of us are not making a profit on um, this channel. And yeah. Even though, even though, I mean, I'm, once again, I'm going to be blunt. I'm making a profit, but more often than not, my account is close to zero dollars, right? When yeah. it comes to taxes and all oh, stuff. Exactly. That like I'm I've got fifteen hundred dollars in the whiskey dick account at the moment, and that's mostly gonna go towards taxes for the stuff I've sold this year. Um ultimately I'm I'm breaking even. I figure you're buying nice drink for free. It's nice to be able to buy gear for free, but I'm also putting forth like most of my episodes take two to three hours a piece, you know, mm, easy. Well, you're That's not really drinking for free or getting gear for free because you're it's a lot of work, right? Yeah, that's you a know? good point. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and at some point, at some point, you're you're having to commoditize your personality like you are you are selling. I mean, that, and that's kind of the game, right? You've mm -hmm. got to sell yourself. You've got to sell who you are, but you want to be able to do it in a way that doesn't that doesn't make you feel like you're you're. This is so strenuous that there's no point to it. 
Mm -hmm. right? Like you want to, you want to enjoy what you're doing. And if, and if you can't do that with a, a certain amount of livability, then is there, you know, why make content? I guess is kind of my thought. Mostly because I want people to see my amazing, very handsome face. Yeah. <laughs> Got that shiny head. <laughs> it's so smooth. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you guys since we're getting totally off topic here so do you remember there was a band called alien ant farm yeah yeah right they did uh like some michael J uh any are you okay right uh -huh. so mm -hmm. so the lead singer he had this weird haircut where it was like a shaved head but it, like a buzz cut but right down the center he had do you remember that yeah in, in, in his video, for whatever reason, he just went like like that. Ever since I shaved my head, I've always just done that and thought about that guy. And I'm like, that guy has no idea who I am. And I've I've mimicked that so many times in my life. You ought to get, you gotta get the I avatar arrow. Just the blue arrow. Yeah. <laughs> Down vote? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> like like Aang from Avatar. Oh, like Aang, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Such a good show, man. It really was. I'm 36 really? and I freaking loved that cartoon. And that's a fantastic cartoon. It was so good. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, Bill can be, you can, for Halloween, you can be anything. You can be, what was that? What, one Punch Man? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I should do that. That would actually be really sick. That would be awesome. I've been yeah. wanting to do Mr. Clean for years, but I'd have to shave this off, which is no problem. I can grow this back in a couple of days, but I'd have to bleach my eyebrows, which uh -huh. I'm cool with as well. But you know, and you gotta you gotta pierce your ear. What was that? And so you gotta pierce the ear. You gotta wear that big hoop. Oh yeah, I'm not. Just get the clip on. Just get the little clip on. Clip on exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A few whiskeys and you'll do it. <laughs> uh, it is almost midnight though. I I gotta do two jobs tomorrow, so I am gonna go get some sleep. Yeah, me too, guys. Hey, yeah, man. Yeah, I suppose it's Thanks almost inviting me. Night, Ed. Thanks. Yeah, thank you for having me on, and uh, congratulations. I should get something to cheers you off with. Apparently, Dustin wants to come hang out. Who? Dustin, D.H. Silver. All yeah. right, because I am the Rock Cut Review. We're going to do something nasty. Oh, is that is that the um the Tabasco one? That's the Tabasco one. <sighs> Eric, this is everything Erica despises. My one of my co-hosts and. My loving, loving girlfriend. Uh, she <laughs> despises this so much, and I make her drink it on stream. So, but yeah, thanks for having me on. Happy one year anniversary. Thanks, uh, Ed. Appreciate yeah. it. I'm Jeez. gonna pop up too. So, good job, Matt. Keep Thank it up. You. Pretty Thank soon you. you'll be a five year. All right. Cheers. Cheers, cheers guys. guys. I'll see you guys. See ya. Thank you, everybody, for joining this in the uh, chat for as long as you did. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll grab Dustin. We can hang out for a little bit longer. Give you guys right. a while. See you. All right, night. You can hang out for a little bit. You're going to go. Yeah, for it's just might as well. All right, let me grab uh, let me grab Dustin here real quick. It's, it's usually entertaining with Dustin in here, so we'll grab more people. Or if anybody else wants to come in here, that's cool. Let me go to Discord. Let's see here. Open. Hashtag 2020 whiskey challenge. Yeah. Now, I don't know. Do you ever do the Discord at all or no? No, I haven't. I haven't joined. Oh, uh, yeah. We, we use Bills just because it was instead of having a separate one, it was just easier to um, use our own. So we're just like, screw that. We'll just uh, escape. It's like, we'll get our own thing. Let's see here. Without a mouse, it's not so easy to scroll. Ah, there it is. There, he made it easy. Yeah, there, there you go. Perfect. Make my life easy, Dustin. Exactly. There. There's the link, Dustin. Problem solved. All right, back in here. Okay. Yes, exactly. But, yeah, we are working on the Patreon. I, I have started it, actually. I just haven't had time to finish it. It's just... It's one of those things you look at it, and it's not so much that it's daunting. It's just that you really want to make it good, really good and not just throw some garbage out there and be like, oh, hey, give me money. It's like, well, I actually want to put thought into it, like what you're going to get, and, you know, what, what you're going to accomplish with it, and a lot of cool stuff. Yes. We try, Emily. 
thanks for watching. We really appreciate everybody that's still hanging out with us. All right, here's Dustin. We grab Dustin. Alrighty. Hey, Dustin, how's it going? Cheers, guys. Hey, dude. What are you drinking? So I just switched over to a 21. Very nice. So if any of you guys don't know, we Dustin hangs out in the Discord with Bill all the time. That's where I met Dustin at, and in the random chats of all the ridiculous YouTube we all watch for whiskey. <laughs> and so, yeah, he's been on a few other ones, but yeah, we talk all the time. So, and I know yeah. you know, he also does it with, with Mike's with Mike's whiskey reviews that you do stuff with. Yeah, I think uh, we're almost at. I think we got ten reviews up there now. So okay. awesome. more coming here in the next uh, few days. Nice. I've been literally getting a text from every like hour lately asking me to send them pictures of the whiskey we reviewed last. <laughs> yes. We got uh, 2019 Springbank 21 coming up. Oh, it's a good whiskey. Well, I prefer for me. Okay, so Brad, you want to know if you have Promethean over Icarus. You'd probably like Harbinger. Harbinger's better than Promethean, I think, but they're both bourbons. Just the Promethean's a lower proof. Yeah, but if you like that better, then you, you're going to love Harbinger. That's for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, awesome. So I guess another question. I don't know the answer to this. Like Donner Pass Whiskey and and Dram uh, Bam, thank you. Did they, do they have channels, do you know? Or you guys can tell me in the chat. I don't know. I just know we see them in all our stuff all the time. I don't, I don't know if they just upload they them. They actually have channels. That's just cool pictures they have. So that's, that's a good question to answer the question. I just don't know. You said with Glenn going 21. Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. I was making sure. That's because Doug was uh, asking. So, oh, yes. Harbinger Cash is great. Exactly. We appreciate all 44 of you because, man, it's been a good night. Like I said, we got to 120. It was by far the farthest we were. Like, we made 70 a week or so ago. I guess you made 70. And then, yeah, that was, that's freaking awesome. We did that. So, no comments. Are you getting subs today, uh, Matt? Yeah, we gained a ton of subs. We gained nice. Nice. 18. Eight, 18. Yeah, nice. we gained 18 today. Oh, That's wow. That's a really good day. Where are you guys at? Like 800 now? Yeah, we're at, yeah, we're at 800 now. We're at 818. Nice. Yeah. So we're getting there slowly but surely. So, 1K is a big deal. So you just got to get to 1K. That's, that's really just so you get the super chats. That's, that's the yeah. thing. So. And also, I think you get some like. Don't you get to like make it to where like your channel has its own like uh, name or something in the URL? Yeah, like you get, you also get the community thing. Like you know, people put those polls and stuff. Yeah. You get to do that. You get to like, hey, I'm going live at X time. You can put your thumbnail up and all that stuff. But you can't do it to one K. Like at a hundred, mm -hmm. you get to put you know w.youtube.com and then your channel name. But prior to that, oh, you okay. just the freaking letters and numbers, which yeah. is because we got uh, Pat my whiskey den to over a hundred the other day, which is awesome. So now he can put my whiskey den. Rather than the ridiculous numbers and letters up to it. Hey, awesome. uh, Matt, ADHD whiskey. Do you want to come in? I guess that's the next Thanks. question. Because I know he's got a job. The got lighting it. work you guys have to do is crazy. I, I literally have two lights in front of me, and yet it looks like I'm in like the dark shadows. <laughs> just, yeah, we just have you have to add. You have to add lights all the time. But it, actually, when I live stream, I don't add lights. I just have a shitload of lights I added to this room that yeah. I have. Five eye light, five uh, can lights, plus a ceiling fan with lights, and a sh and then a giant strip light up on top. Yeah. So, I mean, the problem is I got this thing behind me too. I think, which I mean, it's brighter than the two lights. I, I literally have yeah. lights directly in front of me. Yeah, but when we film, um, we grab two umbrella lights and with halogen, seventeen hundred lumen uh, halogen bulbs in them. Yeah, yeah, those things are crazy expensive, stupid hot. Yeah, I just use one softbox right now. I have two of them, but I think it was a little too bright. I didn't like it, so I went to uh, My dad's a professional photographer, so I've been uh, lighting, lighting everywhere and never fully appreciated it, I don't think, until I started seeing what cameras did. Yeah. Yeah, because what we really need is I was talking to Chad um, from his Bourbonite. There's these lights that they – these I forget what they're called. He told me what the hell they're called. I looked them up. They're a couple hundred dollars, which is something we need to buy. And there are these backlights that we need that would look really good. We, we tried some other lights, and they they worked that we've been using. But uh, this would be better. It's what it's for. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Joining Bill's Discord. It's like a live stream chat 24 7 pretty much. There's several yeah. of us that don't sleep. So we're in there a lot, and some of you even more. And most of us are there every day, multiple times a day, 
and talk about just about anything. Uh, if I go to bed early, I get on the next day and I'm like, God bless. And then there are nights that I'm up late. I'm, well, yeah. Adding. <laughs> um, are any of our other mods still in? If they can post the Discord uh, link in the chat, that'd be awesome. If not, I can grab it. Multi Alti is asking, what is Discord? Discord is basically it's a chat program, more or less. And is this it's made for gaming? Yeah, exactly. Except for we use whiskey. Yeah, but it's got voice chats features and stuff. So you can actually we can actually do the same kind of thing without the video with everybody yeah. in the world in there. Which uh, yeah, and there's no limit. Which which we've done plenty of nights until like four or five in the morning because we're all stupid. Yes, <laughs> we all drink plenty and hang out all night long. And my wife's like, "What the fuck did you do last night?" <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I'll never forget the night. I uh, I have a, a single cask, thirteen year Highland Park, like sixty three percent alcohol, and I'm on the Discord, and I don't have wireless headsets, and I don't have like I'm using my desktop instead of my laptop. So yeah. I've got, it's a, and I'm like, well, I don't want to go get another whiskey. I'll just keep drinking this. I drink half a bottle of a sixty three percent, like a two hundred dollar bottle. <laughs> talk from like 10 p.m. till like 5 a.m. Like this was not a quick discussion. I was gonna come on here with uh, I still have a little bit left of uh, uh, Richie Z's Infinity bottle that he gave me, and that's he's got like some high proof stuff in there. But I was like, yeah, I don't know, it's a little too late to be drinking that. Yeah, there's yeah. a link to the Discord, everybody. If you want to, if you don't know what it is, you can go check it out. But yeah, it's like IRC. If you guys know what IRC is, that's old school, man. That's us old school chat rooms with the old. I mean, shit, that predates freaking probably AOL Instant Messenger and everything. Uh, yeah, it predates that, doesn't it? I'm pretty sure. ICQ was the first like instant messenger. Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. ICQ, and then uh, yeah, yeah, then the IRC came right right after that, and then yeah. I used to use ICQ for some gaming stuff, and then yeah. uh, you I still ICQ actually get on IRC occasionally. I hate to admit it. Hey, it's all good. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is the nerd zone, so it's all good. Yeah, I used to know a lot of the the, the, the the like you know slash server switch this all the crap. But it's been it's been a while, and now it's all web based. It used to be you had to use an app. Now you can actually do it web based. Right. Hey, what I like this one going. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, though, for the same price, you can get the Glendronic here in the States without, you know, going overseas for about 175 range. Glendronic right now is a better whiskey. I do love Glendronic. That is a really it's good whiskey. It's a much better whiskey. Everybody put, I, I've seen this Glen going being on, like, Liquor Hound had it on his, like, top 10 or what, top whiskeys of the year or whatever. Yeah. Get the Glendronic. Well, Unless Hound you're getting this for, like, 125 or less. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. ADHD. Yeah. Send me. Uh, yeah. What's your email address? And I'll send you a link. Oh, great. We'll get Matt in here. Yes. The entertainment value will go up. Yes. <laughs> Matt so, is able to be funny without being uh, overly dirty. It's incredible. Yes. We leave that. I can make way. a penis joke, but I mean, Matt can like do it in a way, a whole different way. And I'm like, yeah, yeah better. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we let Sam do it. That we do all those. <laughs> well, Sam just swears. I mean, it Which works. Funny shit. Three. Okay, let's see here. Mm -hmm. The hell is just I just oh this thing must to catch up. Is that a serious email address? <laughs> <laughs> Fire Sean today. today. That's awesome. And yet, I totally believe he made that email address and emailed the bourbon junkies. <laughs> Probably. Uh, yeah. I, I will say this, Jason. I've met Sam in person a few times. She is the same person, but she turns it up to 11 when she's on the live stream. She, she's more like a nine and a half uh, in person. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, she's still the same Sam, but she... She definitely takes it up a little, a notch on the live streams. Or maybe she's just drunker. I... <laughs> Probably the whiskey talking, yeah. Oh, whiskey. yeah. It, it, it's, it, more like... it's hilariously funny. I, you not... know, she's not sober when I've met her before. <laughs> Sam sober? What? 
<laughs> but she was sober when we got there. Oh, of course. I mean, I wish we were forgetting she's sober. It's it's after. It's not so much. <laughs> exactly. Sat there over at uh, the party store, so we went to the bar there. And then I've, I've seen them over at Larry's. Exactly. All right. Sending link. Um, Infamous Larry's. I got to head down there one day. I'll tell you what. If, uh, that it's 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 far enough out of my way where I've only been there the one time, and I mean, so I'm close enough to meet up with Bobby and Sam locally. But Larry's is a drive for me, and more importantly, it's a drive home. Yeah, I yeah. looked it up. It's about five hour drive for me. So yeah, yeah, I'm getting a hotel room for sure. Yeah. All right, Matt. I sent the link off. Yeah, it's about a forty-five minute to an hour drive. It's about forty-five minutes for me to get there to Larry's. <laughs> Whereas, you know, I can meet up with Sam and Bobby halfway between. You know, so I like, uh, wonderfully. That's that's Jay. my commute to work every day. Uh, uh, see, I do like fifteen minutes, and I'm like, God, it's such a long drive. I'm doing forty on a good day. Ugh. Forty minutes. And then there's traffic and it's, oh man, or snowing like today. That's why I got home so late because it was snowing. Oh, lovely. I don't know. The hard thing when you ask what's your favorite current whiskey, I drink a different whiskey almost every day. So, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Whatever you're drinking. Yeah, it's like, what, what was the last whiskey you bought that you had like four drinks out of the bottle before you decided to put it aside? Um, what is that? that you wanted to drink four out of. Not the one you drink four out of because you didn't want to waste good whiskey. Besides the sa- besides our Sagamore barrel pick, I did drink a shitload of that. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think of whiskey you actually can get. Um, it's probably some of the Balcones sing- single barrels. Those I drink a crap load of. But rest, like the Scotch and stuff, you know, I try to limit myself because it's yeah. not freaking expensive. So here is a great whiskey that I recently picked up. Um, I get pigeonholed as the guy drinking all the high end stuff, but one of my daily drinking is generally not that expensive. Oh, I do love the Whistler. That is good stuff. Which one is that? Which was this? Is incredible. It's the Oloroso cast. Oh, the one that's like twenty eight dollars. I think it's great. I think I paid thirty, but and then the coolest part, if you guys can see this, like who on a cheap, inexpensive bottle? Eh, yeah, that's true. And they do use cool corks. Yeah. I forgot. But about like, look that. at the uh, look, look at the on the side yeah, here. Yeah, those are cool. Oh, nice. It's actually got like music going on here, like music stuff. But yeah, I think like multi Spring also Bank says, doesn't do this. Yeah, I have to try that one. Like it case is, in point, your mood. I agree. Here's a three hundred dollars Spring Bank cork. Oh look, it's a cheap plastic. Cheap plastic. <laughs> exactly. The exactly. cheapest they could come up with. Hey, yeah. you buy, you're like, ooh, yeah, and then. Then you look at the cork. Well, like, then you look at the whiskey and you go, okay, yeah, I'll still pay 300 bucks for that. Look at that color. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just depends on the day. In reality, you just you just never know what it's going to be. So I'll tell you what. I've, for me, as far as like uh, whiskeys that I know I'm going to buy again that cost enough where I have to think about it. Yeah. 25. The 2019 yeah. Springbank 21. Those are whiskeys. If I could just always have them available, the spring bank will eventually have to go away because it will. Yeah, that's true. All right, man, grab Incredible that. whiskeys that I'm willing hey. to spend the money on. How's it going? Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, he's not whispering. Cheers. <laughs> I should be, but I don't, I don't have my – if I have a, <laughs> if I plug my microphone in, then, um, then I can't hear you because it's my phone. Oh, it's your phone. Okay, okay. Oh, so if we so yell really loud, that'll be a problem for you. Um, I, this is way more of a problem. I just have a hard time controlling the volume of my voice unless I'm whispering. <laughs> voice. <Yeah. laughs> What's up, everybody? What are you drinking, Matt? <sighs> All sorts of shit. I just I was just um, shooting a video for well, a couple videos, and then had a Buffalo Trace store pick. Oh, nice. Cool. Yeah, yeah awesome. you know, yeah. yeah. Uh, some of those get so scary that I, I just fall in love with them. And then some don't. Missed. Missed. Oh, this guy here. So, so, this is good stuff. 
Is that the had. newest one? Yes. Uh, the only one I've ever had. I would never have bought this, but Dan gave me a bottle of it um, from Bourbon Junkies. And it's I I greatly regret buying the bottle. You regret it? Oh, yeah. Here's, what, hey, Rich, what, what what it says, it's Matt well, the Bourbon Whisperer. So the problem with that is I did I had to spend nine hundred dollars at the store for the right to buy it. Oh yeah, no. Which that's not a big deal because I keep buying the same store and I you know as my points accrue I buy cool whiskeys and I don't get a lot of them every year but I get a few and uh, I just heard so much hype I'm like all right let's do it. And there's better whiskeys I could have got for those points. Yeah, that I, didn't, I didn't spend nine hundred dollars on my car. <clears throat> <laughs> well, regrettably, I, I recently did just uh, drop about six hundred dollars at that store for somebody else. So those are all my points, <laughs> and they paid me back, so it was not actually any money out of my pocket. Gotcha. So that worked out really well. I got this bottle for free, so it's really good. <laughs> so good. That's my favorite. You know, that, that, that's the answer always. What's the yeah. best? The free kind. Yeah. Well, the last time I was at the liquor store picking up some bottles, and uh, there's like three or four registers open, and there's this, they're all going to those because there's this one guy with like a massive cart full of just bottles, and nobody wanted to line up before, behind that guy because, you know, they're going to be there for a while. But I was like, nope, I want to see how much that guy spent. So, <laughs> so I stood behind him. He spent a thousand, like $1,200 on whiskey. I was like, holy shit. I've done that like 12 times this year. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I'm, I'm still in the category. I've never spent over $100 on a bottle. I've spent the most I've ever spent on a bottle was um, Stag Junior Batch 9. I found it. Oh, that's that's good whiskey. It was it was 89 bucks and I hemmed and hot about it for the longest time and where I lived where I lived there was never any allocated bourbon ever anywhere so i finally pulled the trigger but yeah I, spending that much a store at a time i would literally have zero i yeah i'd be my balls would be decapitated for sure they'd be gone. Yeah. that's that's the key to being single is you can buy whatever you want oh yeah i miss those days yeah but you know what I don't hide it from my wife because she'll find out and then for sure something will happen. That always right. seems like an unhealthy thing to do is lying. <laughs> the best is when you just don't have to discuss it. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. It's the safer way. I bought this um, two years ago. I haven't opened it. I paid $50 for it. Is this right? Yeah. <clears throat> so I... Uh, the pleasure of I have not seen anywhere to, to buy that didn't require me to use points in two years. Jeez. They had yeah. it, yeah. I mean, in, they, Mich in Michigan, we can get Eagle Rare like for like thirty bucks. Yeah, I bet it's thirty. It's thirty dollars, and it's uh, in every shelf everywhere. So I live yeah. on the border of Ohio and Kentucky, so I see both states. Mm. Just can't find it, so you know there's. Yeah. People take advantage well, of it, but like it's only twenty bucks more. So I was like, ah, whatever. But Matt's I talking about Stack there. Junior. Dude, yeah, it does not exist here. It no, mm. never. I've seen that there more, more my whole life. Actually, more Stag Senior than Stag Junior. Huh. That's insane. Hey, Matt Lynn, how's it going? He's also a sommelier. He's he's in Iowa. That's pretty cool. But yeah, because Scott was saying earlier, he said in Kansas, the new price for Eagle Rare is $60. That's insane. Is it though? That's what he says they're charging in uh yeah, but Kansas. It's a 10 year old bourbon. Yeah, it's the answer. No. Oh, you mean just from a regular? I mean, going from 30 to 60 sucks. Yeah, yeah. But it's better than Bird Dog 10, which went from 20. Yeah, which also is bullshit. Not, not, not worth 60 at all. I mean, well. It's, name it's a, a lot better bourbon than bourbon craft distilleries out there. They're charging sixty bucks for a bourbon. Oh, that's true. Two years old. I walk in. I walk into a store and there's a, there's like it's filled with with craft bourbons that are sixty bucks aged two years. Yeah. And then uh, then 
I look at Eagle Rare and I'm like, geez, Louise, 10 year yep. <laughs> Buffalo. Tra- like, there's, <laughs> I don't know. That's what I was, uh, when I went to Kentucky, I was, I thought that I was going to get actually be able to buy some stuff. No. Yeah. There's nothing there. Wow. No, because here, here's what's funny empty, empty shelves, except for craft stuff, it yeah. seemed like. So you see, you went to Kentucky. It's a bummer. So I just found out uh, recently, Kentucky is going to lose one third of their allocation of uh, the the, um, the Pappy Van Winkles. What? Kentucky doesn't buy enough Buffalo Trace. What? Now the problem is there's no Buffalo Trace on the shelves in Kentucky. <laughs> How the hell are we being blamed for not buying enough? So they bought all you could get a hold of, and, and now you're getting screwed because they don't release enough. That's nice. Yes. Apparently, uh, for you, Matt, though, Texas is going to get their allocation increased. Yes. Um, so, congrats. You get more Pappy. I'm not opposed to this plan. I mean, I'm, I get, whoa, we lost Matt. We lost Matt. Yeah, you froze. Yeah, we can get Buffalo Trace here, no problem. Anything else other than that, good luck finding something. And if you do, you got to pay. I, 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 it was fifty dollars for this one, and and actually, I just found the uh, Weller Reserve. I paid forty for that one. That's not. So I wouldn't buy it off at that price, but yeah. I, but I'm never gonna find it at retail price. That's the thing. Yeah. But I'm not gonna be paying no hundred dollars. That's for sure. I'm telling you that right now. Yeah, it's so weird how distribution is all over the country. Like Brad saying, Illinois, you can get Eagle Rare for thirty bucks. It's got stag thirteen, batch thirteen, junior on the shelf. I mean, it's just crazy. I like here we can get Weller and Baby Saz. Like you can buy it by the case. Nobody gives a shit. Like, Brad, how many do you? Where he's going because I can't find it. Yeah. And actually, this was the cheapest. I went to. I, I jumped into another store, and they had one bottle left of Eagle Rare. So without a price, and I was like, "How much is uh? How much for that exist. Eagle Rare?" And he's like, "Nice." And the guy says eighty dollars. That's really good shit. I'm like, Whoa. yeah, not for eighty bucks, man. I just for one seven five. What was that? One seven five. That's a cool bottle. I'd probably buy it. For what? Eagle Rare one seven fives. Those like super tall ones. No, no, it was just a regular seven fifty. Eighty oh, bucks. Nah. Now, because I paid fifty bucks for my for my one seven five. I'm 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 actually willing to go fifty on an Eagle Rare ten year. That yeah. to me is still worth the money. But again, I'm a giant Buffalo Trace fan. I I want to hate them, but I love the way their their whiskey tastes. I love the the oak influence that we never get Eagle Rare picks ever in Texas. That's awesome. Doug got it. They get picks of Eagle Rare, or he is for thirty five bucks. That's a hell of a deal. I did get I did get an Eagle Rare pick right before Christmas. Cool. Of course, it was a three seven five because all the stores have gone to three seven fives for those. I'd still take it. Still something fun to buy, try. Oh, that was great. It was 17 bucks, I think. I got a Buffalo Trace oh. and an Eagle Rare. 17 each. That works. And they were both awesome. No That's doubt. Awesome. Yeah. Both were all. I mean, it's, I, God, I, I hate the fact that I love Buffalo Trace as much as I do. Oh, that's the pop in general. If they make really good shit. Yeah. And tomorrow, right. freaking Eagle Rare 17, rev- 17 years coming out for the review. Oh, nice, nice. That is uh, that is one of my regrets. Was I never bought one of those when they were on the shelves? It used to just be a shelf bourbon. Well, that's the problem. Is like back then when all that shit sells, I was like, I'm like, who the fuck would spend sixty dollars on a whiskey? Fucking morons! <laughs> like, oh my well, god, I wish I could do that every day. Well, the thing was back then for sixty bucks, you could get a lot B. Yeah. It's a Weller juice, not the current Buffalo Trace juice. It was better. You could get, um, um, at the time, Willett had just put out a bunch of, like, orphan barrel type things Mm -hmm. that were the Kentucky Vintages. Kentucky Vintage 17 year for 60 bucks. So why am I buying the Buffalo Trace Eagle Rare 17 for 70, 75 back then? When I got those options? Yeah. Yeah, right. I think that's it too. Exactly. He's like, you can get really good whiskey for like twenty bucks, no problem. For sixty bucks, you could get an Elijah Craig eighteen, and for ten bucks, yeah. you could get Ancient Ancient Age, 
10 year, not 10 star, 10 year for less than $10. Nice. Yeah. So that's which one I bought the most of. Yeah, and that's, and that's just it. And that's the problem. And now it's just stupid. So we're stuck hey, with this crazy. Um, so I'm going to jump off pretty soon, but like I said, uh, congratulations. Oh, thanks. And I'm going to open this $50 bottle of Eagle Rare. All right. A toast to, to you guys. Nice. Good job. So, oh. Any uh, any cool videos coming out, Antonio? Before you get off, um, I'm reviewing the whole Game of Thrones that uh, the whiskey dude sent me, cool. and you know I've been sitting on these for a while, so I just I've been recording them back to back. Did you uh, get a hold of the Mortlock? Oh no, that's come on. Where am I gonna find that? If I can't find Eagle Rare, <laughs> <laughs> the Mortlock's available here. It's just. Way more money than I want to spend on a 15 year whiskey that's colored and oh, low. What is it, like hundred dollars, right? A hundred and something. Yeah, I think it's like one thirty, one fifty. Yeah. Some places you get more there even. Yeah, it's one sixty, one seventy. Jeez, oh, at one twenty, I would have bought it. At and I would have probably felt like I paid too much, but I would have been like, eh, not going one seventy. It's the it's good though. I like it a lot. It's the best of all the Game of Thrones for sure. I that really enjoyed bad. the Klein Leash, and it. I think I paid sixty five for it. Yeah, I like that Lagavulin nine a lot too. That was good. Yeah, I I preferred the Klein Leash. Lagavulin was next, and then I didn't have anything else from the series that I liked. I didn't have all of them, but the rest were not good. Yeah, um, I, I picked up the uh, the Dalweeny Winter's Frost, reviewed it, and yeah. then I, like I went back to get more. <laughs> There was no more on the shelf. I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, but the this guy whiskey dude, he he went and bought them all. So I was like, dude, shit here on the shelf since they re-released them, you get the whole series, no problem, just sitting on the shelf because yeah. you know, they were highly allocated when they first came out. Yeah. And now it's like they're like, we don't have the hell to do these. No one's gonna buy these. Shows. Yeah, I started seeing them back on the shelves. Yeah, regular price. I've seen all of them except the Klein Leach, which is the only one I'd buy another bottle of. I. I might buy another log of one if it's still around, but the price on that has actually been creeping up. That's the other problem is the new the set again is costing more now. I'm like, this is stupid. I want to say they want they want about 70. They're getting close to 80 That's bucks right. to get a of nine, which is. Yeah, which is bad because you can buy the 16 year here for 82. So I'm like, yeah, no, I'm good. I'll buy the 16 year. So. 16 year in um, Ohio is uh, you can actually find that on sale for about 85 to 90 dollars. Mm. Kentucky has now always had bad prices on log and they've just now seen the tariffs hit 130. Matt, it's crazy. It was actually funny. So I was, uh, I was at Party Source and this older guy walks over and he. Logable in 16, takes his head, whispers under his breath, like, F. Grabs the 16, starts walking away. And I, like, I literally said, Hey, sir, you can get that for like 40 bucks less in Ohio. Just keeps going. Like, <laughs> eh, I tried. Just like, I'm here. Screw it. <laughs> yeah. I'm like dying. I got, so he just drops, like, he just, like, fuck Trump. I'm like, eh. <laughs> like uh, you know well, here we go complain. cheers Matt cheers, cheers, Matt. Matt. cheers Matt. Matt. see you guys on the next one peace we still got 40 watching Jesus yes because they're awesome I like these these are our people at three hours eight minutes in these are the real drinkers these are the guys who can hold their liquor Exactly. It's like, hell, on Monday night, I think we did 32 <laughs> with the bacon. It's a good night. Nice. I slept yeah. good that night. I've been so, I've been so busy at work lately and it's, it's been, it's been rough. Yeah. I've pretty much concluded there's uh at least usually, yeah, the people that'll watch these whole, which is great. 
I mean, for me, this is this is my favorite part of the all whiskey tube is is the live streams because you get to hang out with the fans and just it's just a, it's just a whiskey hangout. Yeah, so, yeah. And yeah, most people are here, even if they're not knowledgeable, they do learn a <clears> lot <throat> from these, and then eventually they become really knowledgeable, which is really great. Yeah. I mean, I learned a ton of stuff from watching live streams. Oh, absolutely. Or are just reviews in general, just all the freaking whiskey you never knew existed, and now you have to have it, and now your fucking budget's gone out of the out of control. Yeah, that, <clears> it's yeah, it's not good. I had never heard of Spring Bank until YouTube. Yeah, what I used to do before I started watching YouTube videos, I used to go on liquor store websites and like I'd sit there for hours and read about every single whiskey on a, on a website and see if I could find them and watch them. I'd watch, I read the whiskey wash every day. Every new whiskey review they had every day. I was watching that. I was watching, reading that and reading uh, Breaking Bourbon every day. But then I found whiskey too. And I'm like, oh, this is a thing. This is pretty cool. Because I couldn't find, I forget the hell you remember the hell whiskey I was looking for, but I couldn't find a review on the whiskey wash of it. And I found the whiskey vault that way. They had a review of whatever I was looking for. And then I found more and more and then went down, of course, to the opening and then met all the other YouTubers. And it's expanded vastly. Um, <laughs> McAllen Edition 5, I think like 110, something like that here. Unfortunately, the most disappointing, I think, of the five. I was less than thrilled. I was honestly angry when I bought the McAllen Edition 5. I think I, I don't think I can buy any more of them without someone at least try, at least not trying it first because it's just not worth it. So I bought so I've, I've bought two through five. Two I was disappointed in, yeah. but it was okay. Yeah, I thought was downright garbage. Like legitimately, I it's probably one of my like top ten most disliked whiskeys. <laughs> and funny. I was done. And then I heard some good stuff about four, and I picked it up, and four was. Awesome. I actually really liked four. Yeah, four is really good. Uh, yeah, and I heard just enough good talk about five to go ahead, go out and I found a place that had it for twenty bucks less than somebody else. And I'm like, all right, fine, I'll I'll give it a shot. And no, there is nothing good about McAllen Edition Five. There's nothing bad. Yeah, I just it it doesn't live up to the other ones. The other ones I thought were much better. I was just disappointed because four was so good. I was really disappointed. Four was great. I three, love three, it. still, I, I still can't. I hate three. Is weird. The whole um, thing. It's just, no, I, I don't like perfume in general. Like yeah, it's, it doesn't make sense then why you wouldn't like three. It's not a scent I I come to, and but the flavor on three, eh, and then two, I, I'd have to go back to it. But I just remember being very underwhelmed at two for the price. Nah, I like two. Bottle. And it drank like a over at Liquor Hound's house. One's good, yeah. but I think four is just as good, to be real honest with you. So I'll, it's I'll buy another it. four. Yeah, it's it's not it's worth a grand to go get a one at all. It's it's and, and, and to be honest, because <clears throat> then we also were drinking some old um <coughs> Remy Quantro juice. So much better than Edgerton. Is any McAllen after the tariffs come in going to be worth the price? No, not a chance. I, I won't buy any more. I mean, it's outrageous what it's gone to. Like, it's jumped a hundred dollars since that shit got announced here. I'm like, that is ridiculous. I, I was looking because I wanted to get the 2019 McAllen uh, batch strength, and a uh, yeah. party has it for 130, 135. I'm out. And here's the thing if I knew it was going to be as good as 17. I might buy it. Yeah, seventeen is so much better. Thankfully, I got eighteen for free. Eighteen <laughs> was eight. Eighteen wasn't bad, but it, it was such a drop off. Yeah, I thought seventeen was way better. Yeah, thankfully when McCallum was here, they gave me the eighteen for free. Nice. Oh, I appreciate. Yeah, hell, they left me a thousand dollars of the whiskey, so that was nice. I have I'm seen. A, given what they charge, they. I think they've got some spare money to. Uh, oh do. shit! They came that week, and then a, a month later, they did that Highland Park dinner with us. Which that dinner, <laughs> the dinner, the food alone was five grand, and the whiskeys was another ten. That was a fifteen thousand dollar night that I paid nothing for, so it was fantastic. I've got to say, all of the people who constantly want to dismiss the Van Winkle stuff, I know the hype is ridiculous, but just nosing this lot B. Oh, it's good. The nose is great. This is beautiful whiskey, and this is 
This does not smell like a Weller. Now, I did finally get to try the Weller foolproof though at my buddy's house, finally. Was it the uh, regular or was it the... Uh, it, was, it was a pick he did. Okay. It was good. It, but it's but is it worth more than fifty bucks? Nope. Uh, so I had the pick that uh, Mash and Drum did. I would definitely go over fifty dollars for that one. Um, guess, you know, I'm probably tapping out around. I might go ninety. Really? For one bottle. For one bottle, yeah. Because and, 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 and I would tell anybody showing. watching. Yeah. I will yeah. spend ninety dollars, but if you have a budget, ass. Um, the cheapest 70? talent yeah, yeah. is the 10, which you can get for like 45, and it's not that great. You can get the 10 for 45 from Callan. You can here. You can get the, oh, wait, there's no, there's a cheaper one. You get the gold, the gold's 38. Yeah, it's not great, but that is the cheapest McAllen. Yeah, I'm at like 55 and 60 for those. Jeez. And I, the gold's actually really unusual to find. I've only seen it one place. Yeah, I've seen it a couple times. Mm. Uh, what? Right. Well, another problem with McCallum. Yeah, right. Edgerton Group is part of it, but even so much of that, they've changed the grains they use. They don't use the same barley they were using either. That's another issue. And they don't have all the stuff in the bottles either. So there's there's it, multiple differences with it. The, I mean, the color on McCallum. The color alone. Really on a 12 compared to a new 18, the old 12 was darker. And it's better. And it's a lot better. Like, it's not even in the same freaking realm. I can uh, get some old 12s, and I'll be honest, I might just go buy a case. And I don't really have the money right now to go dropping four bucks on McAllen 12, but yeah, I might just do it so I have them. So when they're gone, they're gone. And yeah, they're gone, they're gone. Yeah, I've never. And right now, they've actually become the best value for me. Actually. Yeah, those old twelves. Yeah, they're freaking fantastic. I can get them for fifty-five bucks. What other sherry whiskey can you get for fifty-five bucks right now? That's actually good. Not many. Not what for that for not price. I mean, what can you, you get, get for seventy? So what Glendronic twelve was like sixty, sixty-five. Yeah, but Glendronic twelve has become terrible. Mm. The new bottlings are so light. They're I see. I don't have any new ones. I only have old ones. Uh, yeah, um, I've got a newer one. I, I'm a Glendronic fan. I, I really I swear I love Glendronic. That's it's, not good to hear. It's sixty five or seventy bucks now, and it's jeez, that blows. Oh, there's Eric. We got Eric Wait joining us. Hey, hey Eric. Eric. You boys are up too late. You need to go to bed. Yeah, that'll be my wife will be telling me, I'm sure, at some point, if she hasn't passed out. <laughs> How's it going, Eric? Uh, well, I, it, speaking of passed out, I just woke up. <laughs> <laughs> I took a nap earlier, too, Eric, so it's all good. So I had, I had, uh, I just recorded a uh, premiere video with Richard Amira from the, the Crowded Barrel. Very cool. And I was tired, man. I went to bed, like, probably, like, 7 o'clock or something. So I just I just woke up to take a whiz it was seven o'clock my time, which was three and a half hours ago. So mm -hmm. then I woke up woke up to take a whiz and like oh what do you know they're on what the hell I'll join them. <laughs> I, I'm impressed you were home by seven, but that's just my life right now. Oh well, no, I was home uh, just before four o'clock. So I worked different hours. I left work. I, I got to work at six a.m. and left at seven p.m. Okay, there you go. Well, good times. That's, yeah, that sounds wonderful. <laughs> Get right on that. Hey, I've got a new employee starting on Monday. Uh, Please be good. Oh, man. Anyway, so time for breakfast. Yeah, there you go. I it's got corn. Break. Pardon? I got corn right here. Yeah, there you go. Where you go? Well, I'm just going to pour myself something. Uh, I'm gonna, I need to bring that ch chat up. So what? The, hey, how long you guys have been on so far? Uh, almost three and a half hours. Holy cow! I need to. I've this. only been on for like half an hour. So okay. Yeah, I think, I, did, I, think I did this before. Uh, Matt was on for a long time, and I I end up uh, jumping in. Yeah, that was Thanksgiving. Oh yeah, that's when you came in like three thirty in the morning or some silly ass <laughs> time. It was hilarious. It was the, and it was probably the same scenario. I wake up to 
the uh, do it quick. <laughs> do it quick. And, hey, what the heck? Look, look, someone's going live. What do you know? I think I'll join them. Exactly. So, all right, there we go. I just got the chat going. Hey, Jason Coates is in the house. Cool. Uh, Molly Alti. I don't think I know that one. I'm Alti Alti. Charles Ashworth is in. That's cool. I'm just checking to see who else you got uh, awake at this uh, late hour. We still got almost 40 in the chat, so. Yeah, that- wow. And Ben Demon Hunter's in the house. And uh, wow. <laughs> Yeah, Doug Chris Oak, and wow, all kinds of people. That's cool. Glenn Ellicky is one I really want to try that multi he's talking about. It's just, I've never, you can't get it here. I've had one Glenn Ellicky that somebody brought from the UK to a whiskey tasting I went to, and it was like a 12 year. And it, How was it? Really good. That, it's not Glenn Ellicky. That's a time. It's a Glenn Ellicky. Okay. Glenn Ellicky. Okay. That's an Italian. He's an Italian. Oh, an Italian. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, what do I want to drink? Oh, I'm in Texas, so or oh, not physically. Oh yeah, the Caledonia Edger Edger That's good stuff. I do like that one. Hmm. So this is what I was sampling earlier. This is a one well, of small Alliance barrels. Of, oh yeah. Which one? Uh, this is a blend of Andalusia. Um, Andalusia. Um, uh, oh, the Malcona is in the, in the um, Iron Root Distillery. Yeah, and and Balcones, uh, right? Balcones and Balcones. Interesting. Oh, I love that whiskey. Interesting little bottle. Interesting little bottle. Because it's a blend of a blend of a bourbon with two single malts. It's you guys and your uh, Texas whiskeys. I uh, I hid that bottle from myself because I will never get another bottle. And I will drink the hell out of it. So I hid it in like a box, and I don't even know what the hell it is. Mm. I can't even find it. So that's perfect. I need to try more Texas whiskey, but yeah, you do. I like yeah. a bad one that you don't like, which is I, well, I've had a lot of disappointments. Although I recently had, um, so I was over at Mash and Drums uh, maybe two weeks ago, and he had some kind of like tequila aged uh, Balcones. Yeah, the Juntos. It was really weird, but I'll tell you what, the finish on that thing was delicious. I, I was whiskey. It's really good. I, I, I'll i be honest. I went in kind of um, not a tequila fan, so I'm like, eh, I don't know. And then I and I tasted it. And at first, I was like, mm, and then all of a sudden, like, the finish hit, and I went, ooh, I like this. Yeah, Bacchonas has like, those weird names. Like, like, hey, we want we want to be like the Scotch. We want something unpronounceable. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, have you tried, so from Balcones, have you tried the uh, um, uh, the answer is probably not. The and the uh, butos? Have you tried those? Yeah. Those, those you really want to try from? Uh, yeah. yeah. So far, Balcones is the only Texas whiskey that I've actually enjoyed. Um, the the, the malt and then that tequila one have uh, both been really good. So. I would recommend checking out, particularly when, once their um, their straight bourbon comes out, Still Austin, because it's the most judiciously uh, made uh, bourbon. Um, so I'm not sure. Have you had Iron Roots? I had Harbinger, which okay. is it's okay. I mean, it's a uh, it's a little pricey for what it is, in my opinion, but it's right. okay. I don't dislike it. Right. Just. I won't buy it again. Unless it gets older, maybe I'll pick one up. I mean, it's... You know, you might like the peated Balcones. That stuff's pretty good. And the French Oak is really good. You know, I actually have been over at Jason's, and uh, for some reason he's never recommended or offered me the French Oak one. That That's because he loves that one so much he's not sharing it. Yeah, uh, I think, no, he goes, okay, Dustin's an asshole. What are some whiskeys yeah. I want to get rid of? Oh, oh here, bitch <laughs> it. Yeah, uh, I think it's one of those that he's only offering if you ask, um, which is fine. Jason is an incredibly generous. If you ever got anybody you ever gets a chance to meet up with Jason, he is. Oh, yeah. He's generous. come here before and hang out at the house. Like so. I, I literally struggle to leave his house sober enough to go drinking at the next place I'm going to. <laughs> yeah, I just tell people, well, if it's gonna get too long, just spend the night. I'd rather you spend the night than have an accident. That's for sure. Or you're, or you can leave your car here and you can Uber home. That's your two. Matt, Matt, I show up at Jason's at like eleven in the morning. 
Jeez. I've been there before I go drinking. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and then Mike and I drink till midnight, sleep at his place. And all that works too. But How it's one of the few times I've been like, hey guys, I'm late. I'm running late. And they're like, hey, what took you so long? Ah, I was drinking over. And like, you were drinking before you got here at noon? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's Saturday, guys. <laughs> yeah. This is true. So tomorrow I'm, I'm uh, recording an a interview with Emma Nehemiah. I am really excited to see her. Yeah, um, I don't know much about her. I only know some some basic things about her, and um, I'm kind of trying to get more of a behind the scenes look, um, yeah. and not just people that everybody knows or aware of, or you know. Yeah. So I, I mean, I didn't ask Daniel or Rex or anything like that. Right. Come on, I want to get someone from behind the scenes. Now, Richard's really awesome. Obviously, you know, you interviewed him today. Um, but, yeah, Emma, I, I love Emma. She's fantastic. I've spent plenty of time with her. She's really, really cool and really smart and really good at blending. So I think that should, should be an excellent interview for sure. I'll be very excited to watch that. When do you plan to put, put that interview out? Uh, next week. Oh, okay, next week. Okay, so cool. So this Friday is um, will be uh, Chris Seals. From uh, Still Austin. Cool. Um, that was, I really, really, you never know how an interview is go, or a discussion is going to go um, because, how, first of all, they're not, if they're not YouTubers, how's their mic? How's their light? How's their camera? Right. You know, all that. You know, they could, yeah, like this, like this douche. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know. You know I was talking about it earlier, Eric. I literally have two lights in front of me, and yet it looks like there's no light in front of me. It makes no sense. <laughs> the light behind you is what's screwing it up. Yeah, no, it totally is. Yeah. I can turn it off. Yeah, it would be. It would be. It'd be in. It, it would change it anyway. If you just turn them all off and pitch black, you'd look even better. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> See, oh wow. See how different that is. Oh my god. Holy shit. Oh wow! There we go. Yeah, Merry <laughs> yeah you, you have a marvelous haircut. I'll give you that. Hey, you know what? I called your barber. Found out where he was. We uh, there you go. Got the there same go, thing. Yeah. I mean, it, we worked hard on that. <laughs> so, oh man. <laughs> Who does Monique Houston work for? I know. I heard the name. I can't. I remember. Like he said, she was on the twelve hour boom. I can't remember which company she works for though. Multi Alti, can you tell us which who she works for? I just don't remember. Monique Hughes? Uh Houston. I don't remember. It was it's 12 hours of drinking. Who the hell knows what happened that day? <laughs> so, <laughs> so Matt, you gotta work tomorrow? Yep. Oh, don't care. <laughs> Told you I hate my job. So I, I tell I, I actually have a phone call I'm supposed to be on it in um, two, three hours. Jeez. I'm not going to join, but I was sent the invite. No, if, if I'm hungover, if I haven't had my sleep, and I'm anyway, just or even like jet lag, the next morning, it's not just a matter of me being at work. It's about trying to get along with everybody because everybody just it gets on your freaking nerves. And and I don't want to that. And then and yet I know in my head, it, Eric, it's not them, it's you. So yeah, so don't, oh. don't react, don't react. And then all day long, all day I get to don't respond, don't react, don't react, don't react. Yeah, they're annoying, they're annoying, they're annoying. But don't. Like so I don't want to be. I don't want to be like that. D doesn't the, bother me whatsoever to tell them to fuck off. So the fact that somebody scheduled a four thirty a.m. call that they then invited me to. That's wrong. No, that's that's just wrong. Yeah, no. The answer's not going to be on that call. Yeah, and well, you know, the thing is, I've done those calls when they gave me, like, a week notice. But when they mm. did yesterday? No. Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to join that. I'd say thank you for calling and sharing. And no, thank you. <laughs> exactly. Thanks for the invite. But go fuck yourself. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, Erica. Yes, Erica is works for Brooke Lotti. Uh, Eric Guthrie. Yeah, oh, Erica, okay. on there because Erica is my contact for Brooke Lotti. That's I got yeah. her to uh, onto Jason's. So, yes, Erica is freaking amazing and super smart. And 
She's a total whiskey nerd, so she's a hell of a lot of fun to hang out with. What's her role? She a, a rep? She's an ambassador for them. She's okay. like the ambassador for the Eastern United States. Okay. Yeah, she's Is she the uh, attractive one that Swami made fun of. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, she's also very attractive. She also recently got married. Okay. Uh, like that matters. It doesn't matter. I was just saying. <laughs> yeah, I've never, I've never had a rep on, and I don't think I ever will. Uh, I prefer to either have a, 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 a distiller, a CEO, uh, or someone behind more behind the scenes than a rep. Nothing against reps. If you're a rep, that's how you make right. it. It depends on the rep for me. I'm really selective who I let on here. I don't just let any rep come on here in general. The exception would I would have Ben Dietrich on. Oh, yeah. He's, uh, yeah, for he's sure. awesome. I, so he, he's super, super, super nice guy, but he will talk if this if this was his collection, he would talk about this and this and this and this and this and this, not just SMWS, because SMWS buys casks from this and this and this and this and this right. and this. Just uh, right. and, well, and, the, and he's so don't tell him I said this, but he's a very handsome man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna help with the point one percent of ladies that watch the channel, but <laughs> Yeah, really. Uh, uh, <laughs> anyway, anyway, so uh, well, who's, who's the uh, who's the older uh, lady that you have on, um, Matt, the rep? Um, oh, Steph Ridgeway. Yeah, yeah, she's, she's a badass. Really awesome. she's talk about any other whiskey. Awesome. Like so, she's got at that level where she can just be like, "Oh, let's talk about Boonahaben." I don't rep Boonahaben, but who cares? Yeah, yeah, she's great. Yeah, she so, put the part back on the map. I mean. She, of course, now she's working with Pulteney and Ball Blair and Anak and Spayburn. But yeah, she's amazing. She's been so, doing this for like 30 years. So I've tasted, I mean, every SMWS I've tasted, I've liked. I've tasted them with the uh, Scotch Test Dummies. Oh, I've been to the SMWS place in Edinburgh. Oh, very my, cool. my only thing is the way I'm, my journey is I'm studying and I'm learning about distilleries. So I want to know and understand distillery offerings. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, I have a higher – I like to go visit them. Where, so SMWS is – so I don't I haven't done that many independents, mm. uh, period. I mean, the only independent – I mean, I, so I, I've done a Highland Park and a, and a Bowmore. I think mm -hmm. that was it. And both of those were Douglas Lang. Yeah. Uh, we've done one Lonic with the Bunahaven 25, and we've done a Discovery Road um, – which is a Dutch single malt from Dominic Rescue, and it's uh, from uh, Zudam Distillery in the Netherlands. It's a 14 year. Whoa, it was it's freaking cool. awesome though. But Ed and I, so because of the way I'm approaching whiskey now, once I if I once I exhaust the distilleries and, and the way I'm doing things, and, and or want to do independence, I would probably then jump on the SMWS uh, you know uh, train. And start buying bottles from them, although they are so a little pricey. But I've liked everything I've had from them. Yeah, <clears throat> I feel like you need to you need to do the independent bottlings to really fairly judge a distillery. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the best thing I've ever had from Bomar wasn't from Bomar; it was from Douglas Lang. The best thing I had from Highland Park wasn't Highland Park; it was Douglas Lang. I understand, yeah. except for except for I. To understand a distillery is not just what's in the bottle, but in terms of the quality of what's being produced, but how are they presenting themselves? Yeah. How, how are they? That also includes marketing, history, marketing, branding, and their philosophy and approach to doing things. Is all, for me, I know a lot of other people don't give a shit about that stuff, but for me, that's part of it. And so mm -hmm. to understand the distilleries, how they putting themselves out there. And then it's almost to have an independent that's better than anything they put out. It's like, psh, 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 yeah, you know, but, but, the head. but is it because their name is you, if their name is on the bottle? No, no. It's a smack upside head. Cause Hey, you jackass. This is what you should be putting out there. Not your shit. <laughs> yeah. That's but, true. But I mean, like for example, I've got a Caden head Highland park, 28 year. It's, by far the best Highland Park I've had. Yep. The thing is, though, why did I buy it? Because it's it Highland Park. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know. So, but that, but okay, but see, that says something 
about Highland Park. The fact is, um, somebody else is putting out something better than what they put out, and it tells them that you guys should be doing what these independents are doing. Mm-hmm. Or maybe they said, you know what? We can't produce enough of this at scale. We got these 50 honey barrels. Yeah. I want people to drink that and think, oh, my God, Highland Park. I should try more of their stuff. Yeah, but who's a screw scale? Just enough so I can buy one. <laughs> well, the thing is, had Highland Park put that out there, I never would have seen it. But okay. because it was Caden Head and was sitting on a shelf. Uh, well, I mean, so it's but it's but it's out, yeah. okay, but it's out there. It's just that someone else is getting the credit for it. Well, but again, it's it's Caden Head, but it says Highland Park right on the label. Right. So there's no difference between Caden Head putting it on their shelf versus Highland Park putting it on their shelf. The thing is, though, I, I probably if Highland Park had sold it, I never would have bought it because it would have cost more. But yeah. it would, okay. But it would, but it would say something about that. For example, okay. For example, there are tiers within. <clears throat> let's say, you know, I'm going to talk about wine. So, <laughs> so, so Mandavi. Let's take Mandavi. Mandavi has Woodbridge, which most of the money comes from, which is the stuff coming out of Lodi, right? It's I don't know, eight dollars a bottle, and then they have their. Um, um, they used to call it Coastal, and it's called Private Select, which might be $15 a bottle. And then they had the one that come out of the Napa Valley, Oakville, and so forth. Those are probably $50, $60 a bottle. And then they had the reserves, which are $120 and up, depending on the vintage bottles. So you have this huge tier of wines. Yeah. And you have and each one of those could be Cabernet Sauvignon, but huge tier, different tiers of wines. Mm-hmm. So you do, And you know what? How much of the reserve, if particularly if it's a good vintage and it gets a good, good write up, you might never see it. It might go only to club members or something like that. That's a so point. I would put something out. And if you have people who are club members or whatever, um, make it full available to them. And so that actually makes gives you a sales advantage. Is hey, you know what? If you join our club, you get first crack at this top tier stuff. Man. And that it's a completely de- so, but so all that, all this has to do with branding and marketing and how you put your stuff out there, yeah. um, which is which for me is part of the study is understanding how they think, um, and how they present themselves. And so, but, I mean, I, I just, to, to your point, Eric, I would have never bought a Highland Park 25 year had I not had that Caden head. Um, I bought HP 25 because I had that Caden head, and I said. Mm. I what okay, they put out is their official modeling. Right. But if they had a reputation of, hey, you know what? This is the really good stuff coming from. And they had a reputation. You that this part of your brand portfolio. Do you HP's put out a got a good reputation? That's why I bought the 28 year. Pardon? I bought the 28 year Cadenhead because HP had a great reputation. But because Cadenhead can put it out at a lower price point, I bought that. And then that led me to buying more expensive, younger, honestly, inferior whiskey. From Highland Park, so Do really, you shouldn't, be, you shouldn't be telling anybody about Cadenhead because you're going to drive the prices up. That's right. <laughs> you know, unfortunately, I, the opposite though. I need people. I need people wanting to buy Cadenhead so they'll start stocking it again. Because everybody around <laughs> me sold out of it at, because they put it on sale. Yeah, because I go and buy whatever Cadenheads do come in. I usually buy one of each, just whatever that they've got. And same thing with Signatory. What do you got? One of each. I. Uh, and love independent cast strength bottlings like this. You know, this is a 21 year Highland mm-hmm. Park from 1986 from Scott's. And it's freaking amazing. It's 54.1%. Nice. I mean, I yeah, love I've, indie bottles. I have, uh, unfortunately, here the Caden heads have, are so expensive that it's hard to just justify, you know, jumping in. That's too bad. That's what the distilleries have so, never heard of. How much did you pay for that Caden heads? Or was it a while ago? Do you remember? Uh, it was about 375. For 28 year. It's not bad. Not bad. It's a great price. So I just on a completely different note, I'm trying to I just got my hands on an art bag Galileo for 200 bucks. Such a good deal. Yeah. And plus I, and all that kind of a thing. But I, I really liked Galileo. I, it's been years, but I love that bottle. The whiskey exchange was sounded for over four over four hundred, so I was really happy about that one. So that one was showing up. So someone so, so multi alti said, I've been watching your old cherry reviews. Uh, just tried Manzanilla over the weekend. So much better, chilled. Yada yada yada. Great view. Did all you. Anyway, I funny. I just bought. Uh, this is like twenty bucks. Um, uh, Lostal, um, Lostal, uh, Amont, uh, Amont, uh, Amontillado, 
Sherry. Okay. And I just got this 10 year old Tawny um, port from uh, Taylor Flagate. This was probably like 25 bucks. These are these are these are killer wines for you know under under thirty bucks. But when I'm in addition to drinking them, I'm planning on doing finish. I'm trying. I'm take some whiskeys that man aren't that great and see if mm -hmm. I can, you know, they're too young and see if I can kind of you know dicker with them a little bit. Yeah, and put uh -huh. a put a. I don't want to drown them in sherry or drown them in port, um, but see if I can kind of save them, particularly. This, the one from uh, Sonoma, California. The, the biggest disappointments in whiskeys I've had have been from California. Hmm. Um, they're just not aged long enough. But I'm going to see if I can kind of play around with them and, and just add little bits with this and then see if I like it, see if it t kind of masks that youthfulness of, of it, you know? Good idea. So, yeah. I've got the same view of Ohio whiskey because being in Ohio, I've bought a few and been like, okay, I'm done buying bourbon from Ohio. And then there may not be some good stuff, but there's just too many. Yeah, I've only tried a couple of Northside and that, that uh, Pumpernickel one from West Middlebury or whatever the heck well, it is. Well, the worst is Hirsch, which is Hirsch. trying to, you know, steal the legacy of A.H. Hirsch. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've got a couple of those. And they're like 40, 50 bucks, and they're terrible. Oh, yeah, we, we found some stuff from Hirsch that was older, but sitting in the store for a long time. It was a small batch. It was freaking awesome. Really? Yeah. No, I have seen some older age statements showing up. Now, those might be good, but yeah, I bought... an eight-year as well that was also really good. Yeah. But I bought, like, a probably a three- or four-year-old one, and it was mm. 45 bucks. And this was this was four or five years ago, like, before prices had gone stupid. Yeah. I bought it, and I was like, okay, 40 bucks should be a pretty good bourbon. No, I wish I'd bought Beam White Label. It would have oh. been... Not far better. Yeah. That's, that's that you know they're putting out a two year old or you know or one year old, one half year old or whatever, and it's 40, 50 bucks. And you go, gee, I can get something at the grocery store that's you know the mass production, you know, yeah. uh, distribution stuff that's true. good if not if not better. Uh, and the thing is, if enough distilleries do that within an area, if I say Ohio whiskey, you go, meh, without even mentioning a particular brand. Sure. Just area has consistently and different distilleries put out stuff that's wanky like california the, the exception to the rule is going to be san diego mm. which i've reviewed um it's also like the beer capital of california yeah, that sounds really good though stuff from san diego the whiskey, well, the, i was gonna say bill the whiskey dick has reviewed it and yep. the, uh, the vault has reviewed it and i've you know, been down there and been impressed they're about 20 miles inland, so they're away from the ocean, and they have the more intense heat and stuff out there. It's almost – if it wasn't irrigated, it'd be a freaking desert, you know? Yeah. But other than that, from, generally from California, but except – again, an, an exception is the, the baller. Uh, oh, St. George. Um, yeah, stuff. St. George. But other than that, meh. Yeah. So it's really important for whether it's Ohio or whatever else. Yeah. To put out baller. The, oh, boy, was that a uh, – not you a flavor. For me, you didn't like the baller. Is well, it the thing is, I, I don't think it was young, unaged whiskey. It's just the, the cask were, were not for me. Red, isn't Redwood Empire from out of California? Is that right? Redwood Empire. Yeah. Uh, that's a distillery. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't that. think it is. I think they they market themselves like they are from California. I don't think they they're actually. not really. Mm. I have to look at the bottle. I have to go find it. Yeah, I, 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 I've heard good stuff though about the whiskey. Good. I am from well, from over there. There's one up in Petaluma that I've heard people talk about, and I can't remember the name of it at the moment that people have talked about. That's supposed to be good, but uh, I'll believe it when I try it. Yeah, those ones. That, that's the problem with the craft whiskey in general is that it's it's thirty percent more expensive for the same age and proof. Well, uh, yeah, it's so, and that, that can be fine because hey, that's right. I get it. I understand why they cost more, but, and if they're doing something cool, I'm willing to pay for it. Right. But boy, is it hard to just gamble. Yeah, yeah. But you know, he's right. Old Petrero, that's good stuff. Oh, yeah, that's it. that's it. That's it. That's it. That's the one. That's the one in Petaluma. Old Petrero. Yeah, that that's they awesome. make it. I really like that 18th century style rye. That malted rye they make is really good. So I'll, I'll, have, to, I'll have to try that one. I'll have to try that one. Maybe I can save my the reputation of my state 
in the in their whiskey. <laughs> yeah, that one's really really good. Um, it's probably the best one I've tried actually from out there. To be real honest, I think um, Rise are the way that these craft distilleries should start because yeah. Rise. At, for me personally, I like to at least get four years, but yeah. some people like it at two even. But you can get a young rye that's really good. Right. So, that's a good okay. place to start. Yeah. So the um, still Austin. Uh, so I have their first batch, and I think it's twenty four percent rye. So it's fairly high high rye, um, and I think that kind of because that spice without being too much black licorice it fills in the mid palate and it covers any sort of youthfulness to it. But I think the way they did the reduction in the aging process, I think uh, it was also a big help to, to avoid sort of the over um, intrusion of Oak. And I just think they had a really good hands-on job of, of dealing with the bourbon. Um, but anyway, um, so would they, I think what everybody needs to do it's just hire Nancy Fraley. Clearly. <laughs> and <don't laughs> every distillery. And then it all did. No matter where it came from. Yeah. She has produced some incredible stuff. And, you know, I have never seen somebody who is so involved. Grab something. So, Eric, I don't know if you know. Do you know the website Distillers? It's called Distillers? It's either Distillers or Distiller. Let me. Uh... Okay. Anyway, so what about it? So yeah, anyway, it's distiller.com. So okay. it's a it's a place for like people just to write reviews or score okay. whiskeys. Okay. So I wrote a review on um Scar Blend. Mm. You know, uh, three pages max. Right. The Scar Blend. That thing takes a little time to write out. Right, right. But then, so like, that was once of me posting it there, she had she re she replied to me like with comments. And I'm like, oh, I, I did not realize Armagnac and Cognac were that different. I apologies for my, uh, you know, ignorance uh, there. Oh, what Armagnacs have you had? Like, oh, I've had this and this. Uh, like, she is, and I mean, every YouTube video that mentions any of her stuff that she's passionate about, she's like right. the person to comment. It's like, it's incredible. Yeah, I was. Sh so she commented. Well, once I so. For those who are familiar with the background, so apparently she went to uh, Harvard Law School. She went to Yale Divinity. She's a drummer and a bass player. And so uh, she was familiar with, uh, she, she, she was a fan of Neil Parrott of uh, Rush. So when I did my live dedication to Neil Parrott, she commented a lengthy comment on the video, thanking me for, for doing the video. And I was like shocked. You know, I was like, oh, whoa. You know, I, I, I mean, most distillers are not watching whiskey tubers. Yeah, so I just I just pulled her up here on a uh, on a uh, LinkedIn. Right. So he, this is actually interesting. So she went to University of Tennessee for undergrad. Okay. And got a BA in religious studies. Right. Cum laude. Then went to Harvard for a master's in, and I want to screw this up, but Indo Tibetan Buddhism slash religions of the world. Right. But I think that's part of uh, yeah. I think that's part of uh, Yale Divinity. Okay, and then she went to the University of San Francisco Law School, and got her Juris Doctorate in International Human Rights and Maritime and Admiralty, and she's yeah, basically the top person in like yeah yeah now. Yeah. Every once in a while, every once in a while, there's someone who's born like that and had just a very uh broad uh background education and expertise and uh, it's funny how you you find people like i met in the wine world i met people that are doc they're doctors and they have um um they've you know made spe they've invented special heart valves or all these specialties in the medicine world but then yeah. they said you know what i'm gonna go make wine you know it's just like you know they've done their they've done their medicines and their science and all kinds of stuff and then they they but they had a passion for wine, and so they decided to go. Eek. So there's a there's a master of wine named um, uh, Patrick Farrell, and he's a medical doctor, MD, and that's what he did. He went over to study wine and became a master of wine. So you have masters of wine and master sommeliers, and that's like uber geeky, you know, super nerd uh, when it comes to oh, wine. Yeah, 
Well, I, I, good, good, good friend of mine uh, got his um, undergrad in chemistry and mathematics. He uh, started a master's in chemistry, dropped out to join a PhD program in some kind of, you know, human health type thing, got his PhD. And uh, he's now working for some startup, like, you know, studying and researching like keto diets and stuff. Right. I mean, it's like, you know, and, and the thing is, in five years, he'll be doing something completely outside of that field. I guarantee right, it. Right, right. You know, the, the, I've, kind of, I've kind of bounced around a little bit from uh, one field and of study to a, a, another and end up in, in whiskey. Um, yeah. So what you got going on there, Matt? So I went finally in a break for eight months for this to come. Finally arrived today is the Cavalon Fino Barrique 55.6 single cask, cast strength. Okay. Finally. So I love wait. that bottle. I've never had this ever, so I'm very excited. Really? So. Ooh, I, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, I've, I've got a bottle here. It's good. But yeah, so funny you're saying that. So one of my favorite wineries that I'm a member of locally, yeah, um, the lady and her husband that started it, she is a nurse practitioner. And so they're like, yeah, let's make wine. Hell, now they're making brandy and they're starting to make bourbon. There so they bought land that's like about four hours southwest of here. Uh, actually, near High, uh, and near Garrison Brothers is. And they're gonna they're building another winery and a distillery out there. But yeah, they make they make awesome wine. So is it Vino Barique, V I N H O, or Fino V I N H O? Okay, okay, okay. Oh no, you're right. Yeah. So Vinho is Portuguese. Okay. Yeah. So what the heck is Vino Barique? I don't even know what that is. What is it? It's a wine cask. But it's a wine cask. Okay. But that's Portuguese. So, hmm. so the same grape in Spain, Ver, uh, Verdejo, with its J O. Over in, it's grown in Portuguese in Portugal and it's Vinho. Ah, uh, okay. Um, or, or, I can tell you or, this, Matt. Verdejo with a with a with a H O. So, just, so if you recognize just the, the way they spell things, then you recognize what it that it's what it's ah, it, 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 Portuguese. That is a it's delicious. That color is crazy. I mean, you can't yeah, really yeah. see through that. Yeah, <laughs> same. And you know the, the, what's funny is that's not even like their top tier cherry finishing. So that's like one of their second tier bottles. Hey, Donna Pass whiskey is in the house. I don't know if he was on earlier or not. I just noticed that he was in. He lives not too far from it, probably within about an hour or so oh, from cool. that now. He needs to come by. So I'm having a I'm having a party at my house first weekend of April. I'll put out an official notice later. Awesome. So I definitely want to. We met up at um, um, Phil and Deepa's place. Uh, oh, okay, Captain Three D. I love those two guys. I love those people. And yeah. now they, they changed their name and they changed their banner. Now it's really oh, mystery whiskey. Now they that's, cool. that's it. Yeah, because yeah. they're, they're doing a lot of blind stuff and they put it in a paper bag. If you look at their banner, it's really, really well done. The banner is really, really well, well done. But yeah, super, super nice people. So I'm hoping they. I haven't. Contact them directly, but because I haven't sent me anything official yet, um, but I'm hoping they come up as, as well. Because he was on, I guess Phil was on your show at one point in the last couple of months, right? Something like that. Yeah, he just popped. Yeah, he popped in when I had an open. Like, I know I saw him one time there. Right. I, yeah, yeah I, I've, I've done some trades with Phil. I mean, so one of the, like, so I sent I sent a couple samples to them, and so so I sent them to buy us and the, the Angels from the box, and they did a whole video and they put it on their YouTube channel. I sent him another whiskey, and I said, hey, you know, I'm not really sure what you're going to think about this, but just, you know, enjoy. And uh, they sent me a 25-minute video that was private that they just sent to me. Oh. I'm, like, I'm like, what is oh, that? That's cool. Oh, that's cool. That's nice. I know. I was like, guys, you could have just put that out there. I mean. Wow, wow. Yeah, sure. That's cool. Wow. Yeah. It's great people. That is delicious. So that's my my 2020 whiskey challenge for the day. Mm. Go with that one. That checks off Taiwan. Yeah, I haven't had any with Cavalon. Really? Yeah, I just haven't been around to it. Mm. Oh, so what's what I'm drinking right now? I think I've got six of these different ones now. Yeah, six. So, Dustin, what is that? This it's is a 19. 19 year old Springbank single cask. Oh, fresh sherry. Yeah. Oh yes. 
which means wet barrels like not not even first fill but wet oh. um mm. this is my second bottle of it really really nice it's special it's the first bottle over 200 dollars i ever bought a second bottle of must be real special then <sighs> It, exactly. You're right. Most of the time, once I buy one, yeah, I usually don't buy a second one. They, no. They're just generally not good enough to buy another one. So yeah, this was uh, like, this was one of those I literally, like, within, once I got to about the halfway mark, I went to the store and I bought another one. I'm like, I, I have to have a second of this. This is incredible. Yeah. And it's great because they only made 120 bottles of it. So that, that's even better. I had two of them. So the donor pass, I'll just um you say I'll put out an official notice probably in March, in about a month ahead of time. Um and I'll probably <laughs> limit, limit it about 15 times. Now what are you laughing about? Jason Coates, he just said uh the 19 year fresh sherry is fine if you can't find the 20 year. Oh. <laughs> I, I don't just so much to rave bottles. Sell them to me. That's do, do they have a 20? Yeah, he does. I just tasted the 21. The two, oh, by the way, I had the 2019 21-year-old uh, recently. Oh, how was it? Oh, it's so good. It's really, really, really nice. So yeah. I had, I've met up with some people who live here locally, a bunch of medical doctors. And so we went out to dinner and then had everybody over. And basically, I had an open bar to taste anything they want. And some of them brought up bottles over. And one of them brought the 21-year-old. Uh, it's really, really nice. Very nice. Yeah, so... Um, Mike and I uh, on Mike's whiskey reviews are going to review the twenty one. You're here in the next. It should come out on like Saturday, I think. So, okay. um, spoiler yeah. alert: it's one of the best whiskeys I've ever had. It, really? If, if that had been cast strength or even like fifty percent, I think the oldest I've ever seen here is the eighteen, which is what I only. Had, that's the oldest I've ever had is the eighteen. But I've never even seen anything older than that here. To for sale. I bought that one off of a spirits for like four twenty, I think. Mm. And I'll be honest, I I shouldn't buy another bottle, but I I might. I <laughs> I love that thing. Four twenty with shipping, not without. But. I'm gonna need more shelf space, um, which I got room for. I got room for, I guess. But maybe that's right. So I had the, I had the 2018 21 year old, which we've got a review up there on Mike's channel as well about that one, and. Um, it's a it's a really quality whiskey, but it's it's not worth anywhere close to the U.S. prices on the twenty one year. It's rum and bourbon finishing. Yeah. <sighs> it's like a ninety out of a hundred, and at four hundred bucks, that's not four hundred dollar whiskey at, at ninety. No, it should be better than that. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's, but the twenty one that port finish with the rum. Oh. My Goodness. So one more year really made it magical then. Well, no, it's not the year. It's just that they they use port casks instead of uh, bourbon casks. It's uh, like, oh, oh, so they changed the port. cask too. Okay. I mean, the, and 55% of the port casks are they finish in port? So um no no they, they it was 45% of it was all 21 years in port casks, and 55% was um 21 years, I think, in rum. Wow. Oh, okay. Wow. And they blended it. Um, whereas the uh, 18 was um, the same ratio, I think, but it was bourbon and first fill bourbon, which I don't like first fill bourbon in my scotch, to be honest. Right. Um, and then it was rum casks. Well, wow. Because wow. usually it's like, the, usually they do some time in the bourbon and then pop it in for a year or two over in the, you know, the port, because port tends to want to take over. Yeah. But if they're just going to leave 45% into it and do something different, that sounds interesting. No, I don't. It wasn't first fill port. It was not a first oh, fill port. Still. It was a refill port. Oh. So it, it uh, I mean, it, it, there is a significant color difference in those two casts. I mean, like you hold the bottles up and you're like, right. they're nothing alike. But it doesn't overpower. I, that was a, that's 21. 2019. That is a great bottle. Well, my next big purchases are probably, probably going to be um, Japanese whiskeys. Um, but to get the ones I want from the distilleries I want, I'm probably going to um, have to sell a kidney or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, Mike Mike and I just did a review of the Nika 17-year. 
Okay. Um, that's a. I gave it an eighty-nine. Right. That would have been a low score. Right. I'm a, I'm a tough grader though. So but what I'm going to want is not 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 nine Nikas and nine. You know, I, uh, yeah, I want representatives from the different distilleries so I can study yeah. all the distilleries and memorize in my head the entire map, all the names, all the history, and everything else like that. Um, and, and that's I mean, the part that sucks. You have to know which Japanese whiskeys are real Japanese whiskey. And which right. Are. Right. Uh, yeah. I do the research on it. Definitely. Definitely. Um, so I actually have a list of uh, nine representations of those distilleries. Um, and I, I'm getting from a Japanese uh, distributor, actually. But I haven't I, I haven't put the money down yet, only because I have a feeling a lot of these might be a, more on the younger side. And I might not be getting what I want for my money. What distilleries are they getting you? Which whiskeys? So my list is on my com computer desktop upstairs. Oh, okay. So off the yeah. top of my head, off the top of my head, I know I'd have to run upstairs and see, see the list upstairs. But I was looking at these. I'm like, I don't know what the how young they're going to be. If I'm spending a bunch of money on yeah, the representatives, but they're all super youthful. Yeah, uh, be good. because that's going to make an impression on me on on, on Japanese whiskey. And I always like to see what's the best that they can do if you can. Yeah. Within, I'm not spending ten grand on a freaking bottle. And that's yeah. And I think at this point, I think every single age stated whiskey over like even useful numbers are all officially discontinued at this point. Yeah, there's. Right. there's I think all that right. might still exist is the Yamasaki Twelve. Right. No, I don't think so. Well. Uh, there's still well, a lot of bottles floating around, but I thought yeah, they I mean, floating around, but not being released. I mean, they're just on the market and haven't been bought and consumed yet. But like, I, I feel like that I have, that's the only one that I, I'm not positive about, Matt. But I know yeah, all the Nika the other day, like two weeks ago, discontinued everything. Yeah, all the Beekies are discontinued. Um, I just don't. I know. I just don't know about Yamasaki if they ever actually officially discontinued those. So they dropped the 18 for sure. I think. So yo Jimbo eight five one six one zero. Yeah, anyway, he says the Yamazaki twelve exists. I've seen those around uh, around here. Um, yeah, those you can get usually. That's the easiest one to probably get as far as nation is probably probably Yamazaki twelve. Uh, the Hakushu twelve still pretty available. Right See, here, it's gone. The Hakushu is like five times what I I paid like eighty bucks for it. Yeah, that's what I paid for mine. And that's like four hundred bucks and up. It just continued. Whoa! Yeah, yeah. I've, still, I've still seen some Hakushus in the not too distant future for the 100, 120 range. Yeah, uh, I love that whiskey. I, I've got a bottle. Oh God, I love that whiskey. It makes the Yamazaki Twelve look like garbage. Yeah, yeah. Much I, I do have a. Uh, twelve year Nika. That's a Japanese only. That we got. That we had shipped over from Japan. That's really good. That that they still make, but only in Japan. You can't get it here. So I just got the um, the peated and the sherry cask. Um, which I can't think of the names from Nika, but they're NESs, and they're they're really well made whiskey. But they are so young. You can right. like, spirit is just right. you can smell it. You're like ah. 80 bucks i don't want that yeah yeah and so so a friend of mine <coughs> a friend of mine he's a he's an advanced sommelier he's studying to become a master of wine and a master sommelier uh he and he works he worked at the french laundry which is a very high-end restaurant and he's now working for the uh wine advocate uh, so we went up to, so we after the bordeaux tasting we went up to dinner uh just to, i hadn't seen him in a couple years um and so we were i was talking about wanting to go to japan and travel over there and I was telling him I was kind of nervous because the language and how you're gonna get around and you know that you know going to Scotland we got a driving this out of the road and outside of the car. Well, okay, fine. At least they speak the language somewhat. Mm -hmm. You know, you can get by with that. But he was telling me no, he just came from back from over there um, uh, on on business, and he says, "Nah, if you get just you just, you just get the right app and the, do the conversion thing." He says, "And a lot more people speak English than you would think they than they would." And yeah. And he says everybody's just super, 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 super polite, and it's actually doable. He said the biggest challenge would be that everything's so spread out, and it's going to take you forever to get from here to there mm -hmm. when you're on the on the islands to get from there to there because you got to use public transportation. Well, if you're on islands, yeah. But I, I get the impression English is 
fairly well spoken there. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, it's not Europe where it's yeah. right. Like you can just, I mean, I almost assume somebody can at least do a little English, but you'll find a lot of English speakers. So now it's coming more on the radar. Is that it's now coming a little bit more on the radar in terms of uh, possibly going over there? And then if I if I do go over there, maybe that's a place to buy and bring back. I think as long as you go after the after the Olympics, because they're sa- that's the other problem. They're saving everything for the Olympics for Tokyo this year. Oh well, unfortunately, the they're probably a great place to buy bourbon that you can't buy in America. That's probably true. Really. Yeah, there's a lot of Japanese exclusive only bourbons over there. Oh, you can't oh. get here. So I remember, you know, as a little kid uh, growing up, my dad had a favorite bourbon. It was Maker's Mark Gold label, which you probably have not seen. I've never heard of it. Because yeah, me neither. Japan bought exclusive rights to every oh, bottle wow. of Jap of Maker's Gold. Oh wow, okay. Here's yeah, I'm not, I'm not going over to my bourbon. <laughs> nah, well, or, or Wild Turkey 13 year is exclusively sold there. And by the way, it's delicious. No, oh, I'm sure, I'm sure my favorite turkey. Better than decades, better than, okay, maybe not better than the Oloroso sherry finished one, but hmm. great bourbon. Ooh. It's not better than the 1980s, though. The 1980s Wild Turkey, way better. Well, I mean, that's. Now you're talking about like Dusty's, like made with different machines. Oh yeah, for sure, different story. Um, but yeah, so anyway, just just a thought. Uh, that there's there's some bourbon that you might might think about bringing back with you. Uh, and if I'm going there, it's, it's to it's to visit to Japanese distilleries, find Japanese whiskeys, and and uh, Japanese women maybe, uh, yeah. <laughs> and bring one back. <laughs> uh, Eric. Maybe bring two. <laughs> <laughs> one, I mean, yeah. one out and one for later. Right. One or, day. you know, in case one doesn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because <coughs> a lot for my first trip to Scotland, a lot of the exclusive bottles, I was buying two of everything. Mm. So, yeah. I, got, well, I mean, <laughs> so, I mean, um, Mike and I have been drinking a lot of Lagavulins that were bought in the UK. Right. I, I'll be honest. I was not a big Lagavulin fan. Like, they were my distant, distant, distant bottom Isla distillery. I mean, they had the 16, which was overly sweet. 12, which was really good, but eh. the 8, which I never liked. Um, the I, I, edition was- I think, hey, Matt, I think this guy's a heretic. Yeah. What, what do you say? <laughs> Even sweeter. Everybody I know, everybody I know, raves about the Lagavulin Eight, and everybody loves the the Twelves. I love the Twelve. It's, it's, I, I like the Twelve a lot. The Eight, I don't like at all. I like the Eight. It's good. I like all. Eight doesn't do it for me. I've never met, never met a Lagavulin I don't like. I love Lagavulin. Matt over at Ear Whiskey. If you guys ever checked out Ear Whiskey, that's like his. I think that's like his favorite. Is the Lagavulin Eight? Yeah. The the Eight the Eight to me came off too spirity. Um, but anyway. So I've gotten to experience 16 that are cast strength with different cast gaugings, 18s, 19s, 21s, 24s, just a plethora of like what log rolling can do when they actually put some age into their whiskey and also different casts. And I'm, I'm sitting there going, oh, my God, wow. Yeah. So I'm asking, so when you drink your whiskey, do you put your pinky out? Yes, I, I was gonna say, man, because it improves the aerodynamics, and maybe, maybe the youthfulness of your perception of the whiskey might be you just got, don't have the aerodynamics right. So when you tilt it back, you know, get mm-hmm. the right step there. That very possible. It's like that. You, you know, notice on the end of an airplane, they have that little fin on the end of a wing. Yeah, improve, it, it improve the gas, the gas mileage, and the, and the aerodynamics. Same thing except for your pinky. Just there you go. Pop it on back. There you go. It's a good idea. You look fancy, fancy. Yeah, no, the thing is, I love our Big Ten. Oh. I love Kilholman. It's almost all young stuff. Right. Just the eight year blog of one. I would like to try an Ard Big Ten from, say, 10, 15 years ago 
and try one now and see if their blend in terms of ages has changed much and and, and see what yeah. they're like. Now, oh, 15 years ago, were they still, were they open? Uh, I thought they reopened in the eighties, or late eighties. I mean, I don't know. I, don't, I don't Yeah, know. they were open, and then they closed. Yeah, Twenty somethings or the ninety-eight. Ninety-eight. Okay. Yeah. They so closed like three or four years. Year they got bought and sold a few times. It was really an area for a while. Two thousand eight would have been the most recent tenure they could have done if they opened ninety-eight. Yeah, they put stuff out and you know whatever. twelve years ago, not fifteen. Okay, left yeah, stuff. Is that when they went back into production, or did they actually have older casts just sitting around? They had have older casts sitting around because they closed down completely for like three or four right. years. I mean, but they you, wouldn't have had like a ten-year-old bottling that was like an Ard Big Ten official bottling, right? I don't know. I'd have to do some research. I don't know. Um, the Ard Big Ten, I think, when it came back, because the first thing didn't have an age statement when it came back out. And when the 10 came back out, what was that, 2010, I think? When that came out, that one whiskey of the year, when it came back out. That sounds think, about right. Something like that. Well, hey, they're going to put out their third age-dated, like, standard release this year, right? The, like, five-year or something? Really? I did not know that. It's a five or, I think it's a five-year they're putting out this year. I don't know if it's going to be a regular or if it's just That'd a one. interesting. That, but that thing's super peaty. I do like Young Pete, like Oxymore. I'm really stuff. excited. The Art Bank 20 something this year will be a 25 year. Very nice. Have you heard about the Wee Beastie? I've heard of it, but I never That's, tried it. It's way back in the day. No, Art Bank Wee Beastie, five year old. Oh, it's supposed yeah, to be. Yeah, yeah, That's what you said. So, Wait, is, that, what, is that a limited release or is that, that going to be a standard? I don't know. It's 47.4% ABV. But my radar is on the hunt for that one. I, that, that one I definitely want to jump oh, yeah. on. What the new committee release has got with the sheep on it? Uh, oh, the next committee release? Yeah. Is that, oh, it's called Black Sheep, right? Yeah, yeah that one. Yeah. yeah, I haven't seen the label, but I've heard about it. Yeah. No. Cool. I'm assuming this is a no, but they're not going to do a 46% supernova, right? I, I hope not. Uh, I doubt it. I mean, we never know if they're going to come out with it. Supernovas are those, you know, they're searching around, they find something that they think fits the profile, so they bottle it. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. You never know if they're going to come out with another one. Who knows? Suppose yeah, the, just last, the, fact that the previous one was supposed to be the last one. Of course, that could yeah. be marketing hype. Um, well, of course. Well, well, well it's it. just the fact that this year's like committee release didn't have a non committee release version. Oh, so when oh be yeah, the drum. Yeah. I didn't notice that. I would because drum was the, drum was the year before last. They did two committee same releases. Was this year's year. release. They had the drum and the supernova. Oh, same year. Okay. Yeah, one was like in March, oh. and then the other one was what like. October. So I'm just a spoiled little kid, you yeah. know, expecting more from Ardbeg. Got it. Yeah. yeah I, didn't know, I didn't know the supernova was labeled uh, committee release. It does say it on there, but uh, yeah, it does. Uh, it says yeah, it. Yeah, it does it. So that's why I was kind of thinking: is, Are they going to do a non-committee release? Because I want more Supernova in my life, and I right I'm on the yeah. shelves anymore. Yeah, I thought that was a typical pattern that they had. They released the committee release in March, and then the non-committee release like in June, I think. Yeah, Something yeah, like that, yeah. Usually, that was so. That was a special bottling when they did the Supernova, which was which was unexpected. So, which was nice, right? Yeah, I would. I really hope they put out a quality committee release. This year, because the last couple have not lived up to the hype. The drum, it, the drum, I liked it more when you got past the show. I liked it. See, when I did my review, I knew, I knew, I knew that would be controversial, and you're gonna have people all over the map have different views of it. Um, the Scotch Four Dummies weren't the big on it. The Scotch Test Dummies were big on it. I liked it, but I liked it more as it went on. And I think Jason mashed the drum. He kind of had to grow into it. I don't, I don't think he liked it necessarily right away. It, but I could, I knew that this is going to be on the fence with a lot of people. I like the forty six percent better than the committee release. Oh, and I didn't think either were worth the price. My, the issue is the price. It wasn't the quality of the whiskey. It was good whiskey, but it wasn't worth a hundred dollar plus. Right, 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 right. Um, but if you're a cult member. Then I you bought do, both. You tend to buy them. I tend to buy them. I bought them both. 
Uh, grooves. Um, I liked grooves, but I didn't love grooves. Right. Um, and then Kelpie. Kelpie sucked. Mm. The committee. You didn't like the committee release. I didn't have the committee release of Kelpie. I, oh. I never saw one of those. Right. Regular Kelpie sucked. I like it. It's not my favorite, but I like it. That pepper. Oh yeah, from the Russian cat. There's Russian cast. Yeah. It's like it's it's pepper and it's young. It's just yeah. the combination, like, just makes it unpleasant. So, so with the Kelpie and even with the Supernova, I find and Jason had the same comment. There's just with the Supernova, there's this weird thing in the throat. I don't smoke. But it makes me feel like I've been smoking, and I got this, you know, this cigarette or cigar crap in the back of my throat. So I blessed, put in a 50-50 Corey and 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 Supernova. I need to try that. And that's freaking awesome. It's freaking awesome. I really, really like that's I mean that's the way to drink. And I do the same thing with Kelpie though. I take the Kelpie, use it to add a little bit of spice into huh. uh, another art bag, uh, and blend and blend it that way. And I kind of do the same thing with the Jefferson's Ocean, the cast strength one I have, it's just like super salty. Mm-hmm. So I'll take it just I mean it may, a little just a spoonful in, into another bourbon, and it just adds another layer of character to it. And so I use it as you know, spicing my other bourbons. I do the same thing with a couple of the uh, art bags as well. I find Pete fixes a lot of bourbons that I don't like. A yeah. little problem solved. I don't want to spend a hundred dollars on something I use to season my other whiskey. Uh, but the crappy whiskey is a forty dollar, and you're really good. The expensive whiskey is one hundred twenty dollars. You're spending good money to go after bad money. Yes. Yeah. So that's yeah. So that's, why, that's why if you buy an inexpensive uh, sherry. Or an expensive port, and this is an experiment. I'm just going to do an experiment with these. I don't know if it's going to work. Yeah. Uh, do the job, but just an experiment to say, hey, can I save some um, lower aged, under aged uh, California whiskeys by just putting a little, little drop, not drowning it, just put a drop of sherry or a drop of port, yeah. and I'll do it with all of them, and I'll do some samples of it, and I'll see if I like it. And then if I like it, I'll probably make, a, I'll fill up a whole bunch of bottles and then give them away to people see if they like it. Yeah. No, that said though, I. You bring up a good point. I need to buy a bottle of Corey Bracken, which actually yeah. for me is oddly a hard bottle to find. Oh, I hate seeing total wine here on a regular uh, basis, but prices, man, freaking prices are jumping up. So I was just looking at the McAllen. Uh, oh, McAllen, don't they talk McAllen? Yeah, yeah. That's, the that's 2019 a classic cut is forty dollars more. I have the 2017. It's forty dollars more than when I paid for the 2017. Crazy, that, and that's freaking nutso. Oh, it's over. $50. It's almost sixty dollars more here. Jeez, seventeen to nineteen. Yeah, and I like the classic cut because it's like fifty-seven point one ABV somewhere in that neighborhood. I Was love it. it. Is the nineteen that high proof? I don't know. I'd have, I'd have to look at it. But, but the seventeen, the eighteen, the eighteen was like fifty-three, and it went from eighty dollars to a hundred dollars, and they dropped it by four percent. Jeez, bunch of wankers. And then the 19 is now 130, and I haven't seen that. I didn't even look because yeah. I talked 30, and I just said, go fuck yourselves. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then, yeah. Now, McAllen has priced themselves at this point where I'm not buying it. And you know what? I'm sorry, but their commercial is basically just promoting suicide. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not promoting that company. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know what? They have enough devotees. They're, they're not going to miss you. <laughs> no, they won't. But you know, here's the thing though. I can still, I know stores in Ohio right now, I can go buy a 1993 bottling of um, um, McAllen 18. Not, not bottling, um, distillate, but still, um, that's old. That's that's the good stuff. That's yeah. back in like the, the good days of McAllen. Yeah. And they're still sitting on shelves because, again, McAllen doesn't sell that well in America. Uh, I don't know. As well, I live here in the U.S. I don't know, I, but I mean, I don't know. Um, I'm sure they, uh, they their new distillery isn't 100 percent paid for. Um, they it, and with the new tariff going on and price, if they start jacking up prices, and then if their biggest consumer, generally speaking, for single malts, the the higher end up is the United States. Uh, they need to work out a deal really, really quick. Wait, wait, wait. wait. No, no, oh. I'm going to ask. Are you sure it's the higher end stuff that we buy the most of? Yeah. So the fr- the French are buying the more uh, greater in volume. We're buying higher in, in, in value. So 
No, I'm, I'm confused because I thought the 12 year was a U.S. exclusive. No, you can get it in Canada. I thought that was even not a thing. Uh, well, you're fresh, the sherry one, well, not the double oak. I don't know. Off the top of my head, I don't know. I don't know. I was for some, and I could be completely wrong. I thought the 12 sherry, and I'm looking at the chat right now here, um, but I thought that was a U.S. exclusive for some reason. I don't know. It could be. I don't know. Because I that, thought that was. So the last, so when I last time I bought a, the, the 12, I think I paid $46 for it. And I'm now, yeah, I paid $46 for it. And now it's like $67 the last time I looked at it. Yep. Not worth it. I want your prices, Eric. Yeah. So I'm not, no, I mean, but that was three years ago. They've jumped up by 20 bucks. Since. Yeah, that's the problem. Exactly. Yeah, they're, they're, they're about 80 bucks here now. Because I was thinking, because that was my first love. That's what got me into whiskey. And so I was thinking, you know, on the anniversary of my, you know, getting into whiskey in April, I thought, well, for celebration, I'll, maybe I'll bit one, you know, just to return to my first love and, and see how it is. And I look at the price, I'm like, holy cow. Little Fitzgerald. The, uh, the, so I just I picked this up, the 15 year that just came out. Oh, nice. The 15 year. I have never tried the 15. That's awesome. I had it over at uh, Bash and Drums, and uh, I was more than a little impressed. And um, so, so, so Mike, uh, Mike's Whiskey Reviews, um, we had a big whiskey tasting, and I brought the four gate over, the, um, the sherry rum finished one. I think, uh, not, I'm sure both of you guys have had it, right? Which one? The four gate back to one. Yes, there's the sherry one. rum. I do love that one. That one's fantastic. I like bourbon. I have bourbon. I'm not. It's not. I'm so. Jason and I are opposites in terms of what we tend to lean into. I lean into lean into yeah. the bourbon. We're just kind of opposites on that one. I just assumed somebody <laughs> sent you a sample, Eric. And so I, I haven't. I haven't tried that one. Okay. So, I would get back into doing more bourbons if I was going to Kentucky or something. So I tend to, percentage-wise, drink uh, either it's a rare bottle that came out that's going to be hard to get, you know, or I'm a fan, particular fan of, or I'm actually going there to get it. That's kind of well, been my way. The of four gate's so rare you couldn't possibly have gotten one unless somebody sent you something. Right, right. It's only sold yeah, like they only made like seventeen hundred bottles of the four gate. We yeah. and I have a bottle. Is uh, a buddy went up there. We were looking for a group bottle, and that was the group bottle we picked. Well, and the thing was, they're 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 so expensive that um, yeah, they are two hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah, like, and it's eleven year old whiskey, right? But it's incredible whiskey. So anyway, I took it to a tasting, and um, my friend's boss tried and went, "Oh my god, I'll buy three. Wow, um, I'll take a look, see if I can get you something." So the only place I could find it, and the best price I could find it, unfortunately, was retail, and it was at a store that does points. So I bought him six hundred dollars worth of bourbon, three bottles, and I picked this one up for myself because they gave me a, a deal for buying six hundred dollars bourbon. So Jason Coach just mentioned uh, the Kalila eighteen unpeated. Yeah, that's, oh, what, that's, good super, that's what I'm super curious about. Because I've never had oh, a repeated Kalila. It's freaking awesome. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm so about where I'm at. I would, I would get you a bottle if you wanted, Eric. They were 120 bucks, and they were such okay. cheap, great. Oh, and they were for the, awesome. for 18. I think I paid $95. Oh, so my, my God. One. And then this one we got as a donation at the Bastard Ball. Okay. Freaking love it. In fact, I should be thinking about it. I'm going to go look for that Stitzel again. I if I can find one. I, I will pay any price. On I have one. a Stitzel waiting for me in uh, in a place I'm trading a guy for it, so it works out perfect for me. It, 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 honestly, that's I actually traded the one for it. The, the thing that is, this is the fun. best vanilla forward scotch I've ever had. Is a stencil. It's, it's such an oddball because 90% of their stuff's going into blends. So, the, of that 10% that is going into single malts, uh, how much what percentage of that is all peated? So, to get you know, uh, uh, a Kalila bottling that's unpeated is just the rarest of the rare in terms of percentage of production. It just right. makes me curious. I don't know, Eric. I, I've got a 15, an 18, and I've got an NAS, unpeated Kalila. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. But of their production, what percentage? You think that is 1%? Yeah. 
it's can't be much because so much of it goes into blends at that, which is yeah. all the stuff. It's probably yeah, probably it's, right. So the, and, and that's what I'm talking about. So to be able to see what is so for me, it's all about what is the capabilities of this distillery, what they can produce, and what do they put out there, uh, you know, under their own label, what they have out there. What's rep- I've so seen more unpeated than peated official bottlings of Kalila. This is actually it says is the oldest uh, unpeated they've ever put out is the eighteen year. Interesting. And oh, right. This is a seventeen bottling, and it's cast around fifty nine point eight. Yeah, yeah, I, I, that's a great whiskey. The fifth, the fifteen sucks. So Jason, okay, I'm not, I'm not talking about rare, but what percentage of production? Not rare, like like you can't get it. But I mean, in terms of what percentage of the so Jason Code says it's not rare. They do regular Diageo special release, special release bottling, but also special. Yeah. Mm. Um, so I'll be honest. I mean, I've only the thing is I've only seen the twelve. I've seen three different beers. I mean, they're the, they're the largest producer on Isla. The, they're the largest producer on Isla in, terms of, in, in, in the quantity of production. So even their one percent could be even larger than some other distilleries. Sure. Keep it from well, being they prepared, so much that they more, 12 year, though. Because 12 years so mass produced. Right. Right. Yeah, but I mean, again, I've only seen, I've never seen a peated bottling that wasn't the 12. Okay. Oh, I've got some indie, got some indie bottlers of, of Coila that are not 12s that are really. No, no, I've seen those. But official bottlings? I know no, they don't make anything else. Year. I don't know of anything else they make. They make a distiller's edition, I think, but I've never seen it. They do, you know, they do, but it's not available in the States. It's available over in the UK. Okay. So in the States, honestly, I've seen more bottles of unpeated clear than peated. Official bottlings. Anyway, I got. I need to go back to bed. I can feel myself. I woke up to take a piss. You know, I, I, <laughs> I wake up. I, I end up sitting on. I'm like, oh, what do you know? That I all come down, have a wee gram, and then hang out with you guys. But I need to go back to bed. That is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a bigger asshole than I normally am in the morning. <laughs> right. Night, Eric. By the way, I love the shelving behind you. It looks great. Oh yeah, portable shelves. <laughs> it looks great though. I mean, you got all the bottles on display now. It, it's not like a kind of a. It's not scattered. It looks, it looks good. Yeah. Anyway, thanks a lot. All right, hey uh, gentlemen, and I use that term very loosely. Uh, <laughs> As you should. <laughs> See ya. Have a good the rest of the week. All right. You too. Cheers, Eric. See ya. Cheers. Yeah, I got a little bit left in me, and then I'm going to bed. I'm freaking tired. Yeah, I think I'm done with this. This, uh, this one Karen's done, which won't last too long. Yeah. Otherwise, what you know, batch of the rare cask is that over there, Matt? This is batch one. Okay. The one next to that one. Yeah, the one. I was like, I've seen the two and three. I'm like, no, I'm good. Uh, based yeah. on what I've seen else come out from them, I'm like, no, I'm not interested. I've heard the, the the further batches weren't as good either. I didn't, I'll be honest. So I gave um I whiskey she wines about two ounces of that, and then uh, I decided to kill the bottle, and it was about eh, about four ounces left. Either the whiskey had gone to shit, or it just never was very good, and I just had low yeah, standards. Well, I made a so I got it. Drank probably like a fourth of it. Then I brought it out for a few people at a a party. Yeah, that's what I got into it. Was not pleased. Like, oh, this is really good. I'm like, yeah, it's also fucking expensive, and you know what the hell you're doing. Get the fuck. I would have put that shit away. So my yeah. buddy like, grabbed it and put it away. It's like, oh, can't don't do that shit. Um, that the dog still drinking like it's quality whiskey. Yeah, they're just like, oh, these were just jackasses. It's like, oh, this is really good. I'm like, yeah, but you don't really drink whiskey, so yeah, it's not for you. This is before I had a channel, before I had like my whiskey events. It was just, yeah, yeah. We were just having a party. And um, this was like 26, 17, 2017, 2016, something like that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it's like, yeah, no, no. But anyway, so thankfully, I was able to get another bottle. Um, a few months later, I found another one. They had it okay. 250. So I got another bottle of it that's unopened. So we're good. So I don't have to worry about that bottle. Like, uh, that- I, just, I, I felt like it went bad. But I couldn't tell if it went bad or I just changed my palate. I, I don't know. Just- I think that's also a factor in general with whiskey. Like you like something and then don't have it for like a year or two, and you're like, "This is not what I remember." And a lot of times, it's not that it's changed; it's just you've changed. Yeah, I just I remember like when I finished the bottle off, it was just. Yeah, it's good. 
You know, it, was, it, was, it wasn't even good. It was, it was okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I, but I do think there's a massive change, especially like between the 12 from the uh, maroon box to the black box. It's not even the same. It's, it's not the same at all. Nor I'd rather near. have the maroon box than the rare cask. Yeah, I was like, I'll take the maroon box. I've got a couple of those. The black ones I got for free, I'd never buy those. So I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm not buying these. These aren't that great. So when we do our review, I'll do it on the maroon box, not the black box, just because the black box isn't as good. Buying a black box just to have it? No, I got it for free. A while back, and it sucked. Yeah. So I think I just com- I might compare it though in the episode, just you know, just to say, hey, it's not as good as it used to be. Yeah. I think okay. we pretty much know that. And the fact that McCallum keeps putting out this shit fine oak stuff, just oh, they should stop that shit. That shit's not good. No. Um. No, I've only had a couple of them, but I mean, the twenty-one year fine oak is a good whiskey. It just sure. Just what, like what it is. The seventeen-year fine oak is significantly better than the eighteen-year fine oak. They're the same whiskey. They're I both eighteen-year-olds old. I just know that the, I don't know. I compared them side by side. The seventeen was way better. <coughs> um, I, will, I will say this: I, I've had the seventeen recently. I should have bought. A, I should have bought five of those because they were sixty bucks here in Ohio. Sixty. Sixty-eight. Oh my gosh! Because here they're like two hundred and thirty. Yeah, they 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 cleared them out. They want clearance. Wow. Nobody was buying them in the state. It's just like go fuck yourselves. Oh shit. yeah, most, oh these things just sit. The seventeen just sits and sits and sits and sits. Well, and it's an eighteen-year-old Macallan. It yeah. was always an eighteen-year-old Macallan. They just didn't want to call it eighteen because they were doing marketing bullshit. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Um, it's actually really good. It really is. It's just. No, I like the seventeen a lot. It's really good. Fuck no. It's my favorite of the Fine Oak series for sure. Uh, I like the 21 better. I've never had the 21. That one I can't comment on. Yeah, that, that one's actually... I bought, oh, I bought a McCown. I bought a, uh, a Gordon McPhail 21-year McCown. That's what I bought. That was really good. The Fine Oak reminds me of um, when going 18, if it aged more. Yeah. Because when going 18, it's like it's heavy sherry, but there's still a little bourbon, I think, in there. And you read it and you think it's like going to be this all this bourbon and it's like all sherry. Yeah, it's all sherry. Mellow, nice sipping sherry versus a more sherry bomb. Right. It's a it's a really good whiskey if it was three hundred bucks. Yeah. <laughs> you said it's six hundred and you're like, what the hell's wrong with you freaking people? It's crazy. The price of whiskey has gone up so much. It's not even funny. It has, but McAllen has gone up like four times more. Oh, yeah, for whatever reason, they've gone out of control, as far as I can say. I just I don't know who's buying this stuff. That's, that's the part that just baffles me. Like, Who is buying McAllen? Someone is. I mean, I'm just, it's, it, it depresses me that the quality is going down, the price is going up. It's, it's a shame. I, mean, they, yeah. I want to make a YouTube channel just to make fun of what brands like McAllen. <laughs> McAllen, commit suicide. That's our motto. Check out our commercial. Oh, By the way, our, we officially focus on lowest quality whiskey for the highest <laughs> possible. Enjoy. <laughs> You're right. There are more Eric's in the chat than there are Jason's. It's hysterical with a K at that. <laughs> And the best part of the whole thing is, like, people want to compare McAllen to Highland Park. I'm like, no. Totally different. A couple overpriced whiskeys. I get it. But for the most part, they're so reasonable. And yeah, they- yeah, if you think about it, so 18 for, for McAllen is now, like, $320. 18 for Highland Park is 125 That's a big fucking difference. Mm, 30 more here for each. But Whatever, yeah. but... Point taken is, I, I much prefer the Highland Park anyway because I like Pete. So, well, and then I, the Highland Park twenty five. Oh, which, I tried that. Holy fuck, is that good? Which is five hundred ish here. Totally worth it. And it's two thousand eight hundred now for the twenty five McAllen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, no, and the HP is. Non-chill filtered. Right. 
Yeah, that's forty-five point eight versus forty-three. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the nuttiness of the sherry on that twenty-five year hollow part, you could taste that shit a half hour later. I mean, this stuff is amazing. That that's one of the best whiskeys I've ever had. I love that. It's stuff. really good. It I've had a couple of different versions of it too. They're they're all good. I saw I tried it at a bar. I was like, oh my gosh, this is freaking amazing. Just like the Balvany 30, that shit's amazing. I really like that a lot. If you ever want to truly, truly cry, the best whiskey for the price I have had in a while was a Highland Park 15 year from 2004. Oh, wow. It was first Phil Sherry. Oh, it's it, way old then. Okay. Dark as shit. And it, Matt, oh my God. It's, if, if that was on the shelves now for a hundred bucks a bottle, you may not buy another sherry whiskey ever again. You'd just be like, meh, it's not worth it. That's it's, too bad. No, I never had anything like that. That's very cool. Yeah, um, Mike got one like a fireball or something for like a hundred bucks. Very cool. I wonder if Chris has any. I'll have to ask him. I bet he does. Dude, it's 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 insane. I mean, it's yeah. like I guarantee he does. We opened all those old McCallums. I guarantee he's got old Highland Parks. It, it's. I mean, it's so dark, and it's just it's forty three percent. So it's not like it's like a you know old school like oh they. Cast ring. No, it was just it was a regular everyday bottling in that in that era. Exactly. Oh, so good. One McCallan, eighteen or three twenty. Yeah, exactly. Should you buy one McCallan or three twenty one year cast rings? Gee, I wonder which one you should choose. Pretty confident. Pretty easy. Does the vault have an older McCallan or Highland Park? Maybe. I know we tried some rare stuff. Now. I don't know how old they are, though. There was a thing just rare bottlings. <clears throat> they had. Now, they do have some really old Port Ellen and some Rose Bank and stuff like that. They do have that in there. Um, but they're not on display. They're hidden. I had heard from somebody that there was going to be a um, McAllen Exceptional cast that came out this year that was going to be more affordable for us, you know, normal human beings, but I've not seen anything on that. So yes, yeah, that's, that's a subjective term. We'll see. Well, we, I was assuming, you know, under a thousand. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Uh, mind you, I've, I've still never seen a black rare cask. So yeah. Oh, now I do. Now I do agree about this with the with what Ben says. Grab the older Highland Parks before the Viking marketing. Totally agree on that too. They're mm -hmm. definitely better because the reason being is. There's older whiskey in those previous bottlings. And even when uh, Martin was here, who's the global ambassador, he told us straight up, he goes, buy the old boxes. He goes, the new stuff's nowhere near. He goes, I guess I work for them. It's not as, it's it's still great whiskey. It's just, it's just, there's more of the younger whiskey in it than of the <clears> old <throat> stuff because you want the old stuff. Yeah. You know, not that you don't want the new ones, but you really want the old ones. Well, and the same thing, I think, with the 18 years too. Oh yeah, the, yeah. The the eighteen year old bottle. I've got a couple of the old ones stuck away because of the old bottlings because they're freaking delicious. Same with the fifteen and the twelves. I got an extra one of each of those, but still. The only the negative with the eighteen is that it's still kind of thin. Eh, so. it's still good though. The best deal is that is that uh, that full volume though. That's the best deal there is for ninety bucks. For you know the age he is, I like it a lot. I, I like the sherry. I'd, I'd, I'd pay the 40 oh, bucks. No, the dark sherry, though, the origins, oh, I freaking love that one. <clears throat> yeah. You don't like that one? Say, I like that one a lot. Uh, I'd like that one if it was 50 bucks, not 80. Oh, see, here it wasn't so bad. I think I got it for like 65. Eh, at that point, yeah, that's a. I don't know, that or the 12, though. I... Shit. When I got my original 12, I think I paid like thirty-two dollars for it. I only got the backup. I think I paid like fifty, but still worth fifty to mm. me. So, well, it's kind of like the old Pulteney. Like when I first had old Pulteney twelve, yeah, it, it was twenty-seven. Oh my gosh! Oh, dude, it's crazy. It was like the seventeen tasted like shit to me because I was just so like for twenty-seven bucks. I had the twelve. How is this not five times better? Yeah. That's too bad. 
Yeah, you know, you had that uh, that eight year Highland Park. That's the Gordon McPhail. You ever had that? It's like thirty five bucks. We have an eight year Gordon McPhail um, Highland Park. It's about three times that price. Jeez. Strength. It is cast strength though. I don't know if yours is. Mm, I don't know. That's a look. I don't know what it is. Because I've noticed recently, I there was a signatory that just showed up here and then we had like a 15 year Glenn Levitt and I'm like, Ooh, nice. And then someone else was like, yeah, I got one of those too. And I'm like, that's awesome. And he goes, yeah, it was like 56%. I went, eh, mine was 46. And they're like, yeah, I think I like my, 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 my. I'm like, yeah, it's better. I'm like, yeah, I'd rather have that for sure. Um, yeah. 46 actually, truth be told, kind of sucked. That blows. Yeah. It was, it was it? still, Beautiful, beautiful sherry finish, Doug Glenn Levitt. Yeah, I got a twenty-one year Glenn Levitt. That's in. That's a. Um, who the hell makes that? <sighs> I think it's Gordon McPhail. It, it's a weird bottling though, because it's got a line on it, like George S. Which of course is obviously Glenn Levitt, but it's like a private yeah. bottle from them. It's it's interesting. Um, old school bottle, old ass bottle that was sitting yeah. on the shelf forever. I had transferred in. Well, so, see, I go back to what Eric was saying about the marketing. I think independent bottlings are marketing for the big firms. And I think it's it's not as intuitive as you'd like it, but I feel like if that's what it is, it's marketing. Oh, sure. It's like, well, yeah, exactly. If you like this independent bottle, you really might like our actual bottlings. Totally. Yeah. Agree. And I think that they've done that. And, and it, but again, they, they want somebody else to do the distribution and sales so it doesn't cost them money. Right. They, can, they have deniability of brand, but yet the benefit of brand. Agree. Yeah, they're really good. Um, what's another one I got that was really good in the bottom? Oh, I got a was a thirty year um, Glenn Grant for like a hundred bucks. Oh, geez. Yeah, they they're like yeah. It was up in some. St my buddy found it uh, some store up in Dallas that just been sitting there forever. It's old as shit label. They're like yeah, same bucks. I'm like it works for me. I'll take it in a heartbeat. I don't care if it's an independent bottle. Usually they're better anyway. And I think it's cast strength at that. I, I don't remember. It's, I buried that bottle. This is on purpose. I'm like, I'm not open that for a long time. I would have opened it. I just may not have. I would have then quickly put it to. Uh, the well, I, I got it when we we're having an event. And so I hid it away because I wanted anybody else opening it on me. And uh, I, I just never recovered it. It's hidden away in the back of the closet. And I'm like, yeah, screw it. I'm not looking for it. Which is fine with me, because someday you'll get in there and go, "Oh, look, this amazing bottle." There's a lot of I got a lot of old bottles I just keep hidden away that are like, especially independent bottles of scotches that I can't get again. Um, like I got what did I got like the Glen Keiths and Glen Ords and Glen Elgins, things like that. Things you can't get that are hard to get. Noctus and um, what else? The other one, uh, what the hell is it? It's Nick and Nick. Things like that. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, I, I get that. I mean, you, you want to hide the good stuff. I mean, hell, I... I'm not opposed to drinking it. Out and right after a while. Like, for example, the Glen Going 21 here we got right here. Oh, yeah, I got two. Yeah, I, I once I got another one, I'm like, yeah, I can drink the hell out of this first one. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, like, I'm I'm, I'm looking about almost 60% uh, of the bottle is left. Yeah. This is very soon going to be set aside because I'll be honest. I, at first, I was going to say that that's one to, to buy again. I don't know. I'm going to probably buy Glendronic. Yeah, I like it a lot. It's quite good. Glendronic 18, though, is so much better. And I would actually compare them side by side. What did I could Oh, what makes a really awesome blend is Glendronic 18 and King Alexander the Third. That's an awesome blend. That thing was the third's a little expensive to buy for that purpose. It is. I, I like to drink the both on their own, obviously, but um so but I've, not heard, I've not heard enough good stuff about that one, I guess. But I thought it was a really good blend. Isn't it like 40 43 percent? Uh for which one? The uh, Alexander. Oh, it's 40. Ugh. That's the only part that sucks, is it is 40. That's the only down where I've ever actually had was a 35-year uh, independent bottling. Oh, jeez. 
it has just a taste at a bar. Wow, nice. Yeah, I've got a. I wouldn't. I wouldn't buy it again. Waiting on me. That's any bottler. My and mind you, I didn't pay for it, so I, I still wouldn't buy it again. <laughs> <laughs> it was free, and I'm like, eh, I still probably wouldn't buy that. That's a pretty good list you got started there, Ben Demon Hunter. Start with your Pete journey. Not bad at all. Did find there's some really good new peat and stuff. I got I've had a blended malt that's all it's a blended isla malt, so it's I guess it's all the distilleries. It's called it AUCH. It's like A U C H A U V A N, something like that. I I stuck it in the other room. Um, but it's really good, and it's like forty, forty-five dollars, something like that, that I really like. That's tasty stuff. But you just you just never know. What kind of cool bottlings you can get? Now. Yeah, you really are better off independent bottlers, though, I find, on a lot of these things. If you want to get into peats, I would, you know, you, you, do, uh, you do your yard bags. You do your Lafroix thing. Honestly, Lafroix is probably the one I'd pass on. You go gamble on a Lagavulin 16. It's expensive. Yeah. An yard bag 10. And then um, try a couple HPs. Yeah, all good. I don't know about the order, but those are the ones I would. Yeah. First, you know, four or five bottles. That's what I do. Um, oh, yeah. I forgot about the Shackleton journey with the Peated Dalmore. Ooh, I bet that's nice. I do like Shackleton. Ah, because I found the Shackleton. What was the other, the other special Shackleton? And for whatever stupid ass reason, I didn't buy it and I should have bought it. I don't know why I didn't, but it is what it is. Oh, Bayou Drams. Yeah, this is the kind of stupid shit we do. We're just on. This is what happens on Discord pretty much. <laughs> Almost every day. Yes. It's just what goes on. It's people sitting around talking about whiskey and or chatting furiously all freaking day long about whiskey and taking pictures because that's what happens. Uh, Glenn Farkless? I like Glenn Farkless a lot, especially for the money. You don't like it? You don't like a fan of Glenn Farkless, huh? I think Glenn Farkless is the worst whiskey for the money there is, period. Really? See, I don't really like it. Um, so I've had, uh, I've only had, so I've had, I've had four Glenn Farklesses. Okay. Which ones have you had? So uh, here comes the douchiness of what I've had, but. So I had the 17. Okay. Which is okay. It's actually, it's okay. It's just. I don't think it's a good value for the money. It's just, it's okay. The 25, which I think is terrible whiskey for the price. 150 bucks, it just isn't good. I don't care it's 25 years old, and that's the best 25-year-old price. It just, it was yeah. good whiskey. The cask yeah. tastes like they were the 25th use cask. They probably could be. Um, now, then I had the 22-year-old on 105. Which was actually okay, but again, I those go for a lot of money, and no, not I wouldn't pay it. And then I did have a cast strength twenty five year, which that one was phenomenal. That I've never had. That one was actually really good, but the rest of the ones, including the really rare, hard to get twenty two year one hundred five, yeah. That one, that, I mean, that one was maybe ballpark, but the twenty-five, I would just, I just, I think that's just terrible whiskey for the price. Mm. I've had fifteen-year-old sixty-dollar bottles that were better. Um, the seventeen was better. It just, it was still kind of more expensive than I thought it was worth. Hmm. Who knows? So I, don't know, I mean, if you if you all you care about is trying an older whiskey, then okay, buy Glen Farkless. But sure, I like them because I happen to like their flavor profile. But that's just me, obviously. But I mean, if I'm going to spend 120 bucks, 150 bucks, I'll take a Alvini 15 year. Mm. Yeah, you can get the single cast 15 year for 95 here. Does yeah, I know, isn't that crazy? Stupid cheap. Holy shit. 
Like, That's a Mirage sells it for. It's ninety five. I would I would want to kill myself if I bought the twenty five year Glen Parkless for more than that. That's such a better whiskey. So whatever works for you know. A Buna better yeah. whiskey than the twenty five Glen Parkless. I do like Boone Hobbin. They make great. You want a little more aged? Because, I mean, there is some oak notes to that one. I mean. Mm, it's decent. It's uh, good. Then get, when going 18 year, that tastes older than the Glen Farkless 25 to me. I never compared them. I've always just compared just different Glen Farklesses. That's all I've ever done with them. Yeah. I. Maybe I'm maybe I'm crazy, but I just feel like the Glen Farkless drinks like it's a much much younger whiskey. And at that point, why am I paying over a hundred dollars for that when I could get? Hell, you're telling me about any fifteen year sherry. I mean, God, that's a better whiskey. I do love that one. That is really good. Yeah, my brother who is in Oklahoma, and every time he's going down, he always buys another bottle there. He's like, he goes, he says in Oklahoma they want one sixty for it, which is stupid. Ooh. No, 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 no. Crazy, crazy um, Oklahoma. Like he almost bought almost all of his whiskey here. Well, Except you know, it actually weird things. He gets stupid cheap, like pig leg porker. He gets that, which is weird. I I hate to say it, but if that was the price of Balvenie, I'd still buy one a year. <laughs> I I love that whiskey. If I can get a dark one, not even like necessarily yeah. first fill, just one that's on the darker side. I I love that whiskey. I love that whiskey. Yeah, we're at five hours, uh, Don. Yeah, I think it's definitely at the point where, uh, well, hey, if we got three more hours, they'll just shut us off, right? <laughs> Great. Get right on that. Hey, ADHD whiskey, you left us. Get back in here. He said, that, he said that something happened with his Wi Fi or something or some crazy uh, shit. He was on his phone. Just use your freaking um, all the FOMO. Uh, Dude, FOMO is definitely a real issue. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't drink. What the hell is FOMO? Or fear of missing out. Oh, I was like, I don't know what that means. But now the I more I drink, the more like there's certain whiskeys I want and certain whiskeys I don't want. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, no doubt. Um. But, Whiskey everywhere. I will have a lot of FOMO over Fitzgerald's. This is freaking great. I bet it is. Um, it's it's wheat whiskey with a a kick that reminds you of normal bourbon. <laughs> and that's you like older bourbons. Fifteen years. This is this is what this is what the Pappy stuff wants to be. Yeah, it's what we wish Pappy was. It's they, they still put out some great bourbons, but God, it just it's the younger ones are not what they used to be, and the older ones are not what they used to be. Yeah, yeah, Freeds, we're we're still going. And wheels, yeah, I like the Glen One Fifteen. It's good thing because it's not too bad. It's good pride. You don't like it? I'm pretty sure that Dustin does not like a lot of things I like, but that's fine. Works for me. We're not getting mad at each other over that. No, the Glen uh, Glen 15 is... If anybody gets mad at somebody because they like whiskey, you're an idiot. This, who cares? You don't have to, exactly. You're going to force it down their throat. Like my whiskey. Who so cares? for me, the Glen Glen, they do sherry beautifully. They do. Malt no. does not work with bourbon for me. See, and I love the 10. The 10 is one of my favorite cheap whiskeys. Is the 10... The 10 on... Uh, it's just bourbon, the 10. Is it? Okay. I haven't had the 10. Forever. Yeah, I like the 10 a lot because it's, A, it's cheap. Um, uh, this is granted, relatively speaking. 46 To be honest, I, the 15 is the one I had the most disappointment with. I, I know that. Yeah, the 15 is, it's good, but I think I'd rather have some of the other stuff. So, you know. The 15 cool. just was this over-the-top coin whiskey, like vanilla and... Dried oak, and it wasn't. I don't know. I don't know. I like it. Let me grab it. So the, the eight, the eighteens, where I start going. Ooh, Glen Going is getting really good. And then I remember I my boss when he left was the eighteen year. He's like, <clears throat> it's freaking amazing. The eighteen was actually. I, I think that's a good whiskey. Um, 
I can't remember. I feel like either the 10 or the 12, one of those I liked a lot more than the other, but I just, I don't remember. I remember one was disappointingly bad and one was actually pretty good. But I just, I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I keep passing on the cast for just because I don't want another bourbon cast when going. The other nice thing is about the 10 is that it's 43%. Which is which is nice. You're not getting a forty. Are any of them forty? It's forty three. I thought all were forty three though. Of all of their, I think they are, except for the cash train. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's like uh, Jason earlier was talking about um, Glenn Levitt. Um, as far as I know, just the fourteen um, cognac and the uh, fifteen joke are the only forty percenters. Yeah. <laughs> 12 is either 43 or they do a like a 46 um, single cast. Hmm. Yeah. That's good stuff. Maturation. Just trying to find something here on the damn bottle. I'm looking for um, really clear on like the 21 plus or 21 25 they're not clear on any other bottling including the 30 where i had to discover that uh, the 30 is not first fill mm. we did a review and i'm like i assume it is but they found some really interesting barrels because i don't know how they got first fill from this no 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 Third of its first fill, the other two thirds are not. And I'm like, ah, uh, that explains the flavor. See, because they never mention oh, this one. Yes, sherry crafts, sherry cask from European and American oak. Yeah, they don't use American oak at all in the twenty-one or twenty-five. Maybe that's what I got confused on. Doesn't say. Who knows? It, the 18 could be all sherry. It's just, it's a little. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the 18 is. The 18, I, I feel like it has a little bourbon cask in yeah, it. I got confused. On. Maybe that's why I like the 10 better than the 12. Because Jason says he looked on their website that the 10 is all sherry and the 12 is um, a blend of sherry and bourbon. Maybe that's what I was thinking. I, I think you're. That's what I said earlier. I, I thought the tin was all sherry. I think yeah, he said the only puts uh, bourbon casks in their whiskey. Sense. I'm like, I know it's like I know I like the ten bourbon and twelve. And that makes sense to me too because I just I feel like that when their whiskey has bourbon in it, it sucks. Yeah, I agree. The eighteen, I I, I think is a really good whiskey. Um, I think it's a because of only it's thought of sometimes as a value brand. The which one now? Glen Gulling generally gets thought of as discussed as a value brand. Right. And I don't really feel like the 18's a value. It's just thought of a price. It's, a, it's fair. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the 21, I think, is actually a little overpriced. The 25, I think, is actually a value. Because I don't think there's a better... First fill European sherry scotch period. Unless we're getting into like, you know, slightly peated glendronics uh, or um, if you want no peat period in your whiskey and you want first fill European oak, I think the 25 is the best thing for your buck on the planet. Yeah, I never had the 25. Hear great things. Um, we'll have to fix that. Yeah, that, that's one I've that's like always been on the list of things I'd love to try, but never been able to find a bottle to try. I'll sing a sample. That would we'll, be amazing. We'll get together later on that one, but and you know, give me two to one hundred days to ship because I'm yeah, at, at shipping yeah, ever. whatever. Yeah. You know, Oh, well, no, that's right. The teapot drum, you ever had that sucker? 
Dude, <sighs> that shit is fucking insane. So I'm trying to remember. I I was at Mike's and Keith was giving him a bottle of the teapot. I can't remember. If I did or not. I don't I, think I did. I think that I was like, you know what? It's all good. Yeah, we. One of my buddies, uh, Sandeep. He lives like 20 minutes from here. He came and he gone. He had gone over to the distillery and got a, a teapot dram. Oh my freaking gosh! That stuff was one of the best whiskeys I've ever had. That stuff was my. That was a night we tried. All sorts of like we did all three old Fitzes, we did the EC eighteen, we did Pappy twenty, we did I think three B tacks that night. We did yeah, so yeah, Georgie Stag, William Weller, Thomas Handy, and then what else? We had we had a seventeen and eighteen and birthday, and I don't know. He brought the teapot. Or he brought the old revival and the, and the old uh, the new revival and the old fifteen of the Glendronic. But what else did he bring? Amasaki eighteen. It was a good night. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was a really good night. Heck yeah, that's phenomenal. Those are those are my favorite nights when we do stupid shit like that. Well, heck, I mean, I went over to Mike's and what, what, what do we do? So we drink, um, if I had the Volstead MGP, I do like the Volt. The Volstead, I was actually very pleasantly surprised how good that was. So, weird thought, and I've never said this about another whiskey like this. It needed more age. It was too sweet. Really? You don't like too sweet for you, huh? Oh, no, 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 no. That was what you mean? It was awesome. Yeah. But had they aged it for another five years, it would have been better. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. What did I do with that other bottle? Because I was expecting, like, no, I moved it. oakier version of MGP because, like, they're like, okay, these are the ones ready to be sold. And I drank it and I went, no. These barrels could have gone another five years. Yeah, that Yama, yeah, good luck getting Yamasaki Yamasaki eighteen now without paying absurd prices for it. Yeah, you're gonna pay like seven eight hundred dollars if you're lucky. So what else we have that night? Oh my god, we we had um um Nika seventeen. I brought so good. We had a sixteen year cast strength Maca- uh, Lagavulin. A Moscatel cask. I think it was one of the like the MIDI release deals. Hmm. We had a 19 year version that was a um, nice release. Also Moscatel. We had um, on 1509 batch four, which was not Mike's favorite, but that was delicious. I bet. Um, Oh, uh, what else do we have? We had um, well, we had log of twenty four year from uh, the two thousand three release. That was um, obviously the pinnacle of the night, no doubt. We had a nineteen year log of Bullen. um, official release. That was actually the most unique log of Bullen I think I've ever had. It like didn't taste like Lagavulin and on the finish. It was like hmm. it tasted more like an Ardbeg or a Lafroig. Weird, interesting. Uh, it was it, it, the, the finish, like the the sweetness was all Lagavulin, but it had like that gritty, dirty, nasty smoke that you get in the big boys. Sounds good to me. Oh, freaking awesome! Um, of course we had we had actually. Actually, I got a message, uh, Mike. I don't know if he bought those. I don't know if he bought me a bottle or not of the Klein Leash um, Select Reserve. That was. Um, I need to check with him. What did we try? Is that the twenty-two year? It's it's an NAS. That we, we tried. Was there twenty-two year Klein Leash from the seventies? We were down at Psalm School that Josh Galladay had. It was really good. Hmm. It was like it was really, really freaking good. Yeah, so this was like one of the, like their special releases for like the Diageo deal, and oh my god, it was it's incredible. And they put it on sale for like three hundred bucks here in Ohio. So Mike and I have bought a lot of bottles. And in fact, I need to find out. He sent me a picture showing two bottles, but he didn't say, "Hey, Dustin, here's what you owe me." Mm. I'm all for himself, or if he bought me one. 
Yeah. We talked about it, but we were drinking while we talked about it. So, yeah. Good luck with a Habiki H statement. I found them, but I'm not paying a thousand dollars. Oh, I, I saw a place in New York that had all of them. Yeah, it's like um, not 18, remotely. 18, 21, it. 18, whatever it was. 200 bucks. I'll pay you 200 bucks. Uh, that's all it's all it's worth. It's good, but that's it's good retail. Not this absurd price people want now for them. Yeah. I mean, I could go 25% over retail, maybe. Uh, the Balvany 17 year is significantly better than the 12 year. I disagree. You don't like, you don't really, see, you don't like, so I don't think you like those things. I've come to that conclusion. I, I, I like the Balvany 12 year double a lot. You just don't I, like the 17, huh? See, I like the 17 a lot. I feel like the 17 was like 10% better. Hmm. Interesting. I know, mind you, I, I, I had the 17 in a sample. So maybe my sample was just not up to par. I have not had a bottle. I've had probably six bottles of the 12 double wood. <laughs> I love the six, the 12 year double wood for what it is. That was good. I like I like the single cast too. It's nice on the 12. Maybe I'll maybe I'll buy a 17. I just don't want to. I don't want to pay 170 for it. I guess. Well, let's get just get a mini. You sell those those tasting packs for like twenty bucks. So those mini, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have, I've done that, and I just I thought the seventeen was mediocre compared. Like, oh, see, I really liked it. That's why I went and bought a real bottle of it. I thought it was a mediocre upgrade. Mm, so I really enjoyed it. But and my my thought is maybe the upgrade isn't okay. At ninety seven, yes, I'll buy the seventeen all freaking day. Holy crap! Yeah, yeah mm. I'm, I'm looking at one seventy versus like sixty. Oh, yeah, that's a yeah, that's that's a way bit better price ratio than yeah. The answer is definitely yes for that price ratio. Yeah, it, like for for me, it's once uh, my my world, it's one seventy versus like sixty sixty five, and then like the seventeen. No, nope. yeah, one seventy is quite high. And that's a big difference. Yeah, yeah, nice like versus fifty. Yeah, or hundred dollars. Uh, at one twenty, I'm I'm all in on the, uh, the seventeen. Yeah, that's a that's worth it, but. Hmm. And I mean, I think it's fifteen percent at the best. Better. It's just that you know, as they get better, you pay exponentially more. Yeah, because Eric wants to know what's our what's our unicorn bottles. Oh, <sighs> Port Ellen, <laughs> Bora thirty eight. Yeah, exactly. Actually, I, I can all- actually. I know. I know. Like multiple stores, I can buy Bora thirty eight from. Yeah, I was like, I can buy. Yeah, I can buy the bar for like seventeen hundred, but I'm not paying seventeen hundred. It's a good price. Seventeen hundred. Yeah, I talked to Jamie Ferris over at um, the hell's he own at a uh, Lincoln County Package Store out in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Yeah, he mm-hmm. I talked to him on the phone about. It. He's like, yeah, I'll sell it to you for cost at seventeen hundred. I'm like, because you was like twenty three, and so he's like, five yeah, in Kentucky. Yeah, it's twenty three. So I'll get you for seventeen. I was like, I'd love to buy that. That is a great deal. But yeah, I, Mike, Mike, Mike had one for um, I think nine hundred. I and he called me about it, but um, then the state somehow magically forgot about who they told they'd sell it to, and then they gave it to a freaking restaurant outside the state. Oh, yeah. That would piss me off. That was when they put on clearance here. It was the Bora 38. Jeez. Yeah. You're staking well, it, man. So I so I had a uh, I had an Ardbeg 23 coming my way for I almost don't want to tell anybody what it was gonna be. It was gonna be under 320. What? Yeah. Damn. And then and then it, it fell through. That's too bad. Yeah. So, so, so my friend had uh, talked to somebody. He said, Hey, I want two bottles minimum. And then he goes, Oh, it looks like you have a case there. He goes, I'll just take the case. So the guy brings them two bottles and he goes, I said, I'd take the case. And he goes, Well, it turns out they only had four bottles. So you, you said two or the case. And he went, No. I would have taken all four bottles. Like, I, I don't want to get mad because like, you hooked me up. Yeah. Like, bottles for that price. And then he's like, yeah, dude, sorry. I'm not selling you a bottle because that's what I was getting six. 
I was fine giving you a bottle. The two, eh, sorry. Which I totally get. I would have done the same thing. I'd be like, sorry, man. Didn't work out. <laughs> that blows. Yeah. No, I was, I was, I was mad. In fact, I, I was very mad because that is my favorite art big ever is the 23. I would imagine. It's not even close. The 22. Yeah. I have a sample of the 23. It's really good. Uh, yeah. I've got the 22. It's it's really good. It's just it's not even close to 23. Yeah. Well, like Ben says here, the unicorns go to the Isla and buy a bottle from the distillery. Yeah, I've tried some of those, like, you know, like Sandy did some of the tours. He let me try the stuff he bottles on his own. Holy crap, are they good? That's some amazing stuff. All cash strain. He poured it right from the barrel himself. It's freaking awesome. Now that's awesome. So, yeah, and that is some phenomenal stuff. Let me try. I'm super, super excited about the 25 year. Um, yeah, that's cool. And assuming it's the same price, the problem is goddamn tariffs. Like, I know it's crazy. It comes out at 550 and they put a freaking 25% tariff on it that puts it at 670. I mean, yeah, can't, can't do it. Like, that's. And the thing is, you know the tariffs are going away. Right. Because they're really hurting our industry. They're hurting the bourbon industry, the American whiskey industry in general, very badly. So they've got to go away. And the thing is, it's just, I don't, I don't know. It's just, assuming politically we don't want to end up with a another Trump. Yeah. Which, unfortunately, the Democrats are promoting another Trump as their guy. See. That hopefully we get a freaking middle of the road sane person. Who knows? I've done enough research on this, but right now I'm, I'm hoping somebody like Michael Bloomberg becomes president. An actual businessman who understands this shit, but we'll see what happens. And also, again, I have not researched him enough to at all politically discuss the guy. I just high level, I feel like maybe maybe he could be the guy who has brings a little voice of sanity. I, I have opinions on this, but I'll say them for not on here. Yeah. Like I said, I, I don't have a strong opinion. It's just I just I want somebody who's bringing a voice of sanity. And I right. just don't know that we have a lot of those options. So did you ever try the uh eight year horse soldier? I've not had any of the horse soldier stuff. I like horse soldier a lot, but yeah, I guess Joe Jimbo has got an eight year. So I heard that one's really good, but I've never seen an eight year of it. Their prices are rough. Yeah, they're not the cheapest, but they are really good. I saw. So I'm a, I'm, I'm an admin in a couple of bourbon groups uh, here in Kentucky, and um, this one guy he posted like this picture where they'd gone out and they picked up like eight bottles of like whatever the the top of the line one was. It's like five hundred. Oh, the commander yeah yeah and uh they're bragging about it and they're like yeah my son drove like three thousand miles in like four weeks to get all these and i'm like that seems stupid but i didn't say anything i didn't post anything yeah. on there I'm like that's odd and then like comment after comment after comment dude i could have shipped you those from indiana Dude, these are only available in these states. And the guy's like, no, nah, they're literally sitting on the shelf here. seeing a picture. And then somebody else goes and says, I can buy these online from them. Correct. Which was what I was thinking. Because I'm like, yeah, they, they sell them online. Yeah, you don't have to go there. Like, and the, basically, people were criticizing him for that. And he's like, I'm leaving this group. You guys are assholes. Can't believe you're not enjoying this. And I'm like, I, I posted. I was like, hey, dude, awesome. Love your passion. But hey, I mean, people are right. You could have bought those online for without driving 3,000 miles. True. But it probably was a hell of an adventure to drive 3,000 miles for eight balls, wasn't it? That's a good story. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, I they actually said, but I, was, and I said, like, hey, but you know what? If you and your son had a fun time driving, it's totally worth it then. I was like, dude, awesome. And, but apparently it was just his son. It wasn't him and his son together. And I was like, oh, well, yeah, whatever. That just kind of sounds miserable. I'm hoping there was more to it. Oh, that's a good one. 
that. Did you try Scott's PX to Matt and Never? Um, no, I've not. Oh, dude, that thing is amazing. That's one of the best things you tried in Austin for sure. When Scott brought that out, I That's feel like the Scotch Test Dummies and Up, in terms of like views, are like the YouTubers I don't have a. I know them, but I don't have a good connection with them. No. Yeah. Yeah. The number below that I've uh, interacted with and I've gotten the chance to try a few few tastes. Yeah. What's the favorite non peated compass box? Hmm. So many um, So good. I got my answer. I don't even think it's close. I don't know if certain ones have peat or not, though. I'm trying to Ooh, think. yeah, I might be wrong. How about not another luxury whiskey? That's my that's my pick. That shit is delicious. Oh, that I I wish I bought twelve bottles. I I'm, I'm don't we all? They only made five thousand. Yeah, but they were around forever. Oh, I got mine two years ago. Yeah, I think two years ago. From a guy in Kansas, he mulled it down here for another guy who's bringing a big load, and he got me that and the double single up there because I was looking for the hell. The other day, a buddy found me in Houston a uh, three-year deluxe for like two hundred bucks. Yep, I love that's a good whiskey. Do love compass box. Compass box is amazing. My three-year-old has to be killed soon. It's getting like it's it's about that left. I I just I don't want it to be. I don't want it to go away, man. It's so. I get it. That was one of that was one of the most expensive bottles I ever bought when I bought it, and it, it's, oof. I love that whiskey. I will I will buy another bottle of that if I ever can get a hold of it. And they're out there. They are out there. Nice job, buy it. If your first scotch was Compass Box Peat Monster, that's an interesting first one. That's funny. Educational, cringing, yet wanting more. I mean, you come to the right place. <clears throat> I mean, the first scotch that actually like, so I had, I mean, I had, I had a decent amount of scotch, but the first scotch that blew my mind made me like become a scotch drinker and not a bourbon drinker. It was um, Flaming Heart, 15th anniversary. It's mm, a good one. Like that, and I, if I can get another bottle of that, that's my number one. Yeah. Yeah, I got mine on a clearance rack at Specs. They're like, yeah, nobody wants this. You want it? Yes, I do. So, you know, it's one of those things. It's good stuff. Yep. That, that honestly is a, one of those bottles that, like, it was the first bottle I'd had that like wasn't peated because it wasn't, like, all peat. Right. But they blended it, and I was like, oh, my God. A little Pete. A little Pete, because yeah, you know, I love Pete. Yeah. For sure. Sweetness. Oh my god, it's beautiful. Pete is beautiful. No doubt about it. I do love it all. But yeah, uh, we should probably kill this in a couple of minutes. You know, I do have to work. Yeah, yeah we should. I'm at, I'm honestly I'm so I ordered some food, so I was actually either gonna get off here before that or as soon as uh, the food showed up. You're like, I need to uh, go because the, the, the Uber Eats is there or whatever you got. Yep, that pretty is sure exactly what Uber I'm doing right now. There at this point, huh? I'm pretty sure you keep Uber Eats in business. I definitely spend a lot of money on Uber Eats. They are definitely enjoying my service. I'm actually surprised somebody's out there. I think it's the restaurant that's being the issue right now because I think that person's just been chilling at the restaurant waiting for food for a while. Yeah. At this point, I'm scared they're going to cancel it. Oh, that would suck. Yeah. And the you know the worst thing with the Uber Eats stuff is? Like, so for example, I uh, ordered from uh, one of the restaurants. I ordered like some chicken wings. Mm -hmm. Chicken wings. And they canceled the order. <gasps> five garlic and five honey barbecue. And then I had like an order of fries. I mean, not a crazy order by any means. Yeah. And so they canceled, and I was like, all right, what happened? And um, so I went on back online, and I was like, they're still open. They're still listed. Well, let me just reorder. 
something something screwed up here. So finally, like the Uber driver calls and goes, "Hey man, um, I see you just reordered this. So they're telling me they don't they're out of barbecue sauce." And I was like, "All right, let's just change the sauce to I don't know." Da, 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 da. Or just give me boneless with uh, no sauce and throw some barbecue packets. Yeah, for real. And the guy goes, oh, yeah, that'd be easy. Talk to the guy. They, they did it. And I'm like, you're freaking telling me that Uber canceled my order because of this when they had all the stuff I needed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? Like, they didn't even a phone call like saying, hey, do you want to change this? No, just cancel. That's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's just... Thanks, guys. It's... Unfortunately, the late night stuff is a little hit or miss, and that is unfortunately what we deal with. Yeah, it's the way it goes. Yeah, but the thing is, though, these stores are open this late. This is... Freaking Uber's got to be like a lifeline for some of these people. Like, they're getting this extra revenue. True. Or uh, in tune with it. I mean, hell... I gotta get to work really soon. Mind you, I'm ignoring this 5:30 call. I'm sleeping right through it. So, since it's in two hours, yeah, I'm thinking so. Nah, uh, reality is, if, even if I'm awake, I'm still not doing it just out of spite for the whole yeah. uh, scheduling of that time. Like, go fuck yourself. Damn. Pizza delivery orders at 4:30 in the morning. Holy crap! So, a good friend of mine, he owns uh, his dad owned like this place called Sir Pizza. In um, Lexington, dude, they were twenty four seven. I remember, like, there'd be like a foot of snow outside, and they're like, "Man, we'll deliver." Damn, I don't know how they did it, but they did it. That's crazy. Whatever works, I guess. Let me tell you, their meat lovers was amazing pizza. Bet. Better be if you're delivering twenty four seven. I mean, I think that they may have closed really late, but the best part was like, I remember like, like it was blacklist people who, you know, got drunk and didn't, you know, yeah, pick up their food. And, you know, that happened to me once or twice uh, back in college. Like, I uh, called my friend. He goes, Oh, no, no, don't worry, buddy. You get automatically unblacklisted. He goes, I get it. That's funny. Yeah, I remember one time we we ordered a pizza. We went to wineries all day long. Came home, yeah. ordered a pizza, laid down, fell asleep. Realized, woke up about four or five hours later, like, oh shit, we forgot about our pizza. But like, yeah, we threw that shit out. It's gone. I'm like, eh, oh well, shit happens. No, exactly. I'm not gonna. So, about a month ago, I. It was like a Saturday. I. I was out of it, and so I ordered uh, something from Uber. And I woke up, and I'm like, "Oh shit, fuck!" And normally, if they like make a note that you canceled, and they don't like note that they delivered it, yeah. And this thing just said it was delivered. And I'm like, "What the fuck?" So I walked outside. Literally, it, they just hung it on the front of like the apartment doors, and I'm like, "Oh, there's my food." <laughs> and I looked at, it and I was like. All right, so it's like 6 a.m. They delivered this at like 2 a.m., so it's been sitting here four hours, and I'm like, all right, so the fries, throw those away. Wings in here, though, are in a secondary sealed package. (laughs) I'm just going to eat these up. That's funny. They were delicious. That's great. Hung it on the door. All food should come hanging on the door. That's funny. I'm not against it. All right, Matt, I'm going to get out of here because I'm going to show up eventually. And if it doesn't, I'm going to (laughs) swami. That's hysterical. Uh, Oh, dear God, swami. Jesus, what are you doing here? Yeah, it's got to be like 3.30 in the morning for him, too. Well, and Swami was online, like, didn't you stream, like, many, many hours ago? I don't know. Yeah, 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 fuck you, Swami. <laughs> You're building her stuff. I don't even, I, I feel like it's an insult. I'm, I don't even know why it is, though. 
<laughs> That's why we said official, okay. <laughs> Best Wednesday ever. Oh god. I oh. love Tommy. Ah, oh, too funny, too funny. Unfortunately, this thing called work comes in like, you know, a few hours and take my kids to school and all that bullshit. Exactly, yeah. I mean, I'm done drinking. I'm At this point, I'm just ready for, I was hoping this food would show up. But Yeah, especially cheers to all the people who have been here for five and a half hours. You guys are freaking hosses. Just you know, pretty, I know some of them have been here pretty much the whole time, which is amazing. We literally have 25 people still here. That's amazing after five and a half hours. It was 40 after, like, you know, the, the first group left, like, where you lost your uh, your main streamers. Yeah. It's all good. All good. All right. Well, I got to kill this thing because it's too, it's too free and late. Well, thanks, everybody. It has been a freaking awesome evening for our one-year anniversary. And 17, uh, Eagle Rare 17 comes out tomorrow. And then next week is Traverse City on uh, Monday night. So they'll be here with their head uh, owner and distiller. So it should be fun. So cheers, everybody. Thanks, Dustin, for joining me. And we'll see you guys next week. Cheers. All right. Later, guys.